Are you winning, son? Come on, let me teach you one. Scoot on over in your chair and toss me back that plastic gun. Who is this Hasanabi talking tough? Is this his hobby politics? And that's a shame. You're only here to watch him game? I think you took the bait and this is all in bad faith. Log off before it's too late. You should have stuck with Andrew Tate. This guy ain't a leftist. He's got money. He gets pussy. Look at him. He's really cooking. Wait a second. What's a cussy? In the animated Pixar movie, Par, if there are female cars and male cars, um, I'm gaining with T-Pain. Subscribe to bypass the ads. Top of the hour is approaching, and I want none of that. Lashed out and popped the parasocials, only trying to help. But in the process, realize I'm parasocial myself. We log in, then shout into the void. Joining into the hymn of the oppressed. The powerless can't afford to disengage. A luxury that many don't possess. And I like to believe that we're all just part of a community. Yes, I like to believe that we're all just part of a community. Yes, I like to believe that we're all just part of a community. And I like to believe that we're all just part of a community. And I like to, I like to believe. Yes, I like to, I like to believe. What's going on, everybody? I hope everyone's having a fantastic evening, fantastic afternoon, fantastic pre noon No matter where you are in the world, I'm Hassan Piker, and this is the Hassan Hour Broadcast coming to you live from sunny California, Los Angeles, folks. We're live and alive, and I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a fantastic one. That was Himbo by Cam Carduzion, another Cam Carduzion banger. That's right. Repairing the bridge between Armenians and Turks, one banger at a time. I actually don't know if Cam Carduzion is actually Armenian himself. But, and it might not, it might just be a play on Kim Kardashian, but regardless, I'm live and alive, folks. And I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a fantastic one, because today's a beautiful day, today's a wonderful day, today is, you know, another sunny, 60 degree California day. I'm live, I'm alive, and I hope everyone's having a good one. Now... This is part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news, and unfortunately, I'm a little late, and I apologize on that, okay? I apologize, but this is where I tell you a little bit about what's going on in my life in between the time frame where I press the stop uh, streaming button and press the start streaming button. For all my parasocialists out there, I'm late. You're docking it out of my paycheck. Please don't. Please don't. Things are not looking too good, okay? Things are not looking too good. Um, I have uh, heard that... Uh, my Israel-Palestine coverage, out of all the things that I cover, this is the one time where it seemingly is uh, not uh, great for sponsors. It's just not uh, very sponsor-friendly, it seems, that all the work that I've done on that front have been, uh, you know, affecting sponsorship opportunities, it seems. But regardless, I'm live and alive. What a surprise. Yeah, I mean, I know that already. Guys, 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 I know that already. Uh, yeah, boy, call it. Thank you for the 50 get the subs. <laughs> like, what What do you mean? What? You think you Think I give a shit? The badge of honor for me. Um, does that mean you can't do it anymore? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm... Guys, come on. People freak out. Even, yeah. even you so much as mention Hassan. He included Hassan's name in a list of people who aren't tough on J6, and I corrected him. What? There's a whole book about it, except for Palestine. You know the deal? Um, anyway... You hear that Jez is part of a South African delegation for the case against Israel. Nice. Fucking hell. Nice. I like it. Um, but yeah, so would watching you in an anti-BDS state constitute breaking the law? No. Also, who's going to know? Like, those BDS legislations of like, oh, I promise I'll never protest Israel. Like, all of that stuff is just like non-workable, okay? It's just a, it's just a way to flex the might, right? It's just a way to flex. It's just a way to say, like, yeah, check yourself before you wreck yourself. There's really not much you can do. There's really not much 
anyone can do uh, if you choose to support who you want to support. It, it, it's also 100% unconstitutional. And it's been tested in courts by the likes of Abby Martin, as a matter of fact, friend of the show, Abby Martin. So it is, yeah, the objective is the chilling effect it has on free speech and demonstrations. So there's not something that you should, that's not something you should ever worry about. Um, it's not something that I worry about, obviously, because I have an incredible community of individuals who care about these sorts of things, who care about honesty and truth in, in media reporting, uh, who, who come in here and, and support me. So there is no, like, I, I'm very fortunate in that regard. Like, I, I already don't have any, uh, I don't have any, like, serious sponsorships anyway. I'm talking about, like, new ones that come in sometimes, like, uh, apparently they're a little worried about my Israel and Palestine coverage because it's too hot. Anyway, um, but that's not going to stop me from talking about it, especially because tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow, the International Court of Justice takes on the case of Israel. South Africa is bringing it, and we're going to be talking about that quite a bit. However... Before we get to that, like I said, this is part of the broadcast where I tell you a little bit about my personal news about what's going on in my life. All right. Did you listen to Chapo talk about the tunnel? It was so funny. No, I did not because I don't have, I don't have uh, uh, enough time to listen to Chapo sometimes. But yeah, yesterday I ended the broadcast. I, I think a lot of you forget, like if I do a nine hour or a 10 hour show like on here, I don't really have too much time left. I don't really have too much time left afterwards. I just kind of go to bed. I have dinner. I go to bed. I wake up. I work out. And then I'm back in it. You know what I mean? And in that in that time frame, like, you were taking a bath? Yeah, I was. I had dinner. I'm officially a bubble bath boy. I, I love bubble baths. It, I feel like, makes my recovery better. I don't know if it's like a, like a made-up thing. I don't know if it's a placebo effect or not. Yeah, but I thought you listened to podcasts while working out in the morning. No. Yeah, I put that Epsom salt in there. Bass are literally soaking in your own filth, bro. Yeah, at no point did I say that, like, this is the way I clean myself. I shower, okay? I'm too tall for bass. I'm 6'4". I barely fit in that tub, too. I never said that I'm doing the bubble bath for cleaning myself. I said I'm doing the bubble bath for funsies, for recovery. <laughs> did you use Epstein salt? Yes. Bubble baths require a clean tub. We're all poor here. Yeah. I'm a bath girly. It does aid in recovery, but it can blunt the hypertrophic response. Wait, really? Why would it blunt the hypertrophic, uh, hypertrophy response? Hypertrophic response. That makes no sense. I think that's made up. And I think you're talking about a cold bath, potentially. I'm talking about just like chilling in a, in a nice little warm bath with the Epsom salt and a bath bomb. But even then, I feel like that's cold plunges. Warm baths don't affect hypertrophy. Yeah, I don't even think cold plunges are like... I don't think the science is like 100% on cold plunges either. I'm not I'm not sold on it. That's not a placebo. The weightlessness and heat helps my spinal conditions. Okay. Got any of playing candles going or what? Bro, you're starting to pop off on popular leftist accounts on Instagram again? Bro, I just debate lorded the shit out of your haters on Instagram. I got all three of them to apologize to me. Bro, you're starting to pop off on popular leftist accounts on Instagram again. Absolutely love to see it. So many people are like, yo, this is song guy's actually kind of nice with it. Yeah, it comes and goes in waves, boys. But if you're consistent, they will come back. Unless it's too far gone. Like, the way I see it, um, from the jump, I've always had... From the jump, I've always had many people uh, that are of a variety of different backgrounds on the left that... I've always been in here, Marxist, Leninist, Maoist, third worldist, anarchists, and even, of course, a big chunk of social democrats. And throughout the years, um, people go on their own journey and maybe change their minds a little bit. Bubble bass, nutrition, and kin kines kinesthe theology. Kinesthology? You mean kinesiology? Normalizing, normalize doing tricks on it to defend you when people are lying about you. Yes, you should normalize that. Um, these Zoomers do not understand needing to soak your joints and muscles in hot water. I mean, it feels really good. I did see the New York Post front cover. They're out of they're they're out of control. I mean, I wish we were in a, I wish we were in a different time where you could just like, I wish we were at a time when you could just like, obviously look at a funny story like this and make jokes about it, and then not have like, and not have this be like immediately lead to the worst anti-semitism you've ever seen like can't a rather insulated 
incredibly fundamentalist sect of a religion, uh, which is overwhelmingly secular for the most part beyond it, can't that just be a standalone story that's funny? Does it have to immediately turn into like, Jews are rats and also uh, they're stealing baby blood. And it's like, it just sucks. It sucks so bad. It sucks so bad. Not only do Nazis take grasp of it, but overly sensitive people also try to call anyone who jokes about it anti-Semitic. No, I mean, the overly sensitive people saying anyone who jokes about it is anti-Semitic has always existed. That's always going to happen. That's fine. I don't care about that. But like, I don't want to feel icky. And I don't want anyone to like, I don't want anyone else to like even accidentally um, like, you know, when you look at this story, there's so many like weird QAnon Nazi accounts that are all over it. You know what I mean? It's just gross. It sucks. It makes me very mad. Like, I, I hate that uh, gross anti-Semites get play off of this and get clout off of this. Most circumstances where like the Hasidic community interacting, forcibly interacting with like, you know, the outside world that is in the 21st century is always going to be somewhat funny. It's like Amish. Like, that's the way I see it. It's like identical to like having an Amish guy have to be in the middle of a city. You know what I mean? It's like that is automatically that's going to be funny. Okay. It's just a funny premise. You know what I mean? You got a dude living. You got a dude in a religious sect that was like basically invented in the 19th century, right? That actually wants to live in the 15th century with some of its practices and some of its attitudes, right? But they're in literally the most modern, one of the most modern cities of all time. They're in the just smack dab in the middle of the city. That's a that's a beautiful, that is a beautiful premise for for just so much comedy. You know what I mean? Stolen take from Chapo. Really, I've covered this extensively yesterday. There, I can't believe this. I can't believe that people are going to be saying this when I'm repeating exactly what I said yesterday. I'm going to lose my mind. Amber said that this morning. Yes, I said that yesterday. The daily stolen from Chapo chat. Yes, I, yeah, I stole it from ahead of time. Anyway, I support Israel because they gave me a League of Legends skin. Purple heart, Israel forever. <laughs> I love that. That's such a funny thing. Oh, that's pretty funny. Anyway. Um, God. So, regardless, what a what a great story this was, and and it's like immediately ruined by so many weird, gross Nazis. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> the ch bad boys spark whole e war by digging illegal tunnel under Brooklyn synagogue. Subway. <laughs> uh, no notes is perfect. No notes. You can't. You can't. You know. Sometimes the New York Post hits. Um, this is so corny and goofy. I mean, yeah, it's a silly story, and there it's a newspaper being silly about a silly story. So, will you be watching the Haley X DeSantis debate on CNN tonight? I have to figure out something about that. Um, I believe that like uh, while Twitch is dying, on the one hand, uh, I I might be able to uh, dual stream, and if I am going to dual stream, I'm probably going to. Like, not dual stream it. You sang it yesterday? Oh, oh yeah, wait, here. There's every group. It doesn't matter who was building this tunnel. It would still be funny. I just want to point this out really quickly, okay? Before people go, oh, my God. Like, oh, is it because they're Jewish? Like, no, dude. The idea that you got, like, one, a group of, a group of individuals that are just, like, living in a totally different century, okay? In the heart of New York City. And only... A group like this would be able to to pull off a feat like this. It's like if the Amish lived in New York. You know what I mean? If they just lived in the heart of New York, okay? Only they are industrious enough to be able to, like, build shit like this. They got to... Anyway, um, regardless, Tunnel Stream when? Dude, dude, it's, it's so good. It's just, like, the story is so perfect. And, like, I want to keep it perfect. I hate that, like... I hate that the story is perfect and yet and yet it is turned into something so uh so quickly that people took it and like tried to take it to a to an anti-semitic place. But yes, uh there's a 20 minute video on this on some of the best parts of it. Uh, uh very well edited by my editors. Uh already banging. That's a 1 out of 10 video right there, boys. 158,000 views. You can go check that out. Okay? 
And before people go, what's up with those mattresses, bro? Have you never seen a dirty mattress? Like, is this your first time? I can't believe there's dirty mattresses in New York, man. That must be uh, pedophilia and, and sex trafficking, I guess. So awesome to immediately go, wow, dude. They found dirty mattresses in the tunnels. That must mean that there's, you know, sex trafficking of children and baby blood being sucked down there. Anyway, even the cop is comedic relief. Thamasius, thank you for the playlist. Um, yes, we are going to talk about Twitch uh, today. Let me blast off, actually. There isn't much going on. Um, oh, 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 oh. What I was going to say is, um, what I was going to say is, God, there's so much happening, dude. It's crazy. There's so much happening in the world and, and so many funny stories and so many really stupid ones, too. So I'm like, I'm trying to get into it, get into all of it. You know what I mean? Let me see here. Let me blast off real quick. But uh, I've thought uh, I've thought about it and I want to do like more coherent one piece, um, like more coherent one piece uh, analyses after arcs are over. I've already finished Zoa. I've already finished um, Dress Rosa. Dress Rosa was peak, by the way. Zoa was great, too. Um, and I'm all over. I'm all over. I'm burning through it. I'm all over uh, the, the, the next one now. Uh, Whole Cake Island. So do a little pause for anime watches i i don't know i'm i want to do like a like a better more streamlined you know talk about each individual arc piece by piece not a youtube essay but just like when i'm done with the arc rather than like going through it episodically i you saw kaido what do you think of his jackness he's hot there's a lot of there's a lot of things i want to say um about especially zoa which is the furry arc let's be real there's so much furry fan service in that arc that, like, maybe it's because of, like, Lola Bunny uh, for me when I was growing up, or I don't know what it is. It even made me feel a little bit, like, you know, it made me feel some type of way about it. Like, uh, Carrot is, you know, it's a good-looking bunny. You know, that's a woman right there. Real Jessica Rabbit situation. Anyway, telling this old motherfucker to go back to scripted content, he's too used to freestyling. That's true. Dunesha is a sub. They needed someone to command them. That's so funny. That's not what I was even talking about. Um, does someone have a gun on you off camera? Why'd you say all that? I'm just... Your vapor trail in a deep blue sky. What? You're like, you're not wrong, but the CIA would not get that info out of me. I think like... Um, I think that they they went they went nutty with it. Sanji background is so sick. Oh, God. There's so much I want to say. All right. And I need to blast off. And I need to talk about dual stream still. And people are going Ecuador, Ecuador. Will you cover Ecuador? There's so much happening in the world, and I am overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed. Okay. The equator. The equator is on fire. Ecuador is on fire. Okay. There's also a really interesting and wild post office scandal popping off in the UK, but probably too small for it to cover. Yeah. People want you to cover it for surprise prisoner executions and get you banned. Yeah, I'm not going to cover, like, what's going on. But where was I? All right. Um, let's blast off. Let's talk about it. Is Taylor Swift, uh, Psy up says Fox news, right wingers think black pilots and DEI caused plane malfunction with no evidence. Dude, we're so back. We're so back to like culture war phenomena too. It's awesome. Um, prepping for the ICJ court case. Okay, campaign mania on the trail. Motherfuckers deserve an Oscar for this TikTok? What is this? Oh, I've seen this before. It's pretty stupid, um, but it's funny. Will the ICJ case be live streamed? Yes, but we're not going to watch it because that would be really stupid. Nothing can prepare you about this clip about January 6th. Nandre, there is 0% chance I trust you, okay? Are you going to watch the replay of the court case? I think it's 11 a.m. 12 uh, p.m. EST tomorrow on Friday? No, probably not. I mean, I'll watch bits and pieces of it, like the important stuff, uh, but I won't watch it live, most likely. Nandre, I do not trust you, okay? You destroyed the bond of trust that I have, and no amount of Wagyu steaks that you send my way is going to repair this, this bond of trust that you defiled. You understand me? Here, I'll click on it. Here, okay. HBO has a documentary called The Insurrectionist Next Door, and I'm going to show you a scene 
that I would have never expected in life, and I almost broke my ribs from <laughs> I think so okay, I, I, you know what? You, you're back on. You're back on the good list. Okay, don't abuse this. You're back on the good list. Do not abuse this. Do not become naughty again. <laughs> Please hold. Being in D.C. on the same day, seeing that there was a protest, and we're like, well, we've never been to a protest. Protest and all these other protests that can end up getting violent. So you know, a little bit of these like, I want to be able to be in protector or get her out of a situation because I'm a very strong individual myself. So I knew if worse things came to worse. What? This cannot this cannot be real. Cannot be real. What the fuck world? No. He said it's just natural to me, dude. I just do parkour sometimes. Yeah, I'm just super sick with it, you know? That's crazy. That's crazy. That's awesome. Why does that turn your ankle breaker? That's it. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Oh, that that's a phenomenal reveal at the end of that. Oh my lord. Oh, that's so good. Bro got hit with the ankle bracelet. He accidentally arrived at January 6th and got arrested for doing too much parkour. It seems like they arrested him for being really fucking cool. Uh, like, am I wrong? Like, the cops were like, oh, man. The FBI was, like, jealous of his skills, I think. And it seems like one of those cases where you know the producer didn't ask him to do all that, okay? You just know, you just know he, he was the one who voluntarily brought all of this up and was like, want to see some really sick tricks? And it's one of those situations where you can't really put him in jail because he'll escape. He's got parkour. So they are just like, we can't contain him anyway, so we might as well hit him with the ankle bracelet. Like, j no jail can contain him. No jail can contain him. He's, he would probably teach all the other prisoners how to also be super sick. <laughs> I love it because he's doing it so hard, his ass is sweating, by the way. You can see it. Like, look, look. You can see it on the, like, his ass is sweating. That's, he's sweating his ass off. Literally sweating his ass off. That's how hard he's parkouring for HBO. Dude, this cannot, this cannot be real. Cannot be real. What the fuck no. world? No. It's like parkour man, don't do it. Parkour Germa, don't do it. Your ass so fat. Your moves too good. They'll kill you, parkour Germa. Don't go on January 6th. Parkour Germa. Don't go to January 6th. They'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about draining the wrong swamp. That's crazy. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, no. Why does that turn your ankle breaker? That's it. <laughs> this is what happens when Quirk the White Boys busses it down with a style far too sexual. I think this guy shouldn't be in prison and he, he shouldn't even be under house arrest. You guys know, I'm very, like, not to get all Roman Empire with it, but I do think that if you have, like, if you can demonstrate impressive physical feats, like, you should not go, you should not be under any legal scrutiny, right? Like, you should be able to parkour your way out of it. Like, in the court case, like, you sit in front of the judge, and the judge is like, what are you doing on January 6th? Like, and you're like, super sweet flips, want to see, and then you pull a 780 in the court, it's done. The judge is like, you're free to go, sir. You're free to go, Okay. It, the parkour is not a crime. It's not. And sometimes you're going to be parkouring at January 6th. Government should hire him like they do hackers. What are they going to do? <laughs> They're gonna, he's a white hat parkour guy now. He went from being a black hat parkour guy January 6th to white hat parkour. Yeah. They tried putting his brother in jail and he escaped. Okay, this, that's, the, <laughs> that's the other guy. The, the guy who uh, <laughs> there was a massive manhunt for. This one blows my mind. Like, I guess, speaking of which, like, uh, I guess there's Twitch streamers out there like Hutch, who I used to play Call of Duty with, who's completely brain broken now, who says I'm not serious about, ser not serious enough about January 6th. Bullshit. And yeah, there were clips of Hassan asking, yeah, Vosh and, and, and XQC to like rein in their audience or, or their mods or whatever. I just found that to be so deeply cynical. The truth is, is that if Hassan would have pushed back and told... Wait, you guys sent this clip to me because I thought Hutch was going to talk about January 6th. Anyone, 
that immediately brings up like that drama stuff. And it's like, Oh my God, I can't believe like Hassan doesn't rein in his audience. Uh, while he's asking for other people to rein in their audiences. Like this is a deeply unserious person. I just got drama farm for no reason. I thought this was going to be like actual political coverage, not like what people consider to be political coverage, which is just crying about like petty streamer drama. No, he's saying you would have stopped January 6th. I'm not going to watch the rest of it. That was silly. This is your new enemy? No, no one is my enemy. I have no enemies. Hutch is not my enemy. I love Hutch. Okay? that That's my brother in bald. I don't like his politics. Uh, I think he's he's like exactly the type of liberal that's like, I care significantly more about like leftist content creators than I do about like actual news coverage. And anyone who does that, in my opinion, is like deeply unserious. But, you know, he's a, I don't believe that he's a bad person deep down inside. I don't. And I think that, um, you know, I just wish he wouldn't be like that. I don't know how else to describe it. I don't really care though, overall. In no way is Hutch ill-intended. No, I think he's a little bit brain broken though. People cry about how you ban so many chatters and then turn around and say you don't rein in your chatters. Brain rot Redditor types need to pick a lane. Yeah, the thing is, like, about reigning in your audience and, and people saying, like, that's hypocritical is, like, I did uh, try to rein in my audience with Ethan. Nobody actually ever gave a damn about that at all, though. The problem was what Ethan was saying was identical to what, uh, what many people that I have criticized were saying. And at a certain point, what I was trying to get across to him was, like, yeah, if you say these things, like, it doesn't matter how much I ban people. Like, there are going to be people who have these thoughts independently about you. It's completely outside of my hands. And that was like not seen by anyone for some reason. Like nobody wanted to, nobody wanted to understand that that was a point I was trying to make there. And, um, and beyond that, I consistently told my community to not harass Ethan and over and over again, uh, uh, talk about how it's, it's stupid and unproductive that Ethan is in, uh, is an ally in this, even if you don't agree with him 100% of the way, and that there's a lot of parasocial elements involved, but one, but again, no one, no one wants to be charitable in any meaningful way at that point. Like when you want to, when you want to farm drama, you don't want to hear what my perspective is. You want to humiliate me and you want to be like, look, you're, he's hypocritical because I've already been uh, identified as an ideological enemy to you. And it's a good way to get your audience to, to be galvanized. It's sad it is what it is. I'm not like getting, uh, I'm not getting bogged down here or being stun locked at all. It's just, um, it is what it is. All right. So yeah, tunnels down. I repeat tunnels down. No, I know. I know dude. Independent, independent investigative reporter, Brace Belden on the, on the j site, dude, he went, he actually went and he touched crate. He touched great. He touched grass and he touched great. Um, wait, what happened with Ethan? Nothing. Nothing happened with Ethan. It's just like people were, um, people were farming uh, content off of like me and Ethan's conversations about Israel Palestine endlessly, and and saying like Hassan is so hypocritical. Yes, dude. I I I ask. The point is this: a lot of the things that Hutch says, and a lot of the things that a lot of like liberal content creators say, um. XQC's community would probably be against as well in a similar capacity. And they wouldn't like it if like XQC's community was aware of Hutch and was like constantly calling him a libtard and just like shitting on him over and over again, um, saying he's even a pedophile for defending trans people if he defends trans people. You know what I mean? Like they would not feel too great about that as well. So if we're talking about this on ideological boundaries, I don't think he would, I don't think he would appreciate that. Um, and asking for someone that you know personally to, to uh, you know, stop using you as a cudgel and stop using you as, like, the main villain, which XQC definitely did. Um, XQC definitely routinely used me as, like, a villain in his own community, even if he doesn't personally believe in any of this stuff. Um, that was very different to the way I was uh, trying to handle the Ethan situation. But so many people just refuse to see that charitably and just go, you're bad, you're a bad guy, and I hate you. Would you consider having Hutch on the broadcast? Um, sure. I don't know what we would be arguing about, but, but anyway, blast off, chat. Let's do it. Can we stop talking about Hutch and start talking about how you're going to dizzle your way to China with Truanon? 
Dude, I want to go. I want to go to China with Brace and the Aussie boys. It would be so fire. It feels like your commentary on the conflict has aged quite well. It, re it reflects what has been going on and continues to go on. I love Ethan a lot. Long time fan, but his commentary knows the debates has not been represented in the real world scenario. I mean, he's fine. All right, let's move on. All right. Also, Asana was watching a Vice documentary, old Vice documentary on Gender 6. I saw my brother. That's awesome. Oh, the thing I was going to say about dual streaming before I uh, uh, move on to other stuff was um, I, I have the potential to be able to dual stream. And if I do that, I'm trying to figure out a way on how I can multicast on OBS to both my YouTube page and also my Twitch uh, page, while the YouTube page will most likely feature the actual debate, right? You're a little too enthusiastic about China for me. They're a great example of how a planned economy can work. But as far as my support for them goes, I can't overlook a lot of the other shit that they do. Okay, so then you and I are in agreement on China. Yeah. You, you just described my position on China while well, you said you're a little too overly enthusiastic. Anyway, so you have to use a third-party restreaming service. I've tried local multi-streaming. It's way too unreliable for your internet connection, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, I don't know how to... I don't know how to do it, but I also don't know how. I, I need to figure out how to do a... I need to figure out how to do a multicast situation... But I also want to do a multicast where there's two tracks, okay? Hassan Abbey Clips Complex CEO, bro. YouTube is really sensitive when it comes to the things you're talking about. They terminated two of my clip channels for spreading misinformation. Yeah, you're probably getting mass targeted, my friend. That's what it is. And you have no recourse because you're, you have a random clip channel. Um, that can't happen. You need official permission from the CC? What are you talking about? Just open two OBS instances, lol? No, but... Wait, really? Aiden, can I do it like that, you think? Like, if I open another OBS instance, would it work like that? Or are you kidding? Are you, are you joking? So, my, so, like, that would make it so easy. So then I would just, like, eliminate the desktop audio on, like, the OBS instance here and open up the desktop audio on the OBS instance on the other side. Use uh, this, like, so if I'm on Twitch, imagine... I'm on Twitch. This is what you see. It's me watching the debate, okay? It's me watching the debate. And then on the other, uh, uh, if you go to the YouTube page, you can see the debate like this. This is what you would see on my YouTube stream. Oh, the problem there is my upload bandwidth, though. I suspect, like, upload would be double, right? Don't you have a business line? How shit is your internet? Uh, business line doesn't change the reality that it's still bad. You can set up different audio opposite different streams through OBS audio settings. I use Streamlabs and OBS, and you can have up to eight tracks you can stream, but I don't think you can have different tracks. So I could even, I could even technically, I could even utilize another thing. I could even utilize the OBS multi-track streaming functionality for audio. So you would hear the debate audio, but it wouldn't show up on the VOD for at least the Twitch streaming. Nick would be better, would be able to help you with this much better than chat. You're better off talking to him. If you have a laptop, just run one off each PC. I have a second uh, PC here as well. What's the upside to this? The upside of this would be that I can live react to the debate on a platform that has better fair use restrictions, like YouTube. Alt, beş altı yaşındaki çocukların seks görüsü olarak kullanıldığı Epstein adası hakkında konuşmayacak mısın? Kardeş, Türkler yeni öğrendi galiba bu Epstein olayını. Ben yıllardır konuşuyorum Epstein'le ilgili. Yani konuşmayacak mısın ne demek amına koyayım? Ben bunu var ya yıllardır kabul ediyorum. Yıllardır konuştuğum bir konu bu. Siz yeni öğrendiniz galiba. Onlar Türk çocukları mı? Ha ondan Türkiye'de zannediyorlar ki Epstein Türk çocuğu e, yakalamış. Ondan mı diyorsunuz bu? Bunu duydum daha önce. Bunun ne kadar doğru olduğunu bilmiyorum onu söyleyeyim. Some of us only have one PC as on. I have multiple PCs. This is my job, Chatter. I also have like thousands of dollars worth of filming equipment in here in this room. I don't know if you know this, but this is like a like a whole production, right? I mean, it's not a flex. It's like my job. <sighs> you know which uh, one of the PCs, the Big Red. Someone's going to be using Big Red soon. Someone, my Turkish brother, Tadek, coming to Los Angeles. Very excited for that. No fiber, though. Well, there's always limitations. No, they're saying they won't be able to watch both streams at the same time. You can stream it in 4K, 2K, 1080, 780, depending on the connected person's PC, I thought. There are multiple RM, uh, RTMP outputs plugins for the OBS. There's a plugin to stream multiple RTMP servers concurrently. It's able to share. Yeah, but I don't want a multiple uh, RTMP uh, plugin. 
I don't want to concurrently. I don't want to multicast in the same. I don't want to multicast the same stream. I want. I want to multicast the same stream. It's still me, right? But I want there to be some differences. Does that make sense? Why are you promoting Alex Jones's new game on stream? Lol. What? Um, you want different streams? Uh, scene stream basically. Yes, because. You might need you might be getting technical enough. You need a dedicated PC for pushing it. I don't think so. I think Aiden actually gave a brilliant suggestion where um I think Aiden gave a brilliant suggestion. If I can do two instances of OBS, um, as long as my bandwidth can handle it, maybe I limit the uh the the maybe I limit the bitrate to like five K or maybe four K, lower the quality a little bit, you know what I mean? Uh I could do it. Let's internet speed test this bad boy real quick. See see what my upload uh is my download is insane right my download is like 630 and my upload is pretty good too it's 32 megabits per second obviously it's terrible it's laughable in comparison to like what it should be but but 33 should be enough to handle two streams at the same time and that's what i'm thinking this is the new hasanami content type tech support for the future yeah what are you trying to do um what i'm trying to do is what I'm trying to do is, is uh, multicast to both YouTube um, and also to, to Twitch at the same time. You can do with the ATM Verdial plugin. You can have two different sets of scenes and canvases that you can stream to different platforms. Ooh, I don't know if I want to do plugins. We'll see. Would you have time to run a practice stream? You... Bytes, not bits. Eight bits in a byte. What? Was that a JoJo reference? No, it's actually a One Piece reference, but it's a JoJo reference too. Oh, also, I'll say this much. Um, Sanji's family, Assassin family. What is it? Germa 66. They're literally JoJo coded. They're so JoJo coded overall. I think it switches out of a router will raise your upload speed. Read Aiden's message. Bro, you have a 4090 and run Google Chrome. You don't need a supercomputer. You just need a good internet connection. I agree. I think it's fine. Germa, Germa, double six. Did you like the minx? Yeah, I love the minx. Run one on the fab top and ask for the neighbor's Wi-Fi. Okay, good one. All right. Do you have a second location with a better upload? You could hub off, i.e. single stream for you, then split it at place that has better, cheaper upload? No. Everybody calm down. We already figured it out. I think that the best possible thing to do is just like use my preset scenes that I already have on my OBS, which I like, right? And then uh, and, 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 uh, run a second instance of OBS change the background like i kind of want to try it right now i kind of want to see if i can like even open up a second instance like let's see obs open obs is already running unless you meant to do this please shut down any existing uh, instances of obs before trying to run a new instance if you have a if you have obs set to minimize to the system tray please check to see if it's still running there i say launch anyway oh damn and then i go to settings and i can change the service from twitch to youtube rtmps primary YouTube ingest server, and then I connect the account. Oh, man, that's sick. Um, as someone who's done the second OBS instance, you may need another capture card, though. Split the camera and go. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, you're right. The cam doesn't work, though. Can The camera doesn't work. Unless I also wire it through virtual camera, which is pretty funny. Let's see if I can virtual camera it from the first virtual camera. Start the virtual camera. And see if I can substitute it on the second one to OBS virtual camera. Oh my God, it worked. It worked. Uh, I it, It's doubling up on the image though, which is crazy. Like, like there are, it, oh, that wouldn't work most likely. Virtual camera would not work. I would need a second camera. Hardwired second camera. Because see, here's the problem with virtual camera. Are you ready for this? This is my second instance, right? Boom. Like my second instance, actually, when I'm on... Like, that's the problem with virtual camera, so that I can't do virtual camera. I do have another camera, though. Check the virtual camera output. You can choose what to show. No, you can't. It's not even a crop situation. I would just use the Kaya cam, I think. Select the source as being the camera instead of the whole scene. Wait, you can do that on virtual camera? Output type program default. Source. Output selection 4K. Wait. No, it's not working. It's still messed up. How do I do that? How do I get the OBS virtual cam to just take the camera? Output type, output selection, 4K? No. 
Oh, wait. It's not on that front. It's on this front. Program default preview scene source. Stop. Vir okay. Stop virtual camera. And then output type is source. Output selection is just the camera, right? Start virtual camera. No. Oh, wait. It worked, I think. Hold up. It worked. Let's go, chatters. You cooked it. You cooked it good. Dude, dude, look, look. See? Now I go back to the desktop and blammo is just taking it straight from the source. Boom. We could possibly do this. We could possibly do this. Now, the real issue is trying to figure out how uh, I would uh, even begin to find uh, my RTMP, like, that's how I stream to TikTok and Twitch, my guy. Hell yeah, brother. Hunter Biden just walked out on Congress as MTG started to speak. Your take. All the conservative outlets are blowing it up. We'll cover it in a second. We're TikTok multi-streamers, live streamers, your song. Get your knowledge up. Dude, I'm about to get my money up and not my funny up. You know what I'm saying? Like, no more funny, just money. It's literally on your YouTube. You just have to start a live stream on YouTube. Chatters know a little something about how to stream. Chatters know a little something about how to stream more than me. You need to create a stream in our YouTube creator studio. And then there you will have the RTM, RTMP code. Oh, that's how it works? Man, YouTube streaming is like not very good. When did you get clapped by copyright on YouTube? So here's how it works. Okay, chatters. How it works is this. YouTube also has... Yeah, Twitch is a really good live streaming platform. I mean, uh, which, you know, of course, we're going to be talking about the layoffs and stuff. But I do think that... Um, I do, I do think that Twitch is a really, really good live streaming platform in comparison to all the other platforms out there. Straight up, I will say it. Now, on the technical front, it's better. On the community side, it's infinitely better, obviously. But uh, simulcasting is not allowed in Twitch TOS. No, it is. It's not only allowed, but encouraged. Okay? So here's what's going on. So on YouTube, however, YouTube already has a built-in... YouTube already has a built-in mechanism, right? YouTube already has a built-in mechanism for, for uh, uh, DMCA's copyright. This is the last thing I'm going to talk about. This is, we're, we've talked way too much shop for no particular reason right now. YouTube has a built-in mechanism for copyright, which means that it's usually very restrictive, not great, right? However, one benefit to that is that they also have much better protections for copyright when it comes down to news commentary, okay? They have a system to detect copyright, and there's a lot of, like, automation in that, on that front, automation in that process. However, however, they also, for uh, news and politics, they still have a, a uh, they have a better protection for news and politics because they have a better standard for what falls under fair use. Because I'm doing ceaseless commentary, because I'm doing commentary on the debates in that situation, um, and it's not like a manual review process, there is not as uh, strict a protocol. Like on, on, on Twitch, if you're live reacting to something and it's a violation of copyright, you get taken out oftentimes for 48 hours. And I don't want to be banned for 48 hours for live reacting to do a debate. I just wanted to mention that most part of the clip channels have never reported to me about getting strikes for misinfo. Generally, it's fake strikes or demonetized for reused content. Any clip channels that get strikes for terms of service can contact me. The VOD channels is a method of how to deal with those strikes, uh, says LittleBear36. You have moderation or moderation boss in YouTube chat or else you need to disable YouTube chat? Yeah, I might have to disable YouTube chat this time around. Okay, but what is the new hair regiment? There's nothing. So does your contract allow it? As far as I understand, this would be like an additional allowance. Uh, Multi-streaming was not allowed, but I do think that um, this is like, uh, for me at least. Hold on. <sighs> All right. No fin. Oh, um, I do take finasteride and, and uh, whatever, like Rogan and, and, and uh, the generic finasteride. Say if they let you do it, you'll do 10 minutes of ads every 11 minutes. No. All right. Well, man, why you're not even bald? Thank you. That's the point. Because I take supplements for it. Minoxidil and finasteride is what I take. How many milligrams? Um, I don't have like a full-blown... I, I just break off the pill in half. Do you feel like it helped? I mean, I, I think it stopped. I think it stopped the balding. That's what I think. Wait, 
Did I blast off? Oh, I did. Okay. All right, let's get started. I forgot that I already blasted off. Hassan, do you date? Yes, your mom. Um, Have you ever seen that guy on TikTok who was basically bald and did self-care and grew so much hair? Uh, No. I don't use a derma roller. Live updates. Oh, my God. Breaking news. Judge denies Trump's request to speak at his... Oh, this is not breaking news. This is uh, old news. Sorry. Wait. What? No, this is... What? Judge denies Trump request to speak at his civil fraud trial hours before his Fox News town hall? No. Oh, it is not breaking news. It is the old news. Okay. Um, so... Uh, Trump had a gag order on a civil fraud trial in New York, as you guys know, because, you know, he was being Trump. And when you're being Trump, you sometimes are being too much Trump and you're you're Trumping at a turn. And when you Trump at a turn, you end up, uh, I don't know, causing the judge to get death threats. And that's kind of a, a faux pas, I would say. So the judge hit him with a gag order, Right. Which is, of course, in my opinion, the worst thing you could do to Donald Trump. Unconstitutional, sir. How dare you? How dare you? Okay? But it's still pretty funny. Um, and uh, it's, it's especially funny because tonight you have a Fox News town hall with Donald Trump, a counter-programming against the Little Ronda Nikki Haley CNN debate. This is a jam-packed slam slamo. Blammo slammo night of political content. Campaign mania is back, folks. We are so back, and we are so in business. We got we got Chabad tunnels to start off the year. We got a white dude stuck in a vase doing getting over it in real life. And campaign mania is back and in action in a big way. Okay? But before we do that, let's talk about Twitch news. Okay? Talk about Twitch news for a brief moment. Because while all of that is happening, Amazon has taken yet another uh, action against Twitch, which it it sees as his ugly stepchild, in my opinion. Um, Amazon to eliminate hundreds of roles across Twitch, Prime Video, and MGM Studios. Now, of course, what ended up happening is yesterday, uh, a lot of Twitch staff found out that uh, due to a Bloomberg News article that they might get laid off. And as far as I understand it internally, they were like, oh, uh, maybe, yes, no, I don't know. I mean, they, they, there was not great. It was a little bit of a mishandling, in my opinion, uh, from corporate Twitch. But that's always the case, usually. That's how corporations operate. And uh, uh, this comes after, uh, obviously, what, 400 staffers being laid off and also Twitch Korea division completely shutting down because it was, uh, according to the words of CEO Dan Daniel Jebediah Clancy, um, a, a very, I mean, it was prohibitively expensive. That's the words he used, which is a separate thing, right? It doesn't, it doesn't seem great that, uh, you're shutting off an entire branch, uh, and, and, uh, you know, shuttering your entire operations in a country, right? It doesn't seem great, but there are obviously different reasons for why that was happening. We covered that at the time. It is uh, one of the reasons uh, is, is, of course, Korea's like incredibly restrictive, non-net neutrality having uh, uh, laws around uh, how much uh, ISPs can charge you specifically, right? Uh, the Korean thing was a, was a specific reason, the Korean internet law that favors uh, native streaming services and native internet service, uh, like internet content creating platforms over non-native ones it makes it really expensive and not worth it obviously for amazon there is a cost to twitch uh, i don't believe that they do market rate pricing for the server hosting which is the most expensive part of live streaming for those of you who don't know but i assume that internally they calculate it in a way where they look at the numbers and they say you know this is not a profitable business of course but uh it's I'm assuming it has some tax benefits. And also on top of that, uh, there is probably a long-term goal, live streaming uh, being a a, uh, profoundly important kind of content creation. Uh, Amazon probably wanted to get ahead of it and become the uh, monopoly of live streaming, which it did. Um, Amazon still to this day has... Uh, a, a, uh, a majority, overwhelming majority of the share of clicks when it comes to online live streaming, specifically in the gaming space, okay? So, 
Let's watch. So Amazon is laying off hundreds of workers. This is across Prime Video and its MGM Studios divisions, as well as Twitch memos were sent to staffers this morning and obtained by CNBC.com. Our Annie Palmer there. An Amazon spokesperson did confirm those layoffs. The head of Prime and Prime Video and MGM saying in that memo that the company is making some of the cuts to prioritize investments for the long term and the success of the business. The memo goes on to say that they are looking to reduce investments in certain areas and then focus on more high impact areas, not just Prime Video, though. Also, 500 Twitch employees, another memo obtained by CNBC this morning, executives saying that we have to work to do and right size our company. They say they regret that they need to share this news. It's a painful step, of course, and they're reducing the headcount by just over 500 people across Twitch as well. Guys, this adds to years of layoffs. For Amazon, starting at the end of 2022, Amazon had its biggest round of layoffs, about 27,000 people across almost every part of that business. And that company shares slightly higher this morning. You can see layoffs are often seen as a way to increase some of that operating leverage and efficiency. Guys, back to you. Boeing. C All right. So before we get to the Boeing story, which I uh, have some, some, some interesting pieces on, uh, Dan Clancy also had a take on it. Where is it? Does anyone have that? Uh, does anyone have the Dan Clancy statement on the layoffs? Talking about how this is, um, you know, Twitch grew uh, with projections and, and uh, you know, we, we grew the company to what we thought it would be at in the next two years, three years, and not where it's at right now. Something along those lines. And, uh, oh, here it is. To the Twitch community, I wanted to start, I wanted to send a short note to let you know that we've made the difficult decision to reduce the size of our workforce today. At this point in time, we are focused on communicating with our employees and providing them with clarity on how this impacts each of them. We greatly value the employees we're saying goodbye to today as people and professionals and are grateful for all their efforts to support all of you. I'm sharing a copy of the email that I sent out to the company this morning to provide more context on the decision. Please know that Twitch remains focused on serving our streamers and ensuring that this is the best place to live stream for many to come. I know that you will have additional questions about how this might impact the community, and I'll host the stream on Twitch on Thursday, January 11th at 1 p.m. Pacific time to speak with all of you. Okay? I found an article from January 2020 which says Twitch headcount at the time was like 1,500 globally. 500 being 35% of the current staffers means they're now going to be at about 1,000, if my math is correct, literally smaller than they were in 2020. Um, but this isn't what I was, uh, this isn't what I'm looking for. Oh, team. The team side is what I'm talking about. Here, team. Did I have some incredibly difficult news to share? As you all know, we have worked hard over the last year to run our business and as sustainably as possible. Unfortunately, we still have work to do to right size our company that is such a silicon valley that is so tech speak right there to right size not downsize right size our company and i regret having to share that we are taking the painful step to reduce our headcount by just over 500 people across twitch this will be a very hard day our service exists to empower communities to create together and every single one of you has played a vital role in fostering our community and furthering that mission the problem with this situation like this okay is that dan clancy is the CEO, but Dan Clancy is not the CEO of a company that is completely independent and can go out and take out additional loans in and of itself and continue keeping the company afloat as it tries to, I guess, uh, find new revenue maxing strategies. Okay. He is the CEO of a company that is underneath another company, another company that is, of course, Amazon. When Daddy Amazon, and I've said this so many times, Daddy Amazon says Twitch is not profitable, that's accounting, okay? When Daddy Amazon says, oh, Twitch is blowing up, you can hire now, and Twitch ends up hiring a bunch of people, okay? Then that's how it goes. And this isn't just Twitch. This is across the Amazon video sector. Amazon to lay off several hundred staff in Prime Video Studios. Don't be defending Dan's dumbass. If you think that this is a defense of Dan and not and not simply what's what, and I have unconditionally talked about this and have gotten yelled at nonstop about this particular thing over and over again, okay, because it's just the truth. I don't know what to tell you. You're describing the entire tech sector, not just Amazon. Yeah, this is not me defending Dan. This is me explaining to you the truth. If you recall a while ago when Kick first came out to the market, a lot of people said, Hassan, you don't know what you're talking about. Amazon doesn't profit from Kick, or Twitch doesn't profit directly from Kick. And I told you guys at the time a couple different things. 
Amazon runs AWS. It is the most costly part of Twitch's, uh, uh, Twitch's runway, okay? Twitch is a live streaming platform, just like Microsoft tried to do a live streaming platform and failed, Mixer, has costs, okay? The most significant cost of Twitch is live web hosting. This is a profoundly costly endeavor regardless. There is all, like a, like a built-in cost to it, okay? No matter what happens. Now, that cost of keeping the servers alive is, of course, um, that cost of keeping the servers alive and making sure that they don't, like, catch on fire like they have in the past and, and ensuring that that still works on the back end. All of that is very expensive, okay? It is. That is, the, that is probably one of the most expensive uh, uh, parts of, of live web or any kind of live streaming platform okay now having said all of that of course amazon already has all of that right amazon already it's this is their main bread and butter amazon uh makes a lot of money off of aws their web service okay half of the internet runs on aws the other half runs on microsoft's uh, uh web service uh and and uh, google as well but i believe microsoft is the second biggest right and aws uh, uh, azure is the second biggest AWS is the biggest, Azure is the second biggest, and then I guess Google. So Google Cloud is the third. So having said all of that, this is a very important business for Amazon. What they could technically do, like I said, if they wanted to tomorrow decide that Twitch is the most profitable live streaming platform on the planet, they could just simply massage the numbers and go, the cost of the live web hosting to Twitch from Amazon is $0. If they were to decide internally in their accounting that we are you are no longer technically paying for web service twitch would be the most profitable company on the planet okay maybe not on the planet but one of them it would certainly be the most profitable live uh streaming software live streaming service out there now this is why i say it's all a matter of internal accounting depending on how much Amazon, the main company, decides Twitch costs them, okay? They decide whether Twitch is profitable or not. Kick, on the other hand, does not have the same exact uh, uh, approach to it because Kick is using AWS to even have a website, okay? You've been saying this ever since Congress asked Bezos about Twitch and he had zero clue what it was? Yes, and I was very happy back then. And, I, and, and the reason for why I did not want Jeff Bezos to know what Twitch is is because I don't want him to look into it and then find out that it's like not exactly a great business for them. Okay? You still got to do intercompany eliminations. It's out it's a out true economic activity that enters and leaves the conglomerate. So yes. So internally there's two different kinds of accounting, right? So you have the the I guess opportunity cost of like Amazon's limited web hosting service and how much bandwidth they're giving to Twitch versus whether or not they sold it to an outside company that uh, that that web service okay so how, like that would be probably judged on market uh on market rates okay so there's an internal cost like an actual cost of running this service which would be like whatever it is after all the sunk costs whatever it is that that uh is is like whatever fraction of the upkeep of the servers that twitch is costing amazon for just simply existing versus the actual cost of it when judged as though twitch is an outside entity coming to amazon to purchase aws there's a second part of this though the second part of this is of course the uh white glove production uh, back-end service that Twitch also, or Amazon also sells. Some of those are Twitch staffers, okay? Some of those people that are working on, for example, when Kick purchased AWS, there's a second part of AWS called IVS, okay? IVS is the, the, the you know, the bones, the skeleton of a, of a live streaming service. Some of those guys that work at Twitch directly work on IVS, so technically, uh, Amazon is making money off of, uh, you know, selling this, selling basically the skeleton of Twitch to other companies as well, okay? It's, a, it's like, a, like a white label, it's a white label product, 
Okay. How do you know all this shit? What do you mean? This is like all readily available things that you can find out on your own. IVS is the technology that Amazon bought Twitch to integrate into AWS as a service. Yes. So having said that, having said that, it's just it's another it's another way that Twitch makes money. It's another way that Twitch makes money for Amazon. Twitch also, as a I guess separate entity under the Amazon umbrella, makes uh, generates revenue for Amazon by um, obviously giving a subscription percentage from every subscriber that subscribes at the top of the hour to my channel, for example, to avoid the ads at the top of the hour, the three minute ad break. Um, they take a percentage of that, right? Another way that uh, Twitch makes money is, or for Amazon, generates revenue for Amazon, is when a streamer like myself runs ads at the top of the hour. They take a percentage of that too. Because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free, right? That's how it works. Then there's obviously like other contracts and things of that nature. I'm sure like uh, there's, you know, there's sponsorship deals across the board on the platform, yada, yada, yada. Um... 34 MKD 50. Thank you for the 50 gifted subs. I was just giving an example. Here's the three minute ad break now, by the way. It seems really easy for them to just adjust stuff to make zero profit on paper, just like the rest of Amazon. Of course. That's one of the many benefits of, that is one of the many benefits of being a massive company that has successfully implemented horizontal and vertical integration. That's how it works. You can transfer pricing from one side to the next. It is the same principle behind Amazon have its, having its own delivery service. Okay? That's it. That's how this works. Um, plus, Twitch can act as a marketing platform for Amazon. It adds an additional benefit to subscribing to Amazon Prime. Yes, but I don't think uh, there is a... I don't think there's a big enough uh, ask. Like, I think Prime works in the opposite direction. Prime makes Twitch a better platform for content creators because it offers a tremendous amount of revenue, right? Rather than vice versa, where people are getting Amazon Prime because they want to get a Twitch Prime as a consequence. Like, I don't think it works that way. Transfer pricing within a company is not just something you can just arbitrarily set for subsidiaries, though a consistent arm's length approach is generally required by regulators. I laugh at the notion that there is like some serious uh, regulatory oversight here, but you're right. On paper, there is, of course, uh, some some level of, of uh, regulatory oversight. You're right. Um, like, I, I just, is there enforcement of such regulatory oversight? I do not know. Now, there is some supposedly regulatory oversight coming to Amazon specifically as it pertains to its monopolies from the likes of Lena Khan. When you say U.S. regulators, question mark, there are some U.S. regulators that are currently working specifically on Amazon. Perhaps that is one of the reasons as to why they are <clears throat> doing more uh, internal accounting to ensure that there is uh, that they're you know making all of their uh, all of their their video divisions more profitable on paper. Okay, um, I did this for a software company in Canada. It's essentially a facade. Level. Regulators work with the entity to make it work, so it's fine and dandy for public scrutiny. Yeah. So, um. So maybe Amazon is just reporting that Twitch is losing money to meet regulatory appearances, but in reality, it does make money hand over fist because I pay myself. Isn't getting anyone into de into debt? So let's get back to the to the Dan Clancy. Now that I described this, let's get back to the Dan Clancy uh, statement. I know many of you are wondering why this is happening. Over the last year, we've been working to build a more sustainable business so that Twitch will be here for the long run. And throughout the year, we have cut costs and made many decisions to be more efficient. Unfortunately. Despite these efforts, it has become clear that our organization is still meaningfully larger than it needs to be given the size of our business. Last year, we paid out over $1 billion to streamers. So while the Twitch business remains strong, for some time now, the organization has been sized based upon where we optimistically expect our business to be in three or more years, not where we're at today. As with many other companies in the tech space, we are now sizing our organization based upon the current scale of our business and conservative predictions of how we expect to grow in the future. This decision, while incredibly difficult and painful, is necessary to ensure that we can continue to serve our streamers sustainably without impacting their ability to support their careers on Twitch. Part of what makes this so difficult is the passion that so many of you share for the Twitch community and the hard work you've put into serving our streamers. 
I know you are all wondering what this decision means for you and your role moving forward. While we know it is better to hear about the impact face-to-face, we realize that it is more important to share the news with the affected individuals as quickly as possible. With that in mind, here's what you can expect within the next hour. If your role is affected by this decision, if you live in the U.S., Canada, Brazil, Mexico, or Singapore, in the next few minutes, I will send an email to this group of people sharing the unfortunate news that your position is being eliminated. Okay, well, that's crazy. Um, afterwards, oh, uh, being eliminated... Unfortunate news that your position is being eliminated. Important details on everything we're doing to support you through this transition. Afterward, your org leader will reach out directly via email with more specific information about your severance package and to give you the option to speak with them individually. These one-to-one meetings will take place over the next few days. If your role is affected by this decision and you're in any country not listed above, in the next few minutes, you will receive an email from Lauren Nunez with more specific information on the process and the next steps, which vary by country. For everyone who's leaving Twitch today... I know how important it is to say goodbye to your colleagues so you will retain access to Slack and your email until 1 p.m. Pacific. If you are in Singapore, you will have access until 12 p.m. local time. Jesus. If your role was not affected, I will send another email to this group confirming your role was not affected by this decision. Afterwards, I plan to host regional all hands throughout the day so you can hear from me directly. Details on the time of these sessions and calendar invites will come through later this morning. I also want to acknowledge how disappointed I was yesterday that this information leaked. I am sorry for all the anxiety that it caused over the last several hours. Our hope was that you all would hear this from us this morning and very quickly understand how this impacted your role, and we were unfortunately not able to accelerate the timeline, which I know is very frustrating. I want to close with my sincerest apologies to everyone who is leaving Twitch. You are some of the most talented, committed, and creative people I've ever worked with. Thank you for everything you've done to help us build Twitch and foster our community. We are all here because we believe in the power of Twitch and our community, and while our mission is far from over... Right now, focus is on taking care of each other. I'm always grateful for uh, how well you all support and show up for one another during our best and most difficult moments. Dan. So talented, but not enough to pay you, though. (sighs) My company cut off access while people were in the call finding out they were laid off. So at least they did that. Interestingly, apparently they didn't do due diligence with advanced public notice of mass layoffs. And people will still be on payroll for two months or Twitch broke the law. Wasn't this on the Warren report? Aren't those supposed to be heads up for incoming layoffs? Technically, they will keep everyone to be laid off on payroll for two more months to comply with Warren. Does that mean in two months we see Twitch or Amazon with layoffs dated around this time? The way these are presented online has made me think they're heaps, they're they're a heads up for people getting laid off. Is this not true? I mean, I'm sure that it's like probably packaged as their as their severance, right? Yeah, that's like that's usually how it works. Like you get put on payroll. They're like the most. Layoffs are always awful. The most, I guess, like the best, most ethical type of layoff that you can engage in is the voluntary severance package layoffs, but that's obviously very costly to the company, so most people don't want to do that, where they will see areas that they need to significantly downsize in, and they will go to all of the workers in said areas and say, hey, if you leave now, we'll pay basically six months of your depending on what the severance package looks like. They make this internal calculation. Two months is usual, but in the most ethical uh, uh, layoffs that happen, and I have friends that have literally gone through this in the tech sector, where they will go up to you and they say, hey, there's going to be downsizing occurring here, um, and we want to give you the option to voluntarily leave now, and if you voluntarily leave now, we will pay you. We'll pay you like three months, four months Uh, or maybe even up to six months of compensation, like as though you have a job here for six additional months, right? You stay on payroll for 60 days, and if you don't got a job, you get a severance at that point. You are still a non-functioning employee to go with the WARN Act. Um, Etsy's layoffs are really generous when compared to other layoffs over Spotify's. Yes. uh, The WARN Act federally requires two months, some states three months. That is very rare in the industry. Yes. Um, it depends on which company is doing this. I'm not going to reveal it, but it was a very big ISP. <laughs> Jesus, there's not that many of them uh, out there, but uh, that's what uh, has happened to some of my friends before. Um, so, yeah, um, I know this is slightly off topic. Being a constant student and seeing all these layoffs makes me incredibly nihilistic for my own future. I mean, yeah, welcome uh, to the world of, of uh, graduating out of college post-2008. Let's be real. Let's be really real, Okay. I graduated college in 2013. This was like, this has been, there was like a brief moment of like, I guess, normalcy in between that time frame. But when I first graduated, it was like, the situation was dire. Okay. I graduated from college in 
in 2013, the economy had not recovered to, uh, you know, the economy and the job market was not looking that great uh, when I, when I graduated. So in 2013, does that mean you're 35 now? I don't know where you learned how to do math, but no, I'm, I'm 32, about to be 33. Offering the choices uh, to leave is pretty common in B2B enterprise software companies. In my experience, a guy I know just takes everyone he can and gets paid double for six months at a time. Yeah. In my opinion, a lot of these layoffs are follow the leader companies, see others doing layoffs, and they think they have to. The phrase, as with other tech companies, suggests that has to be the case here. You know, there was a point in time when I used to look at something like this and go, that's crazy. You're out of your mind. And then... I found out that that is actually unironically precisely what happens. That is not even a joke, especially when it's a company as large as Amazon. And yes, on the tech side, on the tech side, in many circumstances, that is precisely what's going on. It's not even a joke. Monkey see, monkey do is a, a, a matter of scholarly work in this field. We've read the uh, we've read the the uh, the research from that one Stanford professor who basically spent his entire career uh, talking about the layoff meta in Silicon Valley. Like tech layoffs, oftentimes uh, work on that principle. You would think that it's not the case, or you could technically say, well, there is a lot of bullshit jobs in the tech sector. That much is true. However, however, having said that. Most jobs, most white collar jobs are bullshit. That is just the reality. Layoffs are the quickest way to boost prof profitability. If your competitor boosts profits, you have to do the same to keep up. Yeah. And I've talked about this more broadly. Um, the entire purpose of downsizing is, is called, in, in corporate speak, it's called the reduction or elimination of redundancy or the improvement of, of efficiency. It's all done at the behest of maxing out profits. You got seven people doing a job. You reduce the workforce down to three people, and you make the, 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 the three people that are remaining do the job of the seven people that left. And you can get away with doing that in a lot of circumstances because, let's be real, the seven people, including some of you in this chat right now, are doing like, what, one to four hours max of like real work at your place of business if you're in a white collar job that's just the truth it's just the truth like you're doing one to two to three hours of real actual work if you like cracked an Adderall and just sat there and white knuckle through the actual work you need to get done for the day you're doing like one to two to three hours of work maximum on a, on a really busy day the rest of the time you're just dicking around you're out of your mind man we're talking most white collar work, okay? Now, having said that, having said that, that's perfectly valid, okay? That's perfectly valid. They're paying for me to be available during those times. Pretty much, yes. I love when people say, you're out of your mind. Well, they're probably watching me, cleaning their house, but technically they're, they're on billable hours, okay? If they work from home. Or they got me in one ear, Okay, at the place of work, they're listening, so they can't technically watch, right? While simultaneously, they have the Excel spreadsheet up every single time the manager walks by, and you're just over here, sitting here, being like, yeah, dude, you're crazy. How dare you say something like that? That's normal. It's a normal thing. That's a perfectly valid thing to do, okay? The reality is that you shouldn't even have to sit in that place of work for that time frame regardless, Many of this is just ridiculous. You don't have to do that. You shouldn't have to do that. The service sector doesn't work in that same way. Many of you are in the service sector, or many of you, for example, are delivery drivers, and you're listening to me on the job as well, but technically you're actually doing more work than uh, the, the amount of work required for the white-collar uh, professional for that specific time frame that they actually have to do work you're like literally on your feet in some regard if you're in the service sector or if you're like uh, in retail like you're uh, even if there are no customers coming into the shop you're still on your feet and you're still cheating it a little bit and you're listening service sector generates more jewels per hour of work yeah now this is not about like what your contribution is this is more so about what kind of 
uh, value you generate for the company. And the value you generate for the company is always going to be more, regardless of if you're working one hour out of that day or all eight hours of that day. What you are getting paid is always going to be less than the value that you actually generate on paper for that company. Okay? That's it. That's how it works. So, it is what it is. Maybe find a more labor-friendly term than bullshit jobs is pretty lame to hear from a leftist. Bullshit jobs is actually from uh, David Graeber. Um, and I don't have an issue with bullshit jobs. I think all most jobs are bullshit jobs. You just, you know, you, you just get paid. It's a good thing. It's a commerce. It's a term literally coined by a leftist. Also, I do something that's barely a job. I sit online and talk to a camera. So let's not even get into that, okay? Lamo, is it currently free blue-collar worker? Most jobs are bullshit jobs? Yes. Here, let's let David Graeber... Bullshit jobs I define as a job where even the person doing the job secretly believes the job really shouldn't exist. But nonetheless, a part of the conditions of employment is that you have to pretend that it does. It's important to distinguish between bullshit jobs and shit jobs. Um, mostly when you say bullshit jobs, people will at first assume you mean jobs that just you don't really want to have. Jobs where they don't pay you well, jobs where they don't pay you well, jobs where you work under difficult or humiliating or onerous conditions. And most of the jobs that are shit jobs actually aren't bullshit jobs. Most of the jobs that um, oppress you are jobs like you know, cleaners or ditch diggers or, or nurses. Uh, servants of various kinds um, who are mistreated, at least know they're doing something. Bullshit job is actually kind of the opposite of that. A bullshit job, you're often given a lot of money, you're treated very well, with a great deal of respect, and I'm often seen as you know, the, the person in your family who most made something of yourself. But at the same time, you're secretly haunted by the knowledge that you're not actually doing anything, that if your job didn't exist at all, the world either would change in no way or even might become a slightly better place. This is one of the great mysteries of our time as far as I'm concerned because we usually associate make work, stupid made up jobs with sort of state socialism. You know, In the Soviet Union they used to say, well, you know, we pretend to work in chaos. They make up jobs which are completely unnecessary. That makes sense because they had an ideology of full employment. On the other hand, capitalism, that's exactly the thing that isn't supposed to happen. A private firm would never hire someone and put out good money to someone who they don't actually need. But in fact, if you talk to people who work for large corporations, they do it all the time. How does that happen? I think part of it has to be explained by... The whole seven people could do the job of three people thing just shows that our workday work week is too long. Human productivity, especially mental labor, drops off pretty quickly throughout the day. Eight hours slash 40 hours is too many. 100%. 1,000%. Political pressure. In a, in a way, just as in the Soviet Union, there was a central directive saying we need full employment. They didn't say, therefore. This is so clueless. Most jobs are necessary for society to function. Yeah, no, you're right, man. Yeah. No, you're so right. Um, I assume, belt no road, you are. I, I, I'm going to assume that you're, you might be like too young to have actually worked in a real, like, corporate environment. Yeah, someone said, brother, I sell pop-up ads for dick pills. <laughs> this topic exposes young chatter so much. And by the way, for the record, for the record, I don't have a problem with bullshit jobs. I think they should exist. It's great that it exists. It's busy work. It keeps people's minds occupied, okay? It's like fake nonsense that we've created together. However, having said that, you know, you should still be paid adequately for it. And you should have more free time. That's the point. Which is why I get mad when companies actually do engage in layoffs like this. Because it's a bullshit job to begin with. And it's your responsibility to at least, like, hire these people, right? God damn, there was a partner streamer schizo posting the hardest. I've never seen someone. Oh my god. That was wild. Shatter is only right in the sense that if all of us with bullshit jobs were unemployed society, we'd be significantly worse. Yes make up bullshit jobs, right? Uh, but they didn't say don't do it. Uh, in a similar way, uh, we have pressure from both the left and the right to create jobs all the time. You know, on the one hand, you have the left saying we need like public works, we need more um, 
money being given to consumers to stimulate the economy. Some chatters are the people that aren't trustworthy, and so everyone keeps up the facade around them as well as the bosses. Yeah, maybe. On the right, they're saying give money to capitalists and they'll hire people. But this, the one thing left and right totally agree on is the solution to all problems is more jobs. But they never say jobs that actually do something, you know, jobs that are worthwhile in any way. It's just assumed that if jobs are created, they will necessarily serve a purpose. And if you don't specify that, if you don't have a self do you think calling them bullshit jobs helps with that? Because most right wingers are would agree that they're bullshit and use that as an excuse to lay people off. Yeah, most right wingers that say that are themselves also working in bullshit jobs. Though that's the point. What are some examples of these jobs? Most white collar work revolves around this, like a mediator that's supposed to take away some of the bandwidth away from another mediator from another mediator. It's busy work. We have it all around uh, administrative work. Like most administrative work is like that. Project managers, things of that. Uh, it's it's like uh, additional parts of the corporate bureaucracy that you experience uh, is is almost always a job that they just made, right? That's it. I'm like, no, no, no. It's the other jobs that are bullshit jobs. My job is a real job, you see. Yeah, this doesn't mean that you don't actually willingly and and legitimately actually participate in a in a project, for example, in a meaningful way. This doesn't mean that your output is meaningless. It doesn't. It doesn't at all. Of course, like ultimately you're working on a project. You, you go and work for Ogilvy or OMD or a marketing firm of sorts, right? And you sit there all day. You got me playing in the background and you kind of wait for the person above you in the ladder to give you a task, okay? The task that you need to complete is oftentimes going to be like something that you can do in with 10 minutes to 20 minutes of research. But of course, you do that research over the course of a long period of time. That person got another job from another boss up the corporate ladder, and that person got another job off the boss from another corporate ladder. Like, it's just like mediators all the way down to you, the new associate working at uh, an account, I mean, working at a marketing firm, right? I wouldn't say IT is a BS job where needed. Oh my God, don't get me started, okay, Mr. Uh, my job is to sit there and tell you to turn the computer on and off. This doesn't mean that it's not a valuable service that you're providing, okay? It just means that, like, oftentimes many of this, oftentimes many of your work is, much of your work could be delegated out to, like, a couple different people. Corporations know this, they, but their upsizing and their downsizing specifically is about under at least uh, a financialized capitalist structure is completely about market conditions and completely about what their stock is going to look like. That's it. Don't worry about that guy. IT workers are the most delicate egos on the planet. This doesn't mean that like, like Twitter is a great example of this. Twitter currently operates on a skeleton uh, crew, right? That's the first thing that Elon Musk did. He went in and he wiped out giant chunks of the platform. Now, is the platform good? Of course not. It genuinely is bad now. It's significantly worse. But does it still exist? Yes, it does. Do you understand? That's a perfect demonstration of like the, the elimination of redundancy and what that does to a company in the long term. Okay? Conscious policy of trying to make sure the jobs actually do something, you're going to end up with useless make work. It's a lot of bosses, people who hire people, just get very angry at this, at me about this. They're about the only people who get angry. Premise. They say, look, you know, I would never hire someone if they didn't serve a purpose. This is just stupid, insulting. You don't understand how capitalism works. But bosses are the last people to know what's really going on. I trust people to understand what they're really doing, or at least if anybody does, they will. Fuck, Mr. Fuller has a great quote about bullshit jobs. The promise is worth the one minute read. We should do away with the absolutely specious notion that everybody has to earn a living. It is a fact today that one in 10,000 of us can make a technological breakthrough capable of supporting all the rest. The youth of today are absolutely right in recognizing this nonsense of earning a living. We keep inventing jobs because of this false idea that everybody has to be employed at some kind of drudgery uh, because, according to Malthusian Darwinian theory, he must justify his right to exist. So we, this is like, for the record, this is like so uh, over-the-top peak uh, uh, slash uh, anti-work theory at this point that it's like frustrating people probably when they uh when they approach the subject from this perspective the thing is i am a firm believer in bullshit jobs i think they should exist make work is good that's my take do you understand
Make work is good. It is not a bad thing. Kaya. Place. Hey, place. Enough of your madness. Be a good girl, not a bad girl. She has a real job, not a bullshit job. Okay? The true business of people should be to go back to school and think about whatever it was they were thinking. Oh, sorry. Uh, so we have inspectors of inspectors and people making instruments for inspectors to inspect the inspectors. The true business of people should be to go back to school and think about whatever it was they were thinking about before somebody came along and told them they had to earn a living. Anyway, dogs never want to work anymore. I know. Wasn't Graber an anarchist also? It sounds very much in line with that thought. Yes, it is. Isn't one of the core themes of leftist economics that people should be paid for their labor? How is eliminating labor really leftist? No, this is, a, I mean, this is a, a, a different attitude. I still think that there should be, I, I don't have a problem with bullshit jobs because I think that it's all, for the most part, it's all made up. I just want those bullshit jobs to be more comfortable. But also on top of that, if you don't, you shouldn't have to work uh, a, a, a bullshit job to survive. The irony is that uh, the irony is that shit jobs are significantly more important, although they are seen as uh, more replaceable, more easily replaceable than the bullshit jobs. Those shit jobs are actually a necessity for uh, society to function adequately. So there's that other uh, uh, part of this process as well. Anyway. 80% of accountants don't need to exist and 95% of finance bro should be eliminated chatter along with 100% of HR while 100% of nurses, doctors, teachers need to exist or else society does fail. Yes. What about finance and shit? I think they're mega bullshit. I mean, the entire, almost all of, of finance as a sector is, is built around this principle. Why does HR exist? Uh, protect the company and protect the profit margins and, and, ensure that the company doesn't actually get hit with like a lawsuit or uh, a lawsuit within the already limited by a place ma'am your job is to place ma'am yeah, don't look at me like that don't look at me with those defiant eyes mm. as a very biased source please read big difference between corporate finance accounting and investment and wealth management bros sure <sighs> anyway the problem is that there's a ton of socially necessary work that needs to be done, which we don't accomplish because it's not profitable. And consequently, there's an abundance of people doing work, which doesn't benefit society whatsoever. It's a terrible allocation of labor and resources. You didn't finish the question of what the purpose of HR is. The purpose of HR is to, um, to there's already limited labor laws, limited, very, very limited, significantly limited labor protections to begin with. But within that framework of significantly limited labor protections, you can still get the company in trouble. So the HR's job is to basically uh, minimize that as best as possible. It is there to protect the company, even though it masquerades as uh, being there to protect you, the worker. That's not the case, of course. So low carbon care and environmental jobs are needed as mentioned by AOC in that intercept animation about the Green New Deal. Yeah. Their name literally states you're a resource to them. Yes. Adnan TTTK, thank you for the 20 give the subs. An important stat for chatters uh, is that around 40% of people agree their jobs are partially or entirely bullshit. Um, and then I think like, what, isn't there another study that says like people uh, oftentimes work like at maximum four hours uh, throughout their day? There was another, uh, uh, there was another poll conducted. Anyway, a lot of this stuff a lot of this stuff has to exist, though, for a society to, I guess, function in the way that it does. Um, in limited circumstances, HR might protect you if your employer is about to do some illegal shit, but ultimately their goal is protecting the company, and they might still be looking for the nearest opportunity to shit can you as soon as possible. Yeah, like, guys, I'll explain it to you this way. I was having this conversation this morning about, like, uh, whether or not I, you know, have the, the bandwidth to take time off, and and and, like... One of the things that even I forget sometimes is that, like, while I'm constantly uh, in the content minds, okay, trying to make you laugh, trying to make you go, hmm, I never thought about it this way, okay, ultimately, um, ultimately, one of the things that I never, uh, one of the things that, like, I never consider usually is that um, in Europe, for example, you have significantly more time off from your work. We laugh about, like, Italians. They don't work hard or whatever. But, like, I mean, technically, in, in many European countries, you get a lot more time to yourself. In France, it is, I believe, illegal for your boss to contact you outside of work hours. There is significantly more federally mandated time off in European countries. 
there is more value placed upon there's more value placed upon autonomy and um, time away from uh, time away from work. Now, the point is, those countries aren't on fire, or if they are on fire, it's not because of uh, this reason. If anything, they're on fire because all of those amenities that they take for granted have uh, started diminishing. Okay. What is this? This t- lady's You're TikToks are a gold go? mine? Why? I actually don't have to explain anything to you at all. I can just end your job pretty much whenever I want and for whatever reason that I want except for discrimination. I have so many bills to pay. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Lucky for you, you qualify for up to six months of... Un- what is, I had a total of 18 days off last year. That includes holidays. People said, yeah. In Denmark, it is stated by law that for every single month of work, Every single month you work, you have to have two days off to yourself as a minimum on top of like weekends, obviously. Unemployment. And it varies a lot state by state, but it's an average of $770 to $1,890 per month. That doesn't seem very long, but I guess it's better than nothing. Just be thankful you don't live in Florida because it's a maximum of only 12 weeks there. Does this mean I lose my health care too? Again, you're very lucky because you had some employer health insurance. You can actually continue your coverage through with Cobra, which is the worst patchwork process you could ever imagine. Because, hey, guess what? Now that you lost your job, you don't have the same meaningful stream of revenue coming into your pocket. However... If you want to maintain the same platinum healthcare package that you got from your job, now you can pay the entirety of it with the little amount of of, uh, money that you have remaining in your bank account. If you have any money in your bank account remaining at all. Through a program called COBRA. On average, it's about $700 every month. $700 <laughs> a month? That could eat up almost my entire unemployment benefit. That's not my problem anymore. I'm so sorry, but we have to let you go. Here is a letter explaining exactly why, and you still have one to three months of notice before your job officially ends. If I can't find another job by then, what kind of unemployment can I get? The average is 750 to 1500 euros every month, which sounds similar to the US, but remember, the cost of living is about 30% lower. And how long will that last? Up to two years if you're under 55. Above 55 is up to three years. And what happens to my health care? Don't worry, your health care is not tied to employment in France. Imagine you have no job, no health care. We would not do this. We are not monsters. Yep. You Americans are so cuck. Even here in Banana Republic, Brazil, we have yearly vacations, paternity leave, and designated days off. For instance, on Fridays, I get a break from work. And if it happens to be my birthday, it's automatically a day off too. Wait, what? It's so funny. It's so funny to think about this because it's like Americans see this and they go, they go into maximum copium mode or they're like, yeah, well, guess what? We're not gay. It's gay to take time off. I'm going to die. From not having access to health care that I can't pay for. But guess what? I'm straight. Hold on. Uh, my work forced me to take five days off in a row in a year. But I'm lucky as fuck to have the job even in capitalist America. Why do you immediately think of gay when you heard Brazil? Because Brazil is gay as hell. But that's not the reason. Yeah. But you got America's way. But you guys will pay for it in high taxes. And it's like what, I, what other people don't understand for some reason is that it's like, in my opinion, it's like a like a perfect structure it's like air it's air sealed okay it's vacuum sealed like cost of living is lower you get paid less ultimately it doesn't matter though what should matter is what the amenities are and what your living circumstances look like okay that's it that's what you should be paying attention to what the real estate market looks like how expensive it is to like uh i don't know rent an apartment what the likelihood is that you can even buy an apartment. Do you even need to buy an apartment at all? Or can you permanently be a renter without it actually destroying you? Like how much time off you have, what your quality of life looks like. That's what I think is more significant, not uh, the the uh, GDP. It's also wrong in the sense that like when you adjust to all the amenities that people get, with their taxes in European social democracies, for example, or even in developing nations, like you end up paying significantly more in America. That's the other part that most Americans don't comprehend. 
but it doesn't really matter. People have already, uh, people are so primed to thinking that all of this is, is going to be devastating for America. It's going to be bad for Americans, so we can't have it. Estonia gives up to 80 weeks of paid maternity and paternity leave to both parents and a daycare stipend when they do return to work. Imagine. Yeah, it's unimaginable. As a renter, I hate that the management company and or landlord can do whatever they want, come over and inspect whenever they want. Once the company took photos of every room once a year, horrible. You don't even have to adjust. They don't actually pay more taxes. The cost of health care is also just that high in the States. Yeah, that's the other part. And you want to know why? You want to know why the cost of health care is so expensive in the United States? Well, obviously because of a lack of regulation and having, uh, I don't know, like uh, pharmaceutical purchases uh, be illegal by the federal government, like largest purchasing entities uh, until recently. And even to this day, it's still not something that is done for almost all of the pharmaceutical purchases with the exception of like the VA. Um, but also uh, beyond that, you have an entire multi-billion dollar you have an entire multi-billion dollar industry that is a middleman. That is what insurance is. There's a reason people who work at Trader Joe's love working there. They pay a decent living wage, although still could be higher. Good health care, heavy discount on groceries, free gym membership to pretty much any gym, flexible schedule. They're considered a shitty company compared to EU standards. Yeah. It is insanely frustrating listening to righties in Denmark pleading for more privatized medical care in the U.S. Like, we don't have a fucking live stream showing off exactly why that sucks. Major ball sack. Yeah, well, um, it'll come to you, too. European social democracies, just wait. Stand back and stand by, okay? Stand back, stand by. It's coming to your backyard too. It already has. A lot of this stuff doesn't happen overnight. It happens uh, in a very slow uh, and, and almost invisible process. It's, it's impossible to, to, to capture the, the, the actual things that are occurring in your life. Uh, uh, the... the Privatization doesn't happen overnight, okay? It happens first and foremost by defunding public institutions, okay? The NHS is a perfect example of this. The NHS is supposed to be a point of pride for the British, and it should be, okay? It's a wonderful structure. It's a wonderful system. And yet, what is it now? What, how many years of austerity are we on? 15, 16? How many years of austerity under the Tories has the NHS withstood? And it gets worse, 14 years of austerity, and it has gotten worse and worse as a consequence of that austerity. That austerity is government-led. That austerity is done specifically so that inevitably you say, the NHS sucks. The NHS is bad, lads. We need a privatize to cover for it. And then first you do austerity, then you start privatizing, or rather, instead of privatizing, then you add additional private components to it, and then you show how much better the private uh, uh, parts are. Like, premium. It's premium. It's better. It's better. And then eventually, you privatize entire parts of the uh, nationalized healthcare structure. And before you know it, you are now uh, completely private. And now you need middlemen in the form of insurance to make up for that because prices are so much more expensive because there's inelastic demand for healthcare. Now, you're not rationing healthcare off of need. You're now rationing healthcare off of who can pay for it. You're paywalling it. That's it. And this is for every single aspect, for the record. This is for every single aspect of public amenities. Things that you do not even think about as public amenities. Things that you take for granted. Can you explain exactly what you mean by austerity measures? Well, we need a belt tightening. We no longer can fund the NHS appropriately. The government simply does not have enough money in its coffers to continue funding certain aspects of the national health care system. Okay? And then you turn around and you, you say you, what you have to show for it is uh, also, of course, uh, a, a lowering of taxes. Right. Right. Very well. Very, very well. Well, do not worry. Taxes are lower. It's fine. How energy privatization is bankrupting Britain, says Tom Nicholas. Another, okay, you cripple the funding. Because, like, government programs, for the record, people think government programs suck, right? But government programs do not fail on their own. Government programs are made to fail. There is no 
world in which a government program actually fails as a consequence of it being like, oh, so too bureaucratic or whatever. No, the government programs are made to fail with a lack of funding, okay? That's it. They are sabotaged by a lack of funding, directly defunding. That's it. They are not supposed to work at the behest of profit. They're supposed to work on need. The United States Postal Service is a great example of this, okay? A lot of people talk about the USPS. They're like, oh, it's too costly. I mean, it's not, it's not good. It's not for profit. Like, these guys suck. Oh, why are we paying for their... Uh, why are you paying for their, their insane uh, uh, endowments, or not endowments, insane amounts of like retirement funds and whatnot? Which, by the way, ironically, that is another way to try and fail the USPS, but we won't even get into that. The problem is the USPS, if it didn't exist, would cause the United States, entire, the entirety of the United States to collapse in and of itself because there are certain postal routes that no one is going to go to. The irony is many of the reactionaries that live in rural areas benefit from the U.S. Postal Service having a process where they deliver to you no matter what. Medication, chickens, things of that nature, okay? Little chicks and medication. Amazon would not deliver to your house if you live in this, like, rural-ass area, okay? That's precisely the reason why UPS and Amazon delivery and all matter of different delivery services actually outsourced to the USPS oftentimes when there are, there are routes that are simply too costly for them to take on. That's how it works. If something is not profitable and the structure is designed for profit in mind, then you're just not going to get that service. And you can't do that for social security checks and, and, and medication and things of that nature, like things that you need, okay? Okay. The irony, of course, is that people don't understand. That's precisely the reason why our for-profit healthcare structure has absolutely gutted the hospital system in rural areas. People don't understand. They're like, oh, I live in West Virginia. I have to go to the vet, right, to, like, get uh, any kind of healthcare coverage. I don't know what the hell's going on. Joe Brandon did this. It's like, no, dog, Joe Brandon didn't do this, okay? Capitalism did that. You don't have rural hospitals because they're not profitable. Hospitals are never profitable to begin with, okay? Elective surgeries obviously create some level of revenue, but in the United States of America, there is I don't even think there's a single hospital that is genuinely a profitable institution. They all rely heavily on charitable contributions and also public subsidies. But of course, they're not supposed to be profitable. That's not how this works. It's a hospital, man. It's crazy. You out of your mind? Anyway, this video is going viral, by the I way. Labor-related. Uh, read the replies. It's an idiotic right-wing cesspool. Sure, I'll take a look at this. I've seen it. I haven't watched it yet. Doctors are paid by the government, I believe. Wait, what? Yeah, macroeconomically, good health care pays for itself by the return of a better functioning workforce. Of course, just like education. There's a reason why other countries around the planet literally pay for you to go to college there are countries on the planet think about that there are countries right now on this universe on this planet that we exist in that are not that far away from the way we live that pay you to go to college okay in the united states of america however you have to not only pay to go to college but you also have to pay a lot of money to go to college you're just permanently in debt to even pay off that college expense. Expenses have also skyrocketed as a consequence of that. Hmm, I wonder why. This is such a obvious failure that even right-wingers recognize it. Obviously, they have their own motivations because they want to ensure that people don't go to college at all, don't, don't get educated at all because they're, they, you know, they want to make sure that people are very stupid, okay? So there's more Republican voters in general, but... Even they recognize it. Even they talk about how costly college has become. Nobody can pay $5 to subscribe to the Hassan Abbey Hour. Uh, fuck! To the Hassan Abbey Broadcast at the top of the hour. God damn it. I fucked it up. Ah! Bush delivery. Fumbled it. God damn it. Okay, everyone is being mean to me, and you need to, you're, you need to be chill, okay? Sometimes I fumble. It's fine. Y'all are being ruthless. Y'all are being ruthless, chatters. It was going to be good. Yeah. Rate for the ad break that you thought you were going to receive, not the one that you did receive. Okay. 
sometimes. Here's the three minute average now. Zero out of ten, one fumble can lose you the game. That's crazy. Fumble at the end zone. I hate you hate to see it. Do you hate to see it? Because it feels like everybody loved to see that one. Crap. Anyway, six out of ten for the cute dog behind. Thank you. Thank you. That was your biggest L of the year. Jesus Christ. All right. I cannot stand how the news has been dogging Gen Z and calling them lazy for not wanting to work a nine to five for the rest of their lives. Let me put it in perspective for everybody who's a little confused here, okay? I work five days out of the week, 40 hours a week, okay? I do not make enough to live on my own. I would not make enough to pay rent, water, electric, and eat all by myself. I would not be capable of doing that. 20 years ago when you were getting started, you could live on your own. 20 years ago when you first started, you were able to Las Canarias, thank you for the 50 gifted subs, allowing 50 people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour, despite the fact that I did get a failing grade here on that ad break segue. God damn it. Absolutely eviscerated by that. You guys are, oh my God, you wouldn't want you as a teacher, okay? You wouldn't want you to grade you, chat. God damn. Your stream makes me feel like I don't have problems in life. I don't know if there's a good thing or a bad thing. Or I don't know. Good thing, I guess. Gen X and millennials already gave the 9 to 5 gig a shot, and it fell apart miserably for most of them. Why would Gen Z want to sign up with the same false promises? All right, let's continue. To with do this. everything that I am now struggling to do. Let me add another perspective here. You've been working for 20 years. You have 20 years of working experience behind your belt. You have 20 years of experience in a career that has allowed you to gain raises, to get more money, to profit you in an economy that you created. You can sit here and you can call Gen Z lazy all you want, but I've been working my tail end off just to barely make it by. And respectfully, I don't want to do that for the rest of my life. I don't want to work my tail end off, wasting all of my life working just to barely be able to pay my bills. And that is what you created, not Gen Z. We're just here getting started. You've been doing it for the last 20 years. You tell me how it got ruined. We I think it's like odd that people are dunking on her because like, I guess it's like, it's, it's weird to like frame it from a Gen Z problem because this is a consistent problem under capitalism. And yes, generational politics specifically, like this kind of generational divide is, a, is yet another way for liberals to try and mystify class politics. That's it, okay? That's how this works. Same principle behind, same principle behind the, the uh, idea of like, oh, upper middle income or, or middle class. Like all of these concepts were created with the express purpose of trying to mystify class dynamics, which are pretty... Uh, which are pretty apparent, pretty obvious. And it's very successful, if I do say so myself. I use it sometimes as well, colloquially, right? So um, overall, what she's saying is correct. Uh, I, don't think that, I, I don't think that it's a controversial take to be like, hey, working at Walmart, as, as a worker at Walmart, I shouldn't have to work 40 hours and still not be able to make ends meet and still not be able to live by myself. That's a non-controversial perspective. The, anyone that yells at that is a buffoon. Anyone that yells at that quite literally fails to capture their own conditions. They are doing what I like to always call peasant brain. They're doing the me lord is what they're doing. They're, they're going around and saying, no, me lord, you deserve all the grain. You deserve it, me lord. The other peasants are hiding the grain from you. It wasn't that bad of a bountiful winter. That's what you're doing. You're advocating against other fellow peasants, okay? You're sucking up to the Lord. That's it. She correctly identifies America in the realization that she's never going to get out of that cycle of working for nothing. Hit her while she's taking on this video is amazing. She's correct. While alienation doesn't exist for everyone, it always hurts the next generation more. That's what the late stage capitalism necessitates. Gen Alpha will say the same, and it will be just as correct. Yes. I mean, this conditions worsen relatively to the other uh, people. And... The, the reality of the matter is that this is a problem that, that every generation has experienced time and time again. I do think that people definitely have, um, they do definitely have like rose-colored nostalgia glasses on. I mean, there's certain aspects of like uh, American existence that have uh, on paper gotten better for a broader uh, percentage of the audience. However, overall... We still haven't solved this very serious problem, which is if you work 40 
to 50 hours a week, you should be able to live on your own. That is crazy. Okay? That's crazy. It's ironic because she works at Walmart, which is the greatest welfare recipient of all time in the United States of America. As a company, um, a gigantic percentage of their workforce works on food stamps. Like, they don't get paid enough. And Walmart adjusts their wages with that in mind. They get the food stamps from the federal government or from their state governments, and then they turn around and use those food stamps at Walmart. Okay? What a way to double book. Oh, my Lord. Additionally messed up when you think about the reality that the Walton family, I believe, still maintain like 50% ownership over Walmart, which means that, like... They are directly, we are directly giving them a tremendous amount of money. Like the federal government is directly subsidizing a ginormous amount to the tens of billions in their uh, net worth that they uh, continuously grow year over year. We can sit here and we can call Gen Z lazy all you want, but you let the economy turn into what it did. You let it all run to hell and now it's gen z's fault because we don't want to work to fix your mistakes anyway i work two jobs was essentially around 50 to 60 hours a week i'm also a full-time student this late stage capitalism cycle is brutal yeah crazy statistic in the uk 20 years ago the majority of 18 to 30 year olds lived with their kids now the majority of 18 to 30 year olds live with their parents yep I'm 37, 20 years into this madness, and it just never changes, only gets worse. I'm not interested in struggling to meet some arbitrary deadline set by someone else to just pay my bills. I'll forever be anti-work. <sighs> yeah, I I don't know. Anger is an honest emotion, but I think our anger is misdirected at generational politics when it's more of a systematic issue on how we organize the economy, in my opinion. Yes, I am not a, I am not a believer in generational politics. Um, that is precisely the reason why I tell Jenk, uh, I told Jenk what I told him that, uh, it is a foolhardy, silly way of analysis that, uh, will leave you shocked when you find out that, uh, there are still very much, you know, a 50, 50 split between the two different parties, no matter what. I've shared this here before, but it's relevant again. I have my doctorate in pharmacy. I left retail pharmacy because I couldn't even afford to pay my $316,000 uh, in loans on a salary of 120 k while living in D.C. So now I make 205 k and was forced to move to D.C. to work in person at a desk job. I pay 3200 in rent and a two-bedroom uh, bathroom and lose two point five k a month in loans. I am so far away from my house, and I'm almost 32. Yeah, and you're, you're one of the highest-trained uh, professionals overall. I was talking to my mom about this the other night when she was talking about how lazy Gen Z, her Gen Z coworkers are. I asked her how much her Gen Z coworkers make currently. She said 40K. Then I asked her how much she made when she was their age working in that same job they're working in now. She said 40K. And Gen Xers and boomers wonder why Gen Zs hate working. Buy a fan of house or you fake. I'm fake. I'm fake as hell. I'm the fakest you've ever seen. Anyway. I calculate my real income by taking the gross amount, subtracting rent and commuting. That's how much I have. Uh, I have like I made 65 K, but after rent, I'm really made 40 K and I'm a truck driver. They used to call Gen X, the me, me, me generation, same story, every generation. Yes. Generational politics are unchanging because the real political, the real back and forth in politics are not on generational uh, or on different generations, but instead they are done on class lines. The dynamic between the capital owning class and the wage laborer class is still the same. The needs are still the same. Obviously, it gets a little bit more muddied with like professional, uh, with the, with the concept of like professional work and and things of that nature. But overall, it's still it's still, albeit reductive, still something that you can uh, uh, point to as your as your basis, as your found as your foundational politics. Anyway. Our work at a lab company announced they were giving everyone a raise to help match inflation prices. They only give us a 50 cents raise hourly. Nice. I mean, there's a lot you can do with that. Here's your take. If Twitch wasn't paying you enough, what do you think you'd be doing currently? But I don't know. So, yeah, nobody wants to work anymore is also another take that is existed in perpetuity. That's another thing. Like, that also doesn't go away, right? So... Yeah, I know Chris Christie dropped chat. We're, you know, I'm going to talk about our big boy dying, okay? I, I will. So, 
Yeah, I think that... But blaming something as nebulous and hard to grasp as the economy is way more difficult than just blaming your parents or grandparents, especially when they're complaining about how lazy you are. Yeah, I think, like, older generations say... the uh, Older generations... It, it's just a way to mask the truth. The real truth is class politics. As a worker, you have goals. You want to work the least amount of hours for the most amount of pay. It's perfectly normal to feel this way. This is a normal thing, okay? This is on... I'm talking about this from the perspective of self-interest. Your boss, on the other hand, the capital owner, person who owns the job, owns the workplace, owns the business, wants you to work for the most amount of hours for the least amount of pay that they can get away with paying you. This is the inherent contradiction that causes the division and also the, the uh, antagonism between the two classes. Same thing happened with your parents as well, okay? That's it. After the Black Death, there were lots of complaints from the ruling class that serfs and peasants were quiet quitting and in general didn't want to work anymore. From the statutes of laborers, 1349 to 51. You can read the same stuff in the Wall Street Journal today. This goes back to my Lord uh, argument. Whereas it was lately ordained by our Lord, the King, and by assent of the prelates, earls, barons, and others of his council against the malice of servants who were idle and not willing to serve after the pestilence without excessive wages, that such manner of servants, as well as, as well men as women, should be bound to serve, receiving the customary salary and wages in the places where they ought to serve in the 20th year of the reign of the king that now is, or five or six years before, and that the same servants, refusing to serve in such a manner, should be punished by imprisonment of their bodies. The servants having no regard to the ordinance, but to their ease and singular covetousness, do withdraw themselves from serving great men and others, unless they have livery and wages double, or treble of what they were, Want to take in the 20th year and earlier to the great damage of the great men and impoverishment of all the commonality. The statute applied to all those who did not own enough land for their own subsistence, obliging them to work for lords at fixed wages. Hence, it struck at small holders as such. That's right. So it doesn't even matter what the structure looks like. I've covered this before, the nobody wants to work anymore uh, thing before. I mean, it goes way, way, way back in time, not just like 1894. See, worker been lazy for a long time. Miracle, we're here. The other part of this that I find really cool, really fascinating, rather, is that the way that we are describing the lords, okay, that hasn't changed either. Class dynamics have not changed at all, okay? Because when you look at it, you, they're still regarding the job providers as great men. You are serving great men, okay? The, the attitude of entitlement is still there. You should be excited at the prospect of serving a great man, okay? And that's it. What holds the glue that holds that structure together at that time was, of course, still the threat of violence. But beyond that, which, by the way, still exists, we have police forces, system, a criminal justice system for this specific reason, but also the glue, the theoretical glue that held it all together was God, was religion. Nowadays, not so much. People don't really, especially in the Western world, don't really believe in the God stuff that much, but they do believe in another ideology, especially here in the United States of America. They believe it more than they believe God in some instances. That's capitalism. And the glue within capitalism is no longer the divine right to rule, but instead meritocracy. The idea that every single person can go from being a peasant to being a Lord King is consistently instilled upon the population, reinforced over and over and over again since birth. That fallacy, that not that that fake freedom that you have for class mobility, 
is seen as the shining beacon that keeps it going, okay? Meritocracy, the idea that Elon Musk, of course, worked hard and worked smart, and that's precisely the reason why he has, you know, $200 billion of fake money. He is a, yes, the myth of gifted individual, the myth of the gifted individual, Elon Musk, he deserves it. He did it. He worked hard for that money. He worked smart for that money. How dare you say anything about Elon? How dare you say he's stupid? No matter what the evidence points to, he's still worth $230 billion. Doesn't matter if he took a company and tanked it like the one that we're looking at currently, Twitter, right? He's still worth the most, which means he still has, he still is the best, right? Bigger the number, better the person. And that's it. The myth of meritocracy keeps this entire process together. To those in the underclass, it gives them motivation that one day they too will have bountiful wealth. They too will live like the Elon Musks of the world, the Richard Branson's of the world. And it reinforces the position that those at the tippy top of society that have the same level of power and wealth accumulation that kings had and lords had in times before, it reinforces and re-solidifies their position. It tells everybody that, no, they deserve to be there. They worked hard and they worked smart. One million times smarter, as a matter of fact. Bullshit. It's complete bullshit. Meritocracy is a lie. There are certain sectors where you can get close to a meritocratic approach, but you can never, you can never overcome probability. Probability will always play a role. Luck will always be a factor. You have no say in what zip code you're born in, and that's precisely why on average when you look at it, your zip code that you were born in is more determinative of your future prospects than anything else in this country. The financial circumstances that you were born into, in this country even, greatly dictates where you are going to end up. Now then, beyond that, you also have to think about the zip codes elsewhere. Who's to say that a child born in India to a lower caste structure is not destined to be a brilliant scientist. We simply don't know. There is so much potential out there that is laid to waste as a consequence of the awful material conditions that so many people, the overwhelming majority of the population on the planet is subjected to, okay? That's it. This does not mean that hard work does not factor into it. Of course it does. Of course. I am not a particularly skillful person. I'm not smarter than the average person. I'm not more charismatic than the average person. I'm not more, uh, I'm not quick-witted, okay? But I do work really hard, okay? I do. I work so hard. I work nonstop. You can say that pff, work Omega Lol on Twitch, but when you, when you compare the, the just sheer number of hours that I'm on camera... Uh, and you compare it to other forms, other facets of entertainment, other facets of media, you start to recognize it. Obviously, the thing I do is nothing in comparison to like a delivery driver or someone that works in an Amazon distribution facility. That's backbreaking labor. That's a necessary uh, uh, form of labor, okay? But the reality is I have a tremendous amount of luck that factored into what family I was born into, what I look like, even what I look like is a great example. What I look like is a great example. Because if I didn't work so hard, if I didn't work out every single day, if I didn't manage my diet all the time, if I didn't have a tremendous amount of willpower to, to stop myself, I wouldn't look the way I do, right? So obviously luck played a role in that and hard work played a role in that as well. When I first started on Twitch, I could not yap at all. I was terrible off the cuff. I could not speak off the cuff at all. That was part of the reason why I wanted to even begin speaking on Twitch. I wanted to get better at delivering the information that I had in my mind uh, in, a, in an uninterrupted fashion without going, uh, 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 all the time. And I still do that, right? And the only reason why I can talk uninterrupted for 10 consecutive hours over and over and over and over again is because 
for years and years I've been doing this. That's it. That's it. It's not because I'm gifted. You know who's gifted? Will. Will is a natural talent. Okay? He works really hard, too. He's the genius of hard work, as he always says. I am as well. But he's also very gifted. He is naturally a very charismatic person. He is a born theater kid. He is a showman. I never was. Okay? Here's the thing. Being a born showman or being gifted in a particular field gives you a massive advantage early on. Okay? Same with athleticism, for example. If you were like a particularly athletic person, which I am not, right? You can pick up a ball and pick up a sport very quickly, right? Will is also a very athletic person, for example. But I'll give you an example where I, you know, am, am uh, better than he is, right? Basketball. I'm not a very athletic person, but I'm better than many people, many average basketball players for two reasons. One, because of the natural height advantage that I have. I'm much taller, right? So there you go. That's the, that's the immediate benefit that I have from luck. But then also beyond that, I work very hard. I play a lot. I play basketball for years and years and years, okay? So when I pick up a dodgeball, I'm not that good. I'm not good at all. But at least when it comes to basketball, I am good. It's something that I'm very confident in. It's something that I know I'm good at. Why? Because I've done it for years. So natural talent only takes you a certain pla- to a certain place, okay? Dude, write a book or something. Holy shit. Wait, what? Any excuse to talk about yourself? Jesus fucking Christ. Narcissism overload. Dude, write a book or something. Holy shit. Trying to make your head bigger any way possible? My friend, I, I don't think you understand. I, I can only give you examples of-, of my life so I can try to make this easily digestible. I'm, I'm a Twitch streamer. This chatter is added out for you since you mentioned Hutch earlier today, by the way. Yeah, I, I don't know what else to explain in this situation. Like, if, if, if you... <sighs> makes me sad, dude. 39 month subscriber, like, failing to comprehend a point that I've made for 39 months makes me sad. I've been making this point, this exact same point, in perpetuity for the past 10 years. It is one of the most important aspects of understanding my worldview and understanding, I guess, uh, it, it just the anti-capitalist perspective, anti-capitalist framework, is that hard work is important, okay? Of course it is. But ultimately, meritocracy is still a lie. The way that it is explained to people is is just is silly. It's just a way to try and get you on board and not have you recognize that many of the people in the tippy top are not there because they worked harder than everybody else or worked, uh, uh, you know, smarter than everybody else. That's not it. They were able to capitalize on the opportunity given to them, and many people do not have that opportunity because of the material conditions that they're born into. And there's nothing you can do about changing that reality. This doesn't mean you should stop working very hard to overcome those hurdles. I say that all the time, okay? You should. You should do everything in your power to overcome the conditions that you were subjected to. That's precisely the reason why I explained some of the uh, things that I had to overcome myself. I mean, there's a reason. My entire family is obese, for example, okay? People say, oh, you're attractive. That's like the reason why you're successful. And it's like, sure, but I work very hard at that. That was something I was able to overcome. It did not come easy to me. It did not, I did not have any natural gifts in that regard, okay? Obviously, that only takes you so far. Anyway, <sighs> so I explained all of this to you because I want you to understand that um, it, it, the system is designed around a lie, and that lie has changed over the years, People but the, the fundamentals the of house. or the necessity for that lie has not changed. And the necessity for that lie to exist is the class dynamic that works regardless, that, that exists regardless of whether you uh, recognize it or don't. If you do recognize it, then you can work against it. How can you work against it? Through collective bargaining, through getting together, okay, and, and demonstrating the only power that you have as a wagey, okay? That's class awareness. Class awareness is the first point towards demonstrating class solidarity. Capital owners are class aware, and capital owners demonstrate class solidarity all the time. You need to develop class consciousness, and then you need to engage in class solidarity. I would rather lose by telling Now we're going to move truth. on to 
Christopher Crystal Ball Christie order to win. And I feel no differently today. Who? Because this is a fight for the soul of our party and the soul of our country. Has dropped off. He's suspending Why his campaign. Why have we resisted the calls to drop out of this race? Because unlike some of the other candidates, we're fighting for something bigger than ourselves. We're fighting for something bigger than self-interest. We're fighting for something bigger than the next title. I've got plenty of titles. I have enough titles to last me the rest of my life. U.S. attorney, governor, husband, father, son, brother. Goomba. I have enough titles to last me for the rest of my life. We are fighting for something bigger. And it's something that conventional wisdom thinkers just can't possibly understand. And so they've been saying for weeks and weeks and weeks, because of some polls, that I should drop out of the race, that I should get out for that reason. The smallness of the campaigns, who spend more time arguing and worrying about who should get out of the race than they have spent going after the front runner. They spend all their time saying, oh, Christie should get out, Scott should get out, Pence should get out, Hutchinson should get out, Bergham should get out. They and their donors have a different target every day to try to minimize the attention to their own campaign. Now, their own campaign is a campaign that doesn't play to win. It's a campaign that plays to not offend. The problems in our country, the divisions and influx at our border, the problems with our enormous debt, the failures of our education system, all of those things and much more. The loser of speech this already. Party, All right, I got a PP. Governing party of principles. We have to be willing to do the hard work and take some of the heat that comes with it. We have candidates in this race who have run away from forums where they were afraid they were going to be booed. I run into the forums where I know I'm going to be booed because being booed for telling the truth is a badge of honor. I'm proud of everything we've said and done so far. And I'm proud of all the people who have supported us and are willing to do what needs to be done to restore the soul of our country. Because in the end, all those issues that we've talked about at all the town halls, they're all really important, but they're no more important than the most important issue. And that is the character of the candidate. You don't know what's gonna come across the next president's desk. You think you can predict it, but you can't. No one asked George W. Bush or Al Gore what they would do if four airliners were hijacked and flown into symbols of American power and killing thousands of Americans. No one asked them that in New Hampshire in 2000, but I was glad we had a man of character sitting behind the desk in the Oval Office when that attack came, because I knew George Bush would do everything he needed to do to protect this country and its people and put them first, not himself first. Imagine just for a moment, if 9-11 had happened with Donald Trump behind the desk, the first no! thing he would have done was run to the bunker to Wait. protect himself. No! Uh, imagine! He would have put himself first before this country. 9-11, folks, imagine it. That he is unfit to be president of the United States is unfit themselves to be president of the United States. Campaigns are run to win. That's why we do them. I see the chairman here. In New Hampshire, he knows we run campaigns to win. My goal has never been to be just a voice against the hate and the division and the selfishness of what our party has become under Donald Trump. It's also been to win the nomination and defeat Joe Biden and restore our party and our country to a Wait, new what? place of hope. And if his target is libs and he just shit in their mouth holding up GWB, excuse me, do you not know any liberals? They love George W. Bush now. Path to accomplishing that goal that I would get out. And it's clear to me tonight that there isn't a path for me to win the nomination, which is why I'm suspending my campaign tonight for president of the United States. No! I know, and I can see it from some of the faces here, that I'm disappointing some people by doing this. People who believe in our message and believe in what we've been doing. I also know, though, it's the right thing me to do because I want to promise you this I am going to make sure 
that in no way do I enable Donald Trump to ever be president of the United States again. And that's more important than my own personal ambition. So Who are you going to support, now. sir? We have to decide in the next 10 months who do we want to be as a country. Endorse Joe Brandon, coward. We forget that people... Dude, it'd be sick if he endorsed... If he, it'd be sick if he endorsed Vivek. He'd be like, America needs Vivek Ramaswamy. We our problems, and we have to fix them. We have to secure our border, and we have to do it in a way that's smart and sensible and will work. Because it's not right to have a porous southern border in this country. But I want you to remember something. Those people who are coming over that border, many of them are walking hundreds, if not thousands of miles to get there. Because here is where they see hope. Here is where they see freedom. Here is where they see success. Here is where they see that flag, which means for them, thousands of miles away in other countries, all of those principles. We are still the indispensable nation to the rest of the world. We need to be the indispensable nation once again to each other. We need to believe in America as much as they believe in America. Right now, they believe in America in a way that this country, angry, divided, with selfish leadership, who puts their own ambition first, isn't doing for our country anymore. We need to change that. And every election is an opportunity to change it. Oh, shut up. God. We have people in this race. All they will do is tell you how bad everything is, how angry we should be. And there's certainly sufficient reason for anger at the failures of the leaders we've selected. But they're doing it not for that reason. It's not a moment of honesty and transparency. Believe me, it's not. It's because they believe when we get angry, what we'll do is naturally relate to the angriest voice in the room. Donald Trump. Oh, I'm going to talk about the hot mic moment in a second. Every day because he's angry. He wants you to be angry so that you'll relate to his anger and then to vote for him. Please understand this. I have known him well for 22 years, more than anybody else in this race has known him. And I can promise you this, if you put him back behind the desk in the Oval Office and a choice comes and a decision is needed to be made as to whether he puts himself first or he puts you first, how much more evidence do you need that he will pick himself? And if that is what we have there, then people are going to remain angry, remain divided, and become even more exhausted than they are today. The country that I think we should choose is the country that recognizes that our differences have always been our strength, not a weakness, not something to divide us and anger us, but our differences have been our strength. We've come from different countries at different times to different places with different skills, with different religions, and yet only here can those people. Bro is really a, a recipient of the fattest endowment from Yappington University. Oh my lord, dude! To come to Great Britain. No wonder great. he's just like the biggest loser. This is so. Oh my god, dude! He's just Real saying nothing. Of this country. This is like, dude. West Wing has ruined an entire generation. Place oh where my god! No longer want to come in search of a better, freer, stronger nation. That will be the real problem that will be harder to solve. He's just, we Jesus back our allies Christ, around the world. dude. He's yappa dappa dude. We have to think twice about having America's support, yet we have petty politics interfering with supporting freedom fighters in Ukraine. We have petty politics interfering with defending our friends in Israel. <laughs> we have petty politics interfering with what? making sure. What petty politics? Who's interfering with Israel, dog? If anything, Israel's interfering with Ukraine. The fuck do you mean petty politics? Our friends Country over at Israel. Where we can do all those things because leadership aspires to something greater, not to appealing to the lowest common denominator is what the leadership of the last decade and a half in the White House has done, including the current president. We need a country that once again feels like everyone has a stake in what we're doing. That we can bring people together. And it's hard. It's hard to do that. I did it for eight years in New Jersey in a democratic state with a Republican governor. And it's hard because we have real disagreements. 
those disagreements are small compared to the things that we have in common. But it takes effort. We have to work at it. We have to believe that the other person has a rightful place in our country. We have to believe that whether we agree with them or not, they got elected too. And they have a right to have a voice and to be heard and to have a vote and to have it count. This race has always been bigger than me. It's bigger than any one person if you do it the right way. I tried to change the conversation in this race. You know, he's I tried so to boring in bed, dude. I cannot imagine him having sex. I'm sorry. Like, not, no, no disrespect. This ain't fast shaming, but like, I stood on those debates. Like I physically stages. don't know what's Every happening. Every one of them, the pundits in the media and the professional politicians who worked for other campaigns said I wasn't going to make any of them, right? Before every debate. Now, Christy won't make this one. No, we make this one. I made every one of them. But when I stood on there, I watched the other candidates arguing with each other as if the race was between us. Audience is in an unskippable cutscene. The guy who's in front ah! and wasn't there wasn't to be spoken about. Like Voldemort in the Harry Potter books. He who shall not be named. Because they feared even bringing up his name would make him appear with his magical, mystical powers to end their political careers. So they say ridiculous things, make ridiculous points. And let me tell you, if Donald Trump becomes the nominee of this party, the moment that it happened was when Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis and Tim Scott and Mike Pence and Doug Burgum and Vivek Ramaswamy stood on that stage in Milwaukee in August. And when we were asked, would you support someone who is a convicted felon to be president of the United States, they raised their hands. Give Ron credit, he had to look at everybody else first to see if he wanted to raise his hand, but then he raised his hand. Kind of like cheating off somebody's paper in high school. They raised their hands, and I did not, and will not, and I cannot countenance that behavior. I want you to imagine for a second that Jefferson and Hamilton and Adams and Washington and Franklin were sitting here tonight. Do you think they could imagine that the country they risked their lives to create would actually be having a conversation about whether a convicted criminal should be president of the United States? I can't tell you how many people in New Hampshire have asked me, why isn't there a law against that? The answer is because nobody ever thought that someone would have the audacity to run for president as a criminal, and they never thought that any American oh, electorate up. would actually support it. First of all, dude, you're a criminal. Like, what do you mean? You're you're basically also running for president along with 35 years as old, a person who's a done born American citizen. They didn't think who, who's throw done here things that should be considered crimes. Maybe we okay. Get that part. I, I, I'm, I'm cutting this. I'm cutting this. Let's get to the fun story. Uh, Chris Christie actually had a scooplet backstory behind the Chris Christie hot mic moment, including a voicemail to the Daily Beast and the former uh, New Hampshire GOP chairman and the candidate he was talking to. Chris Christie on a hot mic got caught before this uh, Yappington sesh. Okay, here's 55 seconds of it uninterrupted. Caught on a hot mic ahead of his expected announcement that he's dropping in the presidential race. He says Nikki Haley is going to get smoked, and a petrified Ron DeSantis called him. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. We know we're right, but they don't want to hear it. Right. And, and there's, you know, we couldn't have been any clearer. Right. We couldn't have been any more, any more direct or worked any harder. So, you know. Yeah. Well, when you give land to China and places like that. Yeah, that's been, what you get. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, she spent $68 million so far just on TV. Spent 68 million so far, 59 million by DeSantis, and we spent 12. I mean, who's punching above their weight and who's getting a return on their investment, you know? And she's going to get smoked. And you and I both know it. She's not up to this. And she's still 20 points behind Trump in New Hampshire, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, they're saying in a candid moment what we've been saying in perpetuity is that they're, they're just having a mid off, okay? They're all smoked. They're all cumstered. They're all dumpstered. There's no way to, to take down the Trump train, baby. Now, when I say that, there's probably liberals out there who go, see, Hassan loves Donald Trump. It's like, no, man, no, okay? I mean, I love Trump as a, as a phenomenon. I, lo I love Trump as a comedian, okay? I don't like Trump as a person in a position of power, obviously. So it's just like, 
These guys have nothing going on uh, on the Republican Party side. That much is clear to me. It is especially clear to me, considering that uh, they thought Ron DeSantis would be the great savior for the institutional Republicans. Uh, and and very quickly, Ron DeSantis tanked any kind of support that he could have cultivated. Um, he tanked it by just being awful, too. Like, he tanked it almost entirely on his own. That, that makes it even funnier, because he, he tanked it due to just being unfuckable, unrisable. Okay, so now, so now they're looking at, oh God, Ron DeSantis is such a great analog for Elizabeth Warren. 40 points, trailing 40 points behind in his own goddamn state against Donaldo Trump, dude. It's just so awesome. It's nutty. Whew, so bad. Point is, institutional Republicans are, are in a, in a, Rock in a hard place situation where uh, the primary general electorate uh, dynamics are are coming to cook them a little bit. That's Nick Merckx's goat, baby. I'll never forget that. That's my goat, dog. Ron DeSantis. <laughs> my goat. So, yeah, and Elon Musk, too. I guess, like, what I'm trying to say is Ronald McDonald DeSantis with his Mickey Mouse rings that he got due to Donald Trump and due to COVID, okay, is... is was was destined to fail when people found out how annoying he is. He is not a good retail politician at all, okay? Now they're trying to back the other pony, Nikki Haley, okay? And that's not going to work either. It's just not going to work. Here's Chris Christie on Hot Mic, by the way. Here's the backstory, I guess, on the Hot Mic moment. What is this good for Chris Christie? This speech rocks. Oh, my God, John. Come on, man. Come on, dog. This guy's a charlatan. Like, what are you doing? Okay, anyway. Um, oh, here, let's finish the, the last part of the, the hot mic. He's, gonna, he's still going to carry out. Right? Yes, oh, he's, I, t- you know, I talked to, De- DeSantis called me, petrified he's that probably, I would. He's probably getting out of town. Huh, the guy goes, he's probably getting after Iowa. Holy uh, moly, let's hear what Wolf has to say about this. Very, very powerful, very dramatic statement, suspending his presidential campaign, but not necessarily endorsing any of the other Republican candidates. I want to bring back our political team for some analysis. Uh, David Chalian, he was so, so tough on Trump, probably the toughest I've heard him so far in this campaign. What's your reaction to what we just heard from Chris Christie? Well, obviously, Chris Christie leads this campaign in uh, the getting very after same getting out after Iowa no getting Biden. after Iowa getting but out Wolf, after Iowa um, his assessment I think gets to the heart of this entire story which is that this has been what he has been selling and it has not been bought by hmm. the Republican primary Ain't nobody not, is uh, buying and uh, even you know not really in New Hampshire as he was in third place there now that doesn't change his the values and he said very much cnn lies why not watch democracy now or something because i'm the democracy now of the situation i'm i'm looking at liberal media and and giving you analysis on liberal media donald trump unfit for the presidency then you yourself are unfit for the presidency those are stark words to leave to his former opponents and look at the timing of this uh, chris christie is uh, obviously not unaware that there's a debate tonight in iowa on this stage right behind me between desantis and haley at the timing of this uh, chris christie is uh, obviously not unaware that there's a debate tonight in iowa on this stage right behind me between desantis and haley and has clearly chosen this moment to inject his rationale for his candidacy into this race at the time of his departure to sort of leave it sitting there uh, for the remaining candidates running against Donald Trump to consider. But again, I think it is crucial that we look at where Republican primary voters have been throughout this race. And Chris Christie has been relentless in this argument that he has been pitching to voters and they have not been buying it, Wolf. Yeah, he was very, very firm. He said Trump is unfit to be president of the United States. And if uh, any of the other Republican candidates refuse to say that, they are also unfit to be president of the United States. A very strong statement indeed. Uh, Jeff Zeleny, uh, it was very... I think Chris Christie making strong statements is like less impactful than someone like myself making strong statements. Because I feel like I even have more broad popular support 
as a person who's not running for president and simply an online Z-list e-celebrity than Chris Christie does. It's like that person in the crowd making a statement has the same weight of Chris Christie. The only people that will try and make this into a real thing are going to be obviously people in this community because we love memeing on our big boy, but also uh, the the people at CNN who will inevitably hire Chris. So they're just like kind of glazing him before they, they're they're basically glazing him for for uh, you know our next co-host. See, he's big, he's big time. <laughs> anyway, Chris Christie's large. He does. Life. These words are etched in stone, and I can promise you, the Biden campaign and Democrats will use them as an argument for independent voters against Donald Trump. But before any of that, I think the probably the most surprising Hold on, I and my food. Most stinging indictment was against his uh, fellow challengers. And he's really said much of that, some of it in private uh, um, about uh, Nikki Haley and others, but it certainly uh, puts to rest any suggestion that he is going to be uh, rushing to endorse a Nikki Haley. Now, his voters, of course, he doesn't own his voters. So voters will make an individual judgment whether there is an endorsement or not. But I think a very striking speech, a very uh, really uh, pointed remarks on many, many fronts that gives us significant amount uh, to analyze and discuss going forward. Walt. One yeah, of my favorite things is like SE, he whether Chris Christie can move the needle within the uh, within the electorate in the primary race. And it's like, bro, he was polling at like one percent. OK, what do you mean? Move what needle? Like, I, I don't know what the cross tabs look like on that. Like, who is a Chris Christie to Donald Trump voter? I'm sure there are some Americans that do that, but ultimately it's like eight people. You know what I mean? I like imagining it as a joke, right? Like I'm the median Republican party voter or I'm the Chris Christie to Donald Trump voter. There's a lot of crossover appeal between the two. For me, it's just because they're the, the two fattest, okay? Like I'm the guy voting in the Republican primaries on who's the fattest. This is precisely the reason why Chris Christie was my first choice, and now Donald Day is my second. I said, you know, none of the candidates are really coming for Donald Trump. He would text me and point out, no, 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 I did, because it mattered to him that that message was heard. So I think he's deeply disappointed, maybe a little bitter. He sounded a little bitter. Um, but that speech was incredible and, oh yeah we're gonna talk uh, about know, this in a I second unfortunately just oh, don't know that there's much of an here, audience here let's talk about the, the real right thing that matters okay yeah, it was a very let's talk about the real thing that matters donald trump what did he have to say about chris christie dropping out baby january 10th post the rising this very moment at the top of the hour there's a three minute ad break okay that's something that you're gonna have to endure because at the top of the hour, while I'm reading this Trump statement on Chris Christie, if you want to know what he had to say, well, that's paywalled now. Three-minute ad break at the top of the hour. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you get one free Prime subscription a month. Use it on your favorite broadcaster. Your number one Chris Christie supporter. That's right. Here's the three-minute ad break now. Let's see what Donalde had to say about Chris Christie. People saying this is so scummy is so funny. Because, like, you can still see what I'm looking at on stream, usually. Um, anyway, Darmy77, thank you for the five gifted. All right, here's what he said. I hear Chris Christie is dropping out for the out of the race today. I might even get him to like, I might even get to like him again. Anyway, he was just caught on a hot mic making a very truthful statement. She's going to get smoked. You and I both know it. She's not up to this, which is kind of cool. Um, I was expecting more from him. I'll tell you this. That, uh, like, I, I was expecting more from Donald Trump, right? Like, you know, like a fat joke or something. Like, oh, he dropped out of the race, but, you know, he's racing to get some donuts. Or, you know, you could hear him dropping out of the race all the way from D.C., right? Something like that. But, like, what I think is interesting about this statement in particular is not who it mentions, but who it doesn't mention okay and uh of course careful eyes have already noticed this as well it's not mentioning ron DeSantis. it is once again only mentioning nikki haley chris christie made comments both about nikki haley and also about ron DeSantis, and yet donald trump is not talking about that at all and only lasering in on the nikki haley statement 
I find that very interesting. Chatters, yeah. It, you know who else is not mentioning? Aza Hutchinson nor Doug Burgum, which I think is messed up because as a Burgumaniac, obviously uh, we love him, folks. We love Burgum. Uh, don't know why he's not, uh, you know, he's doing our boy uh, a disservice by undermining him like this and not thinking that he's a serious threat when he constitutes a genuine threat, perhaps the biggest threat, okay? But yeah, I do think it's interesting that he's mentioning Nikki Haley and not mentioning Ron DeSantis, showing who he feels threatened by legitimately. Never was Chris Christie. Obviously, he likes getting those dunks on him. But uh, it's pretty funny that uh, liberal media is, like, hype, hyping up Chris Christie because, like, this was his major audience, obviously. I've said this since day one. Chris Christie has been running on the Democratic primary ticket for some reason, okay? He's also doing birther theory against Haley now. Okay, that's cool. Gateway Pundit mentioned. Haven't seen that in a while. Didn't know that they still existed. In Nikki Haley's situation, reports indicate that her parents were not U.S. citizens at the time of her birth in 1972. Based on the Constitution as interpreted by Paul Ingracia, this disqualifies Haley from the presidential or vice presidential candidacy under the 12th Amendment. Yeah, that's not a real legal scholar, okay? And that's not a real legal opinion. It doesn't matter if her parents weren't uh, uh, American citizens at a time of her birth. <laughs> it's so stupid. I like that we're trying to be like, my legal scholar. And then you look at the legal work and it's just racism, like white supremacy. Guess what? Sucks to suck. My parents uh, are not uh, American citizens, but it doesn't matter Chris because just I am because I was born here. Words where he announced he's suspending this campaign. Uh, what are you hearing over there, Omar? Yeah, it's a pretty big moment. And I can tell you, I've attended a lot of his campaign events over the course of his presidential campaign. It's stretched back to uh, last summer. And he's never really read off of a script, particularly when he is in a town hall situation, which is the situation he was in tonight. Tonight was one of the first times I have seen, if not the first time I have seen him, he was referring down to a piece of paper or a script of some kind, indicating he wanted to say, wanted to be very intentional about the words that he was saying tonight. And these were the most critical words he said. Take a listen. This is so I'm dumb. I'm suspending my campaign tonight for president of the United States. I know, and I can see it from some of the faces here, that I'm disappointing some people by doing this. Oh, yeah. People who believe. Yeah, definitely. So all four people. I also know, though, it's the right thing for me to do because I want to promise you this. I am going to make sure that in no way do I enable Donald Trump to ever be president of the United States again. And that's more important than my own personal ambition. Now, these comments are really in sharp contrast to what we saw less than 24 hours ago, where essentially uh, Governor Chris Sununu of New Hampshire here talked about or mentioned that there were discussions about him potentially ending his campaign. So we put some of those comments to Christie's campaign and they pushed back pretty hard on that. Uh, Christie even went so far as to tell one of our local affiliates, Sununu is a liar. Then less than 24 hours later, here we are with Chris Christie actually suspending his campaign. So we'll be pushing some of their officials to figure out what changed again from yesterday into today. There are also some very key moments over the course of this campaign, among them whether Governor Chris Sununu would endorse him or Nikki Haley. Sununu went with Nikki Haley, despite uh, Sununu and Christie having known each other for a long time. Then last month, Christie and I sat down together, and that was really when there were many questions about whether Nikki Haley and Chris Christie could coexist in this race and whether one of them being in would hurt the other. And Christie told me point blank, he wasn't going anywhere in this race. He went so far as to tell me personally, Omar, you're gonna see me on January 23rd, which is New Hampshire primary day, shaking hands until the polls close. And then a little bit over a month later, here we are with Chris Christie officially suspending his campaign for president. Very significant indeed, Omar. Thank you very much for being on the scene Is it? For, uh, for us. I want to get some more on the breaking news right now. And I want to get reaction, immediate reaction coming in from the Trump campaign. See, that's Kristen Holmes is joining us with more. I know you're covering the Trump campaign. Kristen, what do you... It's so funny to be like, wow, shocking that he lied to us. It's like, first of all, that's what politicians do. They lie. And secondly, this is the one aspect that they, of course, have to lie about. He's trying to literally... Nobody, you're not going to make any money. You're not going to raise any campaign funds being like, I'm going to peter out this campaign before I even get to New Hampshire, okay? Change the trajectory of the race. Now, I do want to point out one thing. That hot mic moment that Kylie mentioned, we're saying that Nikki Haley got smoked. 
he also, Christy also mentioned Ron DeSantis. I have been sent that moment by several Trump advisors. They are blowing it up on social media, only the part about Nikki Haley. And that really goes to what we have seen with their strategy in New Hampshire in the last several weeks. They have been watching. Yeah, dog, listen, ride- there you go. You don't need to go to CNN to, to get the analysis. Your boys got if you. If Christie's voters or potential voters are going to move to Nikki Haley, that's something that we might not know until they actually get to the ballot box. But it doesn't mean that Trump's team hasn't already been concerned about Nikki Haley. We know that the campaign, along with the super PAC, MAGA Inc., that is supporting Trump, has spent $4.5 million dollars in advertising in New Hampshire hitting Nikki Haley alone. Just to give you an idea here, the campaign is no longer spending any money hitting Ron DeSantis, DeSantis neither is MAGA Inc. Oh. The Super PAC is spending $1.3 million a week hitting Nikki Haley on immigration in New Hampshire leading up to that primary. This was already a concern of there's something that they were watching very closely. They do believe that he will ultimately take New Hampshire, but this is a wrinkle and this idea of where Nikki Haley's, or excuse me, where Chris Christie's voters could go, obviously not likely to go to Donald Trump or at least a bit large swath of them. If they end up with Nikki Haley, that's yet another threat. Yeah, that's important indeed. Uh, where do those, uh, those voters go, the Chris Christie voters, now that he has suspended his campaign? Uh, thanks very much. Kristen Holmes reporting for us. I want to bring in some of our political experts into this conversation for some serious analysis. And Nia Malika Henderson, how do you think uh, Christie's leaving the campaign right now, leaving the effort to win the Republican nomination is going to play out as far as the other candidates? Bro, this is so funny. This is, they're so desperate. I mean, myself included, like, as a media person myself, I will admit, like, obviously I like to have fun and, like, cover random stuff all the time so i have like a lot more bandwidth a lot more leeway with leeway with my coverage but if you're cnn you're so cooked there is no content you're in a content drought so you're suckling on the nipple of of chris christie right now right like they have nothing they have so nothing right like leading up to a debate that is supposed to happen tonight there's a cnn republican presidential debate the first of the first liberal media outlet that is covering the Republican primaries, like doing a debate and Vivek is not showing up. Donald Trump is not showing up. It's just Nikki Haley versus DeSantis. It is so bad. They are so desperate. They are in dire, dire circumstances that that is the reason why they're offering this level of coverage to the, the, uh, 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 Cristobal Christie dropping out. As though it is any in any way, shape, or form remotely important to the grand scheme of things. Well, I don't think we're going to see any immediate impact in Iowa yeah. because Chris Christie wasn't playing there. Uh, you may see some impact uh, in New Hampshire. But what was so stunning to me about Chris Christie's speech, uh, which I thought was really heartfelt and, and quintessential Chris meeting. Christie, because he left no stone unturned, and when he wanted to criticize somebody by name, he did, was the disdain that he showed for his opponents. I'm covering for two race. reasons: one, because it's I'm eating, one- and two, because I like to look at like what liberals are saying. Because half the time, half the time, my analysis revolves around like what Republicans are saying and how to combat that misinformation. But it's also important to understand what your parents believe, right? And this is probably what your parents believe. This is a bit of a lib watch, okay? Mama Cole says, you're so right. They can't talk about Biden's policy because it doesn't exist. They can't talk about Israel because they can't spend all day justifying it. They can't talk about Republicans because Trump is going to win the primary. I mean, overall, there's just not enough fun content out there in the realm of politics. That's it. That's it. There's not enough momentum. There's not enough movement. It is destined to be a rehashing of 2020. And that and and not as fun and exciting because Trump is not president, and now you have a old geriatric man who can barely string sentences together on his potential second term, right? The incumbent going up against a, a very very unpopular figure, like a profoundly unpopular former president. It sucks. It sucks so bad that like the only person that's like remotely interesting that isn't getting any coverage but is like doing surprisingly not that bad in polls is rfk jr now obviously he's a non-entity in and of itself but it is rather odd because if you had i'll tell you this much if gloria lariva or whatever 
or or Cornell West as a third party candidate had that level of momentum in the polls as RFK Jr., they would be getting eviscerated by the media. Okay? They'd be getting eviscerated by the media, but RFK is not. Why? That's interesting to think about. Because RFK's politics are so centrist liberal Democrat, with the exception of the kooky anti-vaxxer stuff, that, like, I don't think the media has any way of covering it. Like, I don't, like, the media doesn't understand, like, a, like a third-party candidacy that's going to be uh, playing the role of a spoiler towards, like, a Brandon. I also don't personally know how, uh, like, who the, the RFK Jr. voter is. I assume he takes more from Trump than he does from uh, Brandon. That's what I suspect. My mom loves RFK Jr. She feels act, she feels he actually cares about people instead of the ghouls in charge now. Okay. And that even extends to someone whose last name is literally Kennedy. There is no one less of an outsider than a fucking Kennedy, man. Nikki Haley is going to pass it. Alice, you talked about, oh, he has to have this timeline and he's got to rest and recharge. You know, the clock is ticking, right? I mean, if he really wants to have an impact in New Hampshire and Nikki Haley sees New Hampshire as a launching pad to defeat Donald Trump, then, you know, Chris Christie's kind of got to get on it. He may be on the phone to Liz Cheney right now. I mean, who knows, (laughs) right? He... He sounded an awful lot like her when he said he's going to devote the rest of yeah. his time to defeating uh, Donald Trump. Who does that sound like? Uh, you know, Kate, I want to get your reaction to a key part of Chris. Are you guys ready for my controversial analysis based on no polling data whatsoever? In New Hampshire, you know who actually is surprising? You know who I suspect will be surprisingly good? RFK Jr. Like, if there's any closeness in the polling in new hampshire as opposed to other states in the republican primaries okay it's because i assume a lot of republican voters that would have voted for donald trump are going for rfk jr this does not mean that they're like the republican party voters are looking for like an institutional republican it's just that rfk is like sexier for the cranks he's more of a crank than trump and new hampshire is the crank state it is the most like weirdo sovereign citizen coded state in the fucking country beyond like Arizona. It is so crank uh, coded as a state overall. It is so libertarian that I totally see them being like, no, RFK Jr. RFK Jr. is the guy. Yes, New Hampshire is the Arizona of the North. You know, I don't often spill on myself when I'm eating, but when I do... I I simply make sure to hit every single article of clothing I have. I don't know how. Like, I never spill, but when I do, it just goes from like this down to my t-shirt. My undershirt somehow gets wet, and then my pants and my shoes and my socks. I'm like, how did this happen? How did this go? Like, how did this literally hit everything that I'm wearing? How is that possible? Anyway. Just pointed out. Christie calling out Trump as being a threat to democracy. Many Republicans certainly agree with that. But if you've noticed, Haley and DeSantis have really stopped short of attacking him on that. Instead of that avenue of attack, they're more going after Donald Trump for the chaos and the drama and painting themselves as a new generation of optimistic leaders that will look forward for the American people instead of look past for your past grievances. I think that is a a great message to rational Republicans. Unfortunately, it's not really cutting through and it's really not stopping Donald Trump from having a 20 and 30 point lead in many of these states. I'm anxious to see how they navigate that field. Uh, in this debate. Well, mm-hmm. you know, it's Chris These people Christia, fundamentally don't understand Nikki why Haley. Republicans vote for people. Optimism? What rational Republicans? You're not doing news. You're not doing journalism. This is pure fantasy. You might as well be talking about fucking Dungeons and Dragons at this point. They're, where are the rational Republicans? That's not a thing. And optimism within the Republican Party is also not a thing. What are you talking about? In the Obama, post-Obama world, especially so... Republicans run on grievances. They just want someone who's going to kill Democrats, okay? Uh, obviously, I'm exaggerating, but, like, they want someone who's going to hurt Democrats. Like, there is no there is no stability. There's no need, like, oh, well, yeah, yeah, we're looking for someone with stability. It's like, yeah, that's why they voted for Trump, and that's why he was so profoundly popular and still is in the Republican Party. So dumb. 
deriding her, but he certainly did that in his speech tonight. And he seems to also be hinting that maybe Nikki Haley is sort of hedging her bets and mm -hmm. eyeing, you know, being number two on, on Donald Trump's ticket, being his vice president. And um, so that's, I think, one of the things that he sees and, and maybe leaves him not necessarily wanting to, to throw any sort of support behind her in advance of New Hampshire. And we'll see if there's a direct face-to-face -face meeting between the two of them before New Hampshire and potentially that could be very significant if, in fact, that happens. Do you expect, uh, the t you expect him to endorse her? Uh, look, whether or not he does right away, I think, remains to be seen. The question is, I think he's done a tremendous job. I, I'm, I applaud the fact he took it right to Trump. The reality is he's got very high Apex Twizzy, numbers. That's so messed up. You said new RFK Jr. conspiracy about Jewish tunnels in New York. That is so, like, if you're going to debate me, you have to do it with something that's like not all that exciting because like then I feel let down. Now you just bum me out because I got so stoked that like that was a real thing because it's so close to reality and so exciting for someone such as myself that now I'm just sad. Like I would love to like usually when you debate me with other shit, it's not something as, as captivating as like a piece of content such as that. I believed it. I wanted it to be real. I wanted it to be very real. It wasn't like, yo, check this out. Like, I don't know. Aza Hutchinson is running again. Like, this is what he had to say. It's not something like that. This is like real shit. This is way more significant, way more consequential. It's very strong in the way that he, that he likes. That may be one thing he can point to that he likes about her. Yeah, um, I, yeah I mean, they're from the sort of establishment wing right. of the Republican Party. She is trying to kind of, I think, soften her language on abortion, too, uh, to contrast herself with Ron DeSantis uh, in, in particular. So we'll see. I mean, ultimately, I think endorsements are sort of overrated uh, in this uh, political environment. It wouldn't hurt her to get that endorsement. <laughs> but I think, uh, to Alice's point, voters are going to make up their mind as to who they think it's a very kind way of saying like endorsements are overrated when you're Chris Christie polling it Christie minus one percent on a hot mic talking about Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis. I want to play this little clip. You know, and That's she gets smoked, and you and I both know it. She's not up to this. DeSantis called me, petrified that I would. He's probably getting out of heaven. What did you think? You know, I don't know what the context of this is. Does he mean smoked in Iowa? She's Does he mean smoked, smoked you know, overall? Listen, he's looking at the same polls we're looking at, which is that Donald Trump has the heart and soul of the Republican Party. He's at 50, 60 percent uh, in some of he's these got my polls. Heart and soul. So it's hard to really look uh, at this race and point to a single state that Nikki Haley, that Ron DeSantis can win outright and sort of catapult themselves uh, to a to an outright victory. I mean, listen, a lot of these candidates came in with, you know, sort of wishing that they had uh, the kind of base that Donald Trump has, that they could maybe tear away from his base, that Trump, you know, was experiencing sort of fatigue from his voters. Turns out that's not true. It turns out they love Donald Trump in some ways more in 2024 than they did in 2016 uh -huh. in 2020. And you also have to think about in that speech tonight, he really got somewhat choked up at one point in the speech when he talked about, I'm putting my ambitions aside. I've looked at this. I do not see a viable pathway forward. And he felt as though he let his donors down and his supporters down. And I think ultimately Chris Christie is going to listen to what do his donors and his supporters want him to do moving forward and what is his best way to contribute to the, not just the Republican Party to, to 2024, but his end game of preventing Donald Trump from getting yeah. the, right. the Biden he's, campaign he's, should be making a play for Chris Christie uh, supporters? Uh, I think not in this moment, but I think, <laughs> I think not right this second. But, uh, but I do think as we move into the general election. What supporters, man? He ain't got no supporters. He, then it is absolutely for the Biden campaign, it's going to be all hands on deck because, you know, what are they trying to do? They're trying to rebuild the 2020 coalition that put Biden in the White House. So it's, uh, it's voters of color. It's uh, moderate suburban voters, which presumably Chris Christie and the kind of never Trump wing of the Republican Party, uh, a voice from that wing of the party, uh, can be helpful. It, having a, a Republican endorsement shows, you know, Joe Biden is somebody who is, uh, you know, who can speak to the middle, who can find compromise, which is, I think, sometimes an underappreciated uh, uh, message, under something that voters appreciate uh, that doesn't always sort of get picked up in the same way. So. Having a Republican like Chris Christie come out and say, you know, the stakes are so high, 
that I believe Joe Biden uh, should be reelected president rather than giving Donald Trump uh, another shot at the Oval Office, um, that would be valuable. So I would say not right this second, but, uh, <laughs> but once we on once that, we get into the general election, absolutely. But eventually. Absolutely. On that open mic, did he say that he heard from DeSantis? He said that DeSantis, yeah. DeSantis yeah. reached was out petr him. petrified. petrified. Yeah. Yeah. Petrified. About what? We don't know. Whatever that right, means. We, know. we need yeah. more. Yeah. Like, about <laughs> what? It means that Nikki would get the votes. That Nikki Haley yeah. would get yeah. uh, Chris Christie's endorsement. Book right. them on your show tomorrow. All right, everybody, thank you very, very much. We're following. No, man. DeSantis reached out petrified because he's cooked and Nikki Haley is passing him. That's it. He's petrified that, like, the, he was supposed to be the second guy, the guy to replace Trump. And now the institutional defenders in the Republican Party are pulling their support from Ronald McDonald DeSantis with Mickey Mouse rings and putting them behind Nikki Haley. All right, there's a couple things I want to talk about. Boeing One, we're going to talk about Boeing again, okay? We're going to talk about Boeing. This is important to talk about because apparently Republicans are now doing this DEI shit. Okay, remember, DEI is just a substitute. It was CRT beforehand. It was affirmative action back in the day. It's basically just an academic way uh, of, of, like, saying the N-word, okay? I don't know how, how better to describe it other than that. It's just to basically say, like, black people are inferior uh, and, and DEI initiatives are, are, are uh, ruining the country, okay? No matter what, no matter what happens, it's always, it's always just, like, Somehow, it's always minorities in positions of power, okay? Minorities in positions of power, they don't need to be there. How'd they get there? Oh, they got there because it was unearned, and they got there because, you know, they were, uh, woke culture put them there, okay? DEI means diversity, equity, and inclusion. These are, um, you know, these are just, like, more liberal initiatives in the corporate structure to, like, teach people not to do microaggressions. It's like, Hank, don't touch your black colleague's hair. That sort of stuff, right? Um, you know, don't uh, sexually harass your female coworkers. Things of that nature. Those are the DI initiatives in the corporate world. Um, it's it's uh, ultimately uh, there are some, I guess, benefits to it if you are from a marginalized background. Like some some people take advantage of it, which is a good thing. You know, I always tell you, uh, kings, queens. Uh, the emperors take advantage of them okay uh take advantage of those initiatives if you are uh, a part of this uh, marginalized identity why not but overall it's a it's a way to try and i guess correct the historic inequality right it was like back in the day it's not like white people were the most qualified to be in positions of power it's just that uh you know that was how it was nobody uh, nobody non-white or not a wasp was getting into a position of power. It was just like virtually unheard of, impossible, right? So in a way to, uh, I guess, combat that and the generational benefits that that has uh, yielded to the uh, broadest uh, white population, you have some way of trying to elevate marginalized voices into positions of power. And it's ultimately a good thing. It just means like you're expanding on the pool of talent that you're hiring from, Right. That's the goal. The goal is to not just look at dudes that look like you and think like you, but instead to look at like a larger pool of talent so that, uh, you know, you don't miss out on some opportunities of having a black person, for example, uh, in this position of power. And that's ultimately a good thing because uh, you have a different voice in the room. However, obviously, most of these uh, uh, black and brown uh, faces in high places are simply also reinforcing the same uh, the, the same structures that they came out of. There's some survivorship bias in there, too. Uh, Barack Obama is a great example of white supremacy in America. Electing Barack Obama did not solve racism at all. It probably uh, didn't do anything, really. Maybe even made it a little bit worse in some ways as far as, like, a, a black person also reinforcing the same... Uh, white supremacist values as the president solidifies it even further, right? Gave false hope, that kind of thing. So I don't think that was Obama's fault entirely, though, was it? Yeah, of course not. I would never say that. Um, however, 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 uh, basically what ends up happening, um, what ends up happening is, 
What is the reason why all criminal is black? Thank you, Chatter. Uh, you, you did it. You demonstrated once again by the sheer whiteness of your skin that you, of course, inherently are smarter than every black person. So smart that you don't even need to use proper grammar when, uh, you know, developing your incredibly brilliant perspective. Most of this is copium, for the record, okay? It's just pure copium. It's pure unadulterated copium. If we're going to get down to, like, the the psychology of racism and where it comes from, it's like... Um, a sense of entitlement that was instilled upon you that you obviously uh, are not experiencing. Like the what you're seeing in the real world is not matching with the expectations that were placed upon you uh, on simple virtues of like uh, superiority. So then you just like try to cope as hard as possible and say things like, well, black people must have gotten to that position without actually earning their degrees or without actually earning that place of, uh, of, of uh, excellence, right? Like it's not... You know, affirmative action is the reason why you're here. You wouldn't be here in any other circumstance, right? Like, it's things of that nature. It's just pure copium. It's just like you're a loser. Uh, you don't want to hyper-focus on legacy admissions, which is the real affirmative action, right? And you're simply coping with that reality by claiming that, uh, you know, uh, people are, are somehow lesser than you, but they got to that position because they're black or brown or a woman or Asian or whatever, right? So that's it. Uh, it's called a begrieved entitlement. Okay, that's a really good take. Uh, that's a really good term. I assume that's some academic shit that I didn't know about because I don't read. Um, yeah, so that's it. It's like people people love coping with their failures, even though they should probably reanalyze why they failed um, and, and reexamine that and try to, uh, try to understand what like the systemic faults were in that situation. Right. And rather, uh, people don't do that and instead go, I'm not at fault. It must be the system. Okay. Now, why am I talking about all this? Now, many people in here are woke. What does this have to do with the plaintiff's on? Says Momo Cole. Great question. Many people in here are already woke. So we already know racism. Not very smart. Kind of stupid, as a matter of fact. Right. However, how stupid can you get is a real question that we must ask ourselves on this beautiful day and the answer to that is tim pool stupid does anyone have the clip that i'm talking about because tim pool folks he had a phenomenal take a phenomenal take about the boeing alaska Airlines 737 boeing flight for those of you who don't know what happened on this alaska airlines flight i'll give you a, a brief analysis on it okay first and foremost Oh, do you have the video? You found it? Oh, here it is. Here it is. It's so good. It's so fucking good. So, for those of you who have been under a rock, there was a very viral video that came out over the weekend, okay, uh, of a Alaska Airlines Boeing 7, uh, 737 flight that uh, had a little bit more breathing room, okay? Popped off on TikTok, popped off on Twitter, turns out, one of the doors that was not being used as a door just kind of popped out, okay? Extra ventilation, if you will. Now, because of this, uh, hours after the Alaska Airlines flight, uh, they had to make an emergency landing in Portland, Oregon with any inconveniences and a full refund for the aborted flight. Now, that's not the main story here. Now, the door situation was kind of funny, kind of interesting, uh, luckily, Nobody died. Nobody actually uh, was injured. The, the people sitting on that row were accidentally not on that flight. Okay? Now, you say not a door, an actual panel. It's a panel where there is supposed to be a door. The Alaska Airlines is not using it as a door, however. So, technically, it is a panel. So, yeah, here. I'll show you the video, too. Here it is. Not even 20 minutes into the pli uh, flight, a part of the plane flew off. There you go. Extra breathing room. Now... It's an emergency exit door? No, it's not. It is supposed to be an emergency exit door, and in certain airplanes, it can be used as an emergency exit door. On this plane, however, this airline is not using it as an emergency exit door, so you're not correct on that, okay? There is no door there. There is no door there. It's just simply a panel, okay? Now, I am not an aviation expert. However, I do know many aviation experts, some of which I did consult. Why did I do this? Because I wanted to see whether there was any veracity to the claims being made by Tim Pool here. Claims that I also saw Elon Musk uh, also hype up uh, after 
uh, I noticed that like this new story was being presented as yet another way that black people are actually dumber than white people. So let's take a look at what the real responsibility, who the real responsible parties are in the Boeing uh, Alaska Airlines 737. Is it capitalism? Is it cost cutting? Is it corner cutting? Is it an endless profit seeking structure that has created worse and worse products? Or is it simply a hypothetical black pilot who's just much dumber than a white pilot? Well, let's take a look. Was erased. The question is why? Now they'll come on and say, oh, it's just an accident. It's an accident. But I wonder if there's actually some malfeasance in that. Right now, it's an argument that the planes are no good. Following this report, we've got new information that loose bolts are found on door plugs on grounded United Airlines Boeing 737 MAX 9 jets. These door plugs are areas of the plane. They're not emergency exits. They're optional. Some they do use, some they don't. I'm wondering how much of this is actually the planes are bad, or are we looking at a diversity hire problem where we have these pilots who are incapable of doing their jobs, and so you're getting... Just say the M word, man. Just say the N word. Like, what is this? What is this song and dance we are playing, dog? What is happening? Yo, there is nothing more cucked than being a conservative in 2024 where you just want to say it so bad and you're constantly shackled by woke culture, stopping you from being able to say it because then you'll be perceived as a racist. So you have to constantly find new initiatives to be like, uh, DEI, uh, uh, CRT. Meanwhile, you just want to say the N-word. That's it. That's it, brother. Because there is no better situation where you tried to spear dick this DEI initiative nonsense, okay? Where, like, the, the responsibility of the pilot is so stupid. He's not even talking about a diversity mechanic hire, chatter. No, He's trying to say is it must be black pilots getting pilot error. Maybe the cabin was pressurized in. No, 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 no. It gets so much dumber. Please, 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 please. Jobs. And so you're getting pilot error. Maybe the cabin was pressurized incorrectly, causing the door to blow out. They're then yelling in the cockpit. What did you do? What did you press? Oh, no, I pressed the wrong button. And then they realize we will get in trouble and be sued if people find out what we what we admitted to here. So they erase the black box voice recorder. So then it's a, oops, we have no idea. It must just be the planes are no good. I love that, dude. I love that so much. I love that. He's like, he's like, what if it's a DEI pilot? And they're, they also, they accidentally hit a button. There's just that big old eject the door button there, okay? And they hit it, okay? And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, no, dude. I hit the eject door button. Stop. And then the other pilot's like, no, dude, as black pilots, we're so stupid and worse than white pilots. And you're also a, a gay woman, black pilot. Oh, no, we just said it on public record. What do we do? Like, that's what happened. Like, in his mind, this is the events that unfolded. So I, I looked into it, right? Like, I wanted to understand if there is any physical way that that panel could have actually gotten yeeted as a consequence of pilot error, okay? And the answer is no. So if he was talking about DEI, you could have probably said black mechanics are getting hired due to DEI. You could have said, um, I don't know, Boeing is hiring more black and brown engineers as a consequence of DEI, and they're bad at their jobs. Like, even then, I'm teaching you how to be better at racism, dog. You could have done a better job. You're not even trying. He said, it's the black and brown possible uh, uh, diversity hire pilots that hit the magical ejecto patronum door button. And that's what happened when it's not even a fucking door. There's no door there. It's a panel. But they erased the black box law. It's just like, yeah, there is a, there is a bandwidth to, to how many... How many hours it records? They recorded over it. Okay. We talked about this already. By the way, we don't even know if the pilots are black or not. Like, that's the other part about it. We don't even know if they're DEI pilots. What if they're white? But to Tim Pool, it doesn't matter. Okay? That's the funniest part about it. It was a woman pilot. Oh, there you go. It's not. It's not. It's, that's it. That's it. 
They're making women pilots now? They're, nope, nope, that, there you have it. Ashley St. Clair was tweeting about a flight that landed from Newark, New Jersey, and it bounced on the runway, hard landing, nearly totaling the plane. I think the plane is disabled. It Like the fuselage looks like it was bent and cracked up. And according to Ashley St. Clair, or I should say she asked whether or not this was a diversity hire who was fired and then rehired, even though they shouldn't have been. We got a pilot shortage. Flight cancellations like crazy. Are these airlines hiring in large numbers and are they hiring? I like it. This is what constitutes were reporting. I saw a plane land and it landed hard. So then I was like, is this a, you know, like a black person or a woman? And they didn't really tell me anything. So I'm just making the rest of this up. But yes, I'm tweeting out that I saw a plane land hard and I thought to myself, this must be a non-white man pilot. It's awesome. Like, this is just such a cartoonish way of coping about how white men are no longer on top, brother. I mean, they, they can't even hide it. Like, they all look like they... They all are listening to Tim, and they're just like, in their minds, they're like, this sucks shit. Bring for diversity, because uh, we know Boeing's all about it. Take a look at this. Global oh. equity, diversity, and inclusion. Oh, he's doing it. Never mind. Never mind. He's doing it. Global equity, diversity, and inclusion. Inclusion report. I'm wondering if what's really happening is... The infrastructure failures we're seeing are due to the fact that all of these companies for the past. He's he's also he's covering his bases. He's like, if it wasn't the woman pilot, if, it, if it's not the woman pilot, then it's the, the women engineer. <laughs> As decade plus have been prioritizing hiring. Yeah. And planes famously didn't crash before we started hiring black people and women, uh, brown people and women, just women in general, honestly. Based on ideology instead of meritocracy. Yeah. I don't know what to say other than the fact that uh, there was another uh, there was another Twitter account. What is it called? Like IQ or something? The one that does like race science that Elon Musk was uh, replying to, you know, our very own apartheid lover. Wait, what? Um, diversity is what doomed the Titanic sub. Yeah, no, that's pretty funny, too, because this guy's a fucking rabid anti-Semite, I'm pretty sure. Right. And he's literally using the diversity hiring has worked out so well in the past. Titanic Tour CEO didn't hire 50-year-old white guys because they weren't inspirational. I love this. Brother, there is no person more responsible for the fucking idiotic capsizing of the Titanic sub than literally a white guy. So even when it's a white guy who's directly responsible, these fucking dumbass Nazis look at that and go, it must have been the black women that he hired. Like, what are you saying? <laughs> or identical... When, when we're talking about failure, the Titanic. It must have been DEI responsible for the Titanic. God, these people are so stupid, dude. Now, before you hyper-focus on my words as far as, like, uh, uh, me saying, like, oh, just say the N-word. You want to say the N-word and be like, no, Hassan, this wasn't about racism against black people. This was specifically against the women. It's the same shit. People love utilizing DEI, first and foremost, against black people, obviously, but also, just in general, against non-white men. That's it. Here is what I wanted to show you. Where is it? You wouldn't want your doctor performing brain surgery? No, no, no. This isn't, this isn't the original one that I was looking at. You wouldn't want your doctor performing brain surgery on you who was an unqualified candidate that was pushed through thanks to DEI initiatives. People need to start suing companies with DEI programs for racial and gender discrimination. Bankrupt them 100%. Dude, what are you saying? Oh, here. This is the one. This is the, the crazy race realist, uh, race sciences guy. Hasanabi is a terrorist. That is all. Absolutely, brother. I terrorize your mother's pussy every night with this dick. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I know I said I wasn't going to be vulgar this year, but that was just an opening. Much like uh, what I call your mother's legs. Oh, my God. I'm still at it. Okay, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. He wasn't talking about you. Oh, shit. I'm sorry. Well... I apologize. I apologize, chatter. I got riled up. I was going to come after your dad, too, and I was going to say I fucked him as well, but this time, we're not going to... I Only your mom. She loves it. I'm your father now. I've adopted you. You are you are my son, okay? You are my gay son or thought daughter. It's cool. It's, it's a... Not, I'm not doubling down. I'm saying it's in a loving manner, okay? <laughs> He's like... He's literally leaving. <laughs> he left the chat already. He's like, I'm never returning ever again. 34 MKD50. Thank you for the 50 gifted subs. I've lost him. I've lost another viewer. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. Where were we? 
Uh, the average IQ of U.S. Air Force pilots is about 120. And the figures I've seen for major airline pilots range from 115 to 120. First of all, brother does not know. Wait, where are the figures that he's seen? Like, I, I love this kind of stuff because they just make stuff up. There's no way. The figures I've seen uh, from major airlines, like, I believe the U.S. Air Force numbers, right? Because, like, they do look for that sort of thing. Which is, uh, whatever. Uh, I, you, you, you know, placing this level of emphasis on IQ is already silly. Okay. But then he's like, um, major airline pilots range from 115 to 130. By contrast, the mean IQ of graduates from two of those United Airline HBCU partners, in air quotes, is about 85 to 90 based on the average SATs at those schools. The SAT correlates reasonably well with IQ. So here's what we've done so far. Okay. Number one, IQ is already bullshit. Okay, it doesn't mean anything. It just means you're good at test taking. Okay, which is why the SAT correlates reasonably well with IQ. Number two, he does not have information on whether or not these hypothetical pilots have been IQ tested and whether they meet the, not standard, the standard that he's claiming, the average IQ range or not. Okay, so now we're two layers in. Like, this is just, this is why I say, just say the N-word, okay? Because the reality of the situation is, like, you didn't IQ test the fucking uh, uh, potential black pilots that are joining United Airlines, okay? You didn't do that. You're just saying simply that the HBCU partner, like, the HBCU IQ range is 85 to 90, which I don't even know, uh, and he doesn't either, by the way. Guess what? He doesn't know that either. Because he doesn't actually have the IQ numbers for people that have graduated from HBCUs. He's simply saying it's about 85 to 90 because that's what the SAT scores are. So, like, this man does not even have the data that he claims he has. He's simply making it up. He is, yes, extrapolating. Okay, so now we're not even on the antiquated and, of course, silly... Uh, uh, but for not forgotten science of, of art of race science and race realism, he's moved beyond it. He's saying SAT scores correspond or correlate perfectly to IQ. So I am speculating that the HBCU graduates have an IQ uh, rating of around 85 to 90. Okay. But not only that, but you also don't even know if the pilots that have made it to the United Airline pilot program from the HBCU have been IQ tested, they haven't. No one has been IQ tested at this point. And the best part about it is IQ tests already are not a good indicator of whether or not you're going to be a good pilot. So it's we're now three layers in to this nonsense, okay? To put this in the context, the HBCU IQ averages are within 10 points of the threshold of what is considered borderline intellectual impairment. Yeah, except there is no HBCU IQ average. You made it up. You made it up. There is no HBCU IQ average numbers that you have. You made it up, okay? Not only did he make it up, HBCUs are historic black uh, uh, colleges and universities, okay? <laughs> so, so he's just extrapolating off of made-up inferences that he is working off of made up hypotheticals and at the core of it all is just white supremacy that's my favorite type of thinking because it's just pure unadulterated racism that is masquerading as an intellectual thought and why do you do this well you do this because you're cocked you're a fucking cuck you are so unimaginably cucked by liberal norms that you can't sig heil like you want to. So suck my dick. Okay? That's pres you are more cucked than Sneeko at that point. You're so desperate to say the N-word, but you can't say it. So you have to run and change people's minds by being like, guys, well, I'm going to do a bodies and spaces here. As a white identitarian, we have to find a, a scientific principle behind why black people are inferior than white people. And I'm just simply extra that you can't do it. You can't say the N-word. You cannot 
shit on black people openly in the way that you want to. So you have to masquerade it. You have to hide as though, you know, uh, there is a, there's real data that you're operating off of. Just say it. So cucked. Woo. This gives me a little bit of hope, you know? And it's the same as like Elon Musk. It will take an airplane crashing and killing hundreds of people for them to change this crazy policy of die. Okay? Instead of DEI, die. And I love that. Go ahead, Elon. Say black people are worse pilots than white people for no reason. You don't have any data for it, but you want to feel that way. And you will eat up whatever corresponds to your biases. Say it. But you can't do it. You can't do it, can you? Because then you know, there's some norms you can't cross. There's some boundaries you can't cross, right? You deeply want to say it, but you can't because you're fucking cucked. And that's what they hate the most. Oof, I love it. I love it. That's, the, that's my uh, silver lining in the cloud, right? These people who are so unimaginably desperate to try to, to do a little bit of racist, agitative propaganda, but can't openly do it in the way that they in the way that they would be able to if they were unshackled, right? But unfortunately, <sighs> their contemporaries, their counterparts, they're going to look at them, they, them and go, yeah, d I don't like this, okay? I don't, I don't like uh, what you're saying. It seems like you're kind of racist, and I don't like that. Racism is bad. Oh, <sighs> Not as bad as the top of the hour ad break, but bad nonetheless, you know? I have a close family friend who used to fly for a major airline, a black male pilot who reported a coworker for flying under the influence of alcohol. They protected the guy who was flying drunk, a white dude, and fired my family friend, DEI, my fucking ass. Now, here's the thing, guys. Yeah, the optics would be bad if they say how they feel, but they have to be cucked by optics. That's the point. That's the best part. Okay? Uh, 34 MKD50, once again, delivering the greatest initiative, allowing 50 people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. The biggest oiler out there so it, by the way this is a very serious subject like why why this this malfunction happened is a ginormous problem you have an entire division in the federal government that dedicates itself to this investigation you have boeing that wants to know what happened you have alaska airlines corporate that wants to know what happened you have multiple unions from the mechanics all the way to the engineers, all the way to the air stewardesses, all the way to the pilots, all of which want to know what happened. The idea that Tim Pool thought that he could just say, this must be a woman pilot or a black pilot and DEI initiatives are responsible for this and get away with it without like the truth actually coming out is so silly, but of course... People just want to hear what they want to hear. It doesn't matter. People are going to Tim because they want him to say those things. Okay? He's just giving them what they want to hear, which is it's not our own personal failures that have caused us to not uh, get positions in society that we were told we were entitled to. It must be some other thing. It must be some woke liberal nonsense that's elevating black people into positions of power that they do not deserve. Okay. That must be what is going on. That's how white supremacy works. That's how white supremacy operates. <sighs> yes. As the child, as the chatter said, entitled, uh, uh, aggrievement or big grievement, right? Good shit. Anyway, New from Luke W. Goldstein, the Boeing 737 Max plug door that ripped off on an Alaska Airlines plane only exists because of cost-cutting production techniques to facilitate cramming more passengers into the cabin. Stay with me because this is important. Airlines wanted more seats in planes, but FAA rules mandate a certain uh, number of exit doors per passenger. Boeing preferred making a standard plane regardless of seat configurations, so they built a plug door to fill the exit door space if it wasn't needed. Aggrieved entitlement, yeah. The plug door that fell 16,000 feet into a Portland backyard is a symbol of the desire to overlord planes with passengers of standardized production and of outsourced subcontractors and of weak oversight from federal regulators into these dangerous schemes. There, there it is. So it, was, so it was deregulation and cost saving and not DEI. Yeah, I mean, it always is the same, man. It's always the same. Of course. Of course. At every step of the process... You can blame capitalism. By the way, the hilarious situation is that this story already happened with another Boeing Max plane. It's always and forever about the money. 
It's not some weird, nonsensical, symbolic bullshit like, oh, uh, we got to have more black pilots. And automatically that comes with the assumption, we got to have more women pilots. Automatically that comes with the assumption that like somehow black pilots or women pilots are just like worse than, you know, white male pilots. Like, get the fuck out of here, dumbass. You're stupid and you're getting your audience to believe in dumb shit. That's what you're doing. You're misinforming your audience and and you're, you're basically singing them a fucking lullaby. And guess what happened? In the Boeing 737 MAX crash, who do you think was blamed first? That's right, ding, 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 pilots. Boeing built an unsafe plane and then blamed the pilots when it crashed. Cost-cutting, corporate arrogance, and a new plane that was supposed to fly easy. An exclusive excerpt from Flying Blind, the 737 MAX tragedy, and the fall of Boeing. It was yet another cost-cutting initiative, okay? They tried to fix a hardware problem with new software, and that software tanked. As passengers filed in between the stove bags, da 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 you guys know the story, okay? Boeing 737 MAX 8. Every step of this process, there is someone who is a middleman who is trying to seek more profit margins, seek higher profit margins by cutting corners. You hire less engineers. You hire less mechanics. You change regulation so that the level of control that you have and the checks and many redundancies that you're supposed to have get eliminated. Because why would you have redundancies? You have to eliminate redundancies. And when it comes to air travel, you can't eliminate redundancies. You just can't do that. Anyway, Boeing donated and sent a ton of money to the up-and-coming socialist state within America, unlike somebody. What is this? <laughs> In socialist communist state, they wouldn't even have enough to make a plane. Boeing donated and sent a ton of money to the up-and-coming socialist state within America, unlike somebody. who. What is the socialist state? <laughs> Little bro isn't in the know about the up-and-coming socialist state. Oh, no. Oh, no. Tell me about the up-and-coming socialist state. They have a commune sponsored by Boeing. No, I'm not in the know. Here's more. Boeing supplier that made Alaska Airlines door plug was warned of defects with other parts lawsuit claims. Let's watch. Parts of a jet fuselage to fly off during a flight. This door plug landed in someone's backyard in Oregon. And officials now say that it's unclear if that part was actually bolted in place. And airlines say they're finding loose parts on other grounded jets from the Boeing 737 MAX line. Our Chris Van Cleve is looking into this. Chris, good morning. Well, good morning, Anne-Marie. United says it appears that those loose bolts stem from the manufacturing process of those specific 737 MAX 9 airplanes. Now, with the MAX 9 grounded, we are waking up to another day of hundreds of flight cancellations at airports across the U.S. But NTSB investigators are making progress and appear to be honing in on a key component. It appears it's becoming all about the bolts. The four bolts that should have kept the door panel from flying off this Alaska 737 MAX 9 last Friday are so far unaccounted for. We have not yet recovered the four bolts uh, that restrain it from its vertical movement, and we have not yet determined if they existed there. And it's loose bolts like this one on a similar panel of a United Airlines MAX 9 raising new concerns. CBS News has learned United has found loose bolts on at least five of them. I don't get it. I thought it was the the dumb woman pilot hitting the eject fake door button. I'm a Tim Pool viewer, and this is how my worldview is shaped. I don't understand. Maybe it's the woman bolt person. Maybe that's who's responsible. Did they hire a woman bolt person? Of its grounded airliners with more inspections yet to come. Alaska Airlines is also now finding what it calls loose hardware on some of its MAX 9 fleet. If you can't trust the manufacturer to tighten those bolts, can you trust them to tighten all the other bolts in the airplane? We are focused on the evidence, so we're going to have to look at this aircraft. But again... No, no. Um, you can't, technically. But the reality is, it's most likely... Here's most, most, most likely happening, Okay. Somewhere along the manufacturing process, when they're making that door plug, either there was not enough quality assurance, quality control, or, or something, and 
And basically what ended up happening is like when, instead of uh, putting that door plug from the inside, maybe they put it from the outside or something. So it doesn't pressurize uh, adequately. And eventually it, it pulls the bolts out. Problem is you can't have a, you can't have a, a, a situation where you're like in, in airplanes where there's uh, multiple exits, where there is supposed to be an exit row on this airplane, they probably have less to worry about. This seems like something that they haphazardly put together when they shouldn't be haphazardly put together because it is a fucking airplane. The problem is, the problem is that huh, they don't give a shit about quality assurance because they can somehow find a way to recover from it, even if their products are getting worse and worse year over year. We will go broader if we need to. Helping focus the NTSB investigation, the recovery of the plane's missing piece, the 63-pound door panel that landed in physics teacher Bob Sauer's backyard. My heart did start beating a little faster at that point because I thought, oh my goodness, people have been looking for this all weekend. When that piece of plane blew out with 177 on board, it caused the cabin to depressurize with so much force, it ripped the shirt off a teenage passenger who changed seats to get away from the gaping hole left behind. And somebody just kind of jumped over Weird. me, plopped down in the middle seat, grabbed the mask and put it on. And it was this kid and he didn't have a shirt on. Kelly Bartlett took these pictures. The ox oxygen mask dropped and it was just a really scary moment because it was so sudden, came out of nowhere. It just really scared everyone. Now, Boeing says it regrets the impact of this disruption for the airlines and for. <laughs> Imagine losing your V load in this. <laughs> Bro, my Balenci's. Yo, that's fucked up. Passengers saying in a statement, we are committed to ensuring every Boeing airplane meets design specifications and the highest safety and quality standards. The company will be holding an all hands safety summit in Seattle later this morning, Anne Marie. All right, uh, Chris, just quickly, what more do we know about these loose bolts and could this have caused the door plug to actually come off in the middle of that flight? Well, it, 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 the door plug and how it attaches to the airplane is surprisingly complicated. <laughs> My favorite part about this, by the way, is that Tim Pool already accounted for this and immediately hand waved it away. Like, Tim Pool's coverage on the story comes after this information was revealed. So we literally said, yeah, some people are saying it's a door plug or a bolt or something, which we don't think. We think it's women and black people. We spent a lot of time last night at that NTSB press conference trying to get our heads around it. And it, But, you know, though, basically, if those bolts are in place and properly installed, that panel should not move. Uh, what happens if they're loose? Uh, the, the panel presumably could move do, does do, do those bolts become looser over time those are questions that you know would need to get borne out here but uh th those are um, bolts that should come uh from the manufacturer the airline say uh fully tightened and mm -hmm. in at least a handful of cases so far it appears that that is not what the airlines are finding uh, in this specific uh, Alaska Airlines incident where the panel flew off the airplane, uh, I asked uh, their investigators plainly if that is bolted in properly. If there's any reason, what could have happened at Boeing in the time frame? Oh, that's right. They hired more black people and brown people. That's right. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. Thank God. It certainly has nothing to do with, uh, you know, cost cutting initiatives. That would never be the case. The real motive always and forever will be the profit motive. Okay? That's it. You know, uh, Boeing has been having some issues with quality control for some time, and it will raise that question. Uh, what, we, what we know from the United Airplanes that they've looked at so far, um, they are in a range of ages. So when I asked, it, were they... Yeah, what did Boeing do with all the money they got? Wait, wait a minute, what? Boeing sets new U.S. $20 billion buyback plan. Wait a minute. Are you telling me Boeing has cash on hand while doing mass layoffs and, and not even raising their employees' wages at all are turning around and taking that cash on hand to engage in stock buybacks? Hmm.
Mm, I assume I'm going to go ahead and assume that this has nothing to do with anything. They could have uh, maybe invested it back into, uh, I don't know, quality, quality assurance, quality control. Probably none of those things. It must be the black people and brown people that they, yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be the black and brown people that they're hiring. Bro, you're angry on behalf of your brother? I mean, look, uh, as a as an independent, objective, truth-seeking journalist, my brother's uh, a place of employment uh, does not play a role in this. Okay? That's all I'm going to say. Something where, like, playing... Stock buybacks don't make doors fly off, Lamau. <laughs> exactly. Silly Hassan. <laughs> One two, three, four, like they I know, rolled I know off the line one after another, and they said, no, uh, there are various ages. Uh, uh, you know, some have been used more heavily than others. Um, so that points to, like, sporadic, uh, potentially points to sporadic uh, quality control issues uh, on the 737 MAX line. And this comes at a time when Boeing has been looking to increase the production rate. Of <laughs> they have a duty to shareholders learn about something for one. Ironic because, like, those shareholders take planes, too. You know what I mean? I mean, th that person is being sarcastic, too. It's just, like, you can't really escape this kind of, of um, like, never-ending profit-seeking, corner-cutting attitude. It's going to come back and bite you in the ass. You know what I mean? Also, ironically, the shareholders lose value and the Boeing value tanks as a consequence of the, the planes falling apart mid-flight. Now you got a whole fleet of... 737 MAX planes that are now landed and, and can't take flight. So what's up? Of the 737 MAX, which admittedly is a cash cow for Boeing, and they have years worth of orders lined up. Really interesting. Uh, Chris, thank you so much. Sure thing. Millions of us, rather, went to bed listening to the roar of those wicked storms. You know what? I'm going to say it. This plane fell apart in air because the drivers weren't allowed to si sit back and enjoy a cold one. We would be in a different America if we had the freedom to do that. I agree. You're so right. A lot of people talk about drunk drivers, drunk flyers as well. The real issue is not drunk pilots. The real issue is drunk crashers. Because when you think about it, okay, get on that plane. The altitude is high right? You want to crack back a cold one with the boys, okay? It goes a long way. One drink feels way more aggressive when you're all the way up there, 15,000, 16,000, 20,000, 30,000 feet in the air, okay? Which is way cooler than being drunk down in the ground, all right? But ultimately, not just that we're cruising. We're bruising and we're cruising and we're doing a booze cruise. The problem is those who cannot control their liquor. For many, for many, many pilots, a little bit of alcohol helps combat their anxiety, okay? Maybe there's a cutie pie air stewardess that the pilot wants to talk to and cheat on his wife with, but he can't muster up the courage, okay? You put that alcohol jacket on all of a sudden, okay? You're going up to her, you're copping a feel. Put that bad boy on autopilot and get in there, okay? All I'm saying, <laughs> fuck it, dude. I'm saying it. That teenager didn't deserve his T-shirt. Exactly. Probably was one of those ugly-ass Bape shirts. Probably wasn't even v -Lone, okay? It was probably Bape. And let's be real. Bape is so early 2000s. You don't need a Bape shirt, okay? The pilot basically saved you from looking like a nerd, now, Boeing Corporate gave you $1,500. Guess what? You can actually buy some real drip, okay? I'm talking v -Lone. I'm talking Balenci. Hell, get a bunch of Supreme shirts, okay? Everybody loves that. Put them on that undercover. <laughs> so, yeah. I work with the quality assurance on a different program. I can definitely confirm the new hires are struggling. Not necessarily their fault, but rather the old timers experience are not passing on knowledge effectively. There's been a company effort wide to solve this problem for years now. While escapement aren't acceptable, Rome rhyme wasn't built in a day. What are you saying? The real problem is the new hires are black and brown and women. Okay. Yuck. Do you understand? That's the problem. Everybody knows. <laughs> Everybody knows that's the real issue. Uh, is there any proof for this information? No, I made it up. 
How can I get away with making it up? Because I'm making it up about a thing that you also probably suspect because you're just as fucking stupid as I am because that's what racism is all about. It's about a bunch of dumb people getting together and collectively deciding on a very dumb idea. Who needs fucking information when you got a racist-ass opi racist opinion in the back of your mind? I like to describe it as a puzzle piece, right? There's always like a missing puzzle piece. And when you got white supremacy guiding you, you can always slap that shit on there, dude. Like when you think about, uh, I don't know, reasoning, the art of deduction, not the art of seduction. Like when you, when you think about like solving a, a, a problem, right? There's a, there's a bunch of different pieces there that you have to put together, okay? Like a math equation almost. And if you don't have all the pieces... You can do something. You can seek out all of the pieces of the puzzle, try to figure out what's going on. Turn on communist house on every stream. First thing I hear is Gucci shirt, v -Lone, Supreme Balenciaga Waffle House. Wait, I didn't even say Waffle House, did I? Anyway, point is when you're, when you're solving a problem and you don't have access to all the puzzle pieces, like you can go and investigate further. You can make certain speculations that are reasonable within the bounds of reason. Or you can just make it up. Right? And racism is that forever puzzle piece that you can fit into every argument. Now, if you didn't have the racism puzzle piece, how could you have thought about the situation? Pretty easy. Let's say you don't know there's like something that's missing from the equation, right? You don't know who's at fault here, but you want to quickly make a judgment on the process. The one thing you can do is look at prior Boeing 737 MAX incidents. And in that in, in that process, you can find out that in the past, at least, Boeing planes have had issues, right? And who was at fault in those past circumstances? That's right. It was Boeing. Why were they at fault? That's right. Cost cutting. There you go. Probably a, a much easier way of arriving at the truth, okay, if you can't find the actual investigation, if you can't do the actual investigation and you don't want to wait for the the, the uh, what is it called, the, NS, uh, the, the National Transportation Safety Board, the NTSB, then, you know, here's what you shouldn't do. Be fucking racist and be sexist and talk about how it's like DEI that's responsible for this. Um, and instead, either wait for the investigation to conclude or if you're going to make a speculation, make sure that you are, um, I don't know, looking at the uh, situation a little bit better. Anyway, right. Wow. What a fun story. You wouldn't want your doctor performing brain surgery, this guy says. Meanwhile, uh, wait, Tim Urban posted this? Writer, infant? I'm yet to talk to anyone about any political leaning who wants airlines doing anything but hiring the most qualified positive regardless of race or gender. It would be great marketing for an airline to respond to these trends by announcing, we believe first and foremost is safety, which is why we are reaffirming our commitment to hiring the absolute best pilots regardless of who they are. Airlines can, of course, still work on making the pilot pipeline more accessible to a range of demographics, but the final stage of that pipeline should obviously be the entirely meritocratic hiring process. I am going to kill myself in a video game. I am going to jump out of the highest fucking balcony in a video game until I'm falling and falling and falling in said video game for at least approximately five to six minutes until I land on my brain, ensuring that it splatters on a concrete in the video game He's literally describing what the company's initiative is in the same fucking process of criticizing it. Oh my God! Why are people so stupid? Like, what do you think? Do you think these fucking bozos over at the fucking United Airlines are just like, they're smoking cigars going, yeah, that's right, dude. More black pilots. Make sure it's the dumbest guy in the bunch. Hell yeah, dude. Let's go kill some folks. No, you fucking idiot. That's the whole point. He literally arrived at this conclusion on his own. Like, look at this. He said airlines can, of course, still work on making the pilot pipeline more accessible to a range of Democrats. That's, the, that's what they're doing. You're looking at the initiative that they are doing and going, wouldn't it be smart if they had an initiative like that, but still ensured that it's the best possible pilot? You fucking idiot. That's what all this DEI nonsense is at the end of the fucking day. God damn it, dude. Oh, it's so stupid. He doesn't realize that the resulting pilots can still be 75% white and 75% male. That's the other thing. Like, the hidden inference here is that white dudes are overqualified for this job. 
They're the only dudes who are qualified for the job. That's the problem, okay? Over the next decade, United will train 5,000 pilots who will be guaranteed a job with the United, with United after they complete the requirements of the Aviate program, and our plan is for half of them to be women or people of color. That's still 50% white people and, and men, okay? Like, don't worry. 50% is still white men. Don't worry, okay? And the whole point is, one, this is a goal. That doesn't mean they're going to hit it. And two, it's not an unachievable goal by any metric. Like, white men do not have some genetic predisposition to being better airplane pilots, okay? That, that doesn't work that way. Everybody could do it. So you're not actually suffering on the quality front when you're like, yeah, we should have more women pilots. It's so stupid. This is why the only time where, like, transphobic arguments ever make any sense whatsoever to the dumbest people on the planet is in sports, in specifically combat sports, okay? Like, it's so dumb when people are like, uh, I can't believe a, a trans woman won Jeopardy. And you go and, and you freak out about that, and everyone's like, what do you mean? So? Like, what? What is there, like a, like a genetic advantage to, to being trans in Jeopardy? Like, what are you talking about? Or a trans woman won a beauty competition, and it's like, okay, so you're a chaser? Like, what are you talking about? Like, it doesn't make sense in those situations to even dumb guys... The only time it makes sense in certain situations is if we're talking about combat sports. That's why it's the most prescient and most like successful form of transphobia, okay? There is no genetic predisposition for white men to be better pilots. So dumb. Don't read Megaphonics' last message. I probably shouldn't. What's so funny is that white men are statistically 30% of the American population, half of the 60% white population, yet... Here they are saying white men will be 50% of their hire, so they're still literally objectively overrepresented even according to the statement. Yeah, but uh, it don't matter. White men should be 100% of pilots. And if it's 99% of pilots, that means those other guys snuck in and gals, okay? Like, everybody knows that. That means they snuck in to a place where they shouldn't be. Same with doctors. White men should be 100% of doctors. Thank God. Now show me the percentage of, like, uh, uh, race. Thank God. I feel so much safer now, dude. We really dodged a bullet, guys. It's so funny that the second highest race is unknown. That's awesome. <laughs> God damn. A secret race, yes. A secret race we will not reveal at this point. It's dwarves. It's dwarves. It's always dwarves. You wouldn't think it. Um, Yeah. <laughs> or unknown like Hussein Obama. Yeah, no. Unknown is Arab. Matt Stoller says, read this note from 21 years ago from a group of Boeing engineers predicting the crisis we're in. It's a function of the McDonnell-Douglas merger, not race. It was fights among white guys, finance versus engineering. The roots of the 737 MAX fiasco go back to 1998 fights between white guys, finance versus engineering. The fact that so many conservatives are ignorantly saying that DEI is a factor shows how much the GOP establishment won back from populists. I don't like DEI because of what civil rights movement looks like when no one has any rights except their identity grievance, and that's a very bad thing. But it's extremely obvious that DEI is used by the right to avoid looking at problems implicating their establishment. I don't even agree with that. I think it's just, like, them being white supremacists. This is from, like, Boeing forums from 21 years ago. Tarek said Kaiser. But, like, his dog is, like, mad big, so, like... Bro. Hang it up, buddy. Like, He's going to love, he, he's going to give so much love to Kai when he's here. That's crazy. That's kind of intimidating, but it's all right. We'll get along. That's crazy. Look at that. You think that's intimidating? Look at that. Look at that. Look, look. She heard. She heard we're talking about her. Look at that. Look at that floofy baby. Hold on. See this? Hi. What's up? Like, oh, is it petting time? She's getting pet under her neck. Anyway. I'm pretty sure his dog is bigger than me. He's only like 100 pounds. But like his dog is like mad big. So like. Where'd you get those pants? Uh, Thrift store, I think in Japan, Yoji Yamamoto. Oh, by the way, Abraham Accords falling apart, baby. Saudi Arabia just declared support for South Africa's genocide suit against Israel, making Tony Blinken come across as Baghdad Bob since he proudly declared yesterday that Saudi-Israeli normalization very much remains an active option. I find that to be very interesting. I, I do. Um, let me see if I can do this uh, thing. Let me see if I can do this YouTube simulcasting stuff. I'm going to try and see if I can do it. Hold on. <sighs> We, we're here, chat. New chapter of the Asana broadcast. I was here before we started streaming on YouTube. 
Long time fan. I mean, it's just, I'm just seeing if I can do it. Okay. I don't even know if I can. You know what I mean? Careful, I haven't seen any other source on this. Oh, really? Maybe it's fake. Maybe people are celebrating too early. Well, have you considered if you should? Why not? You're going to watch Blinken's Address? I probably won't watch the ICJ trial live. And I probably won't watch uh, Blinken's Address. This is Times Now News World? What the hell is this? Don't give me Times Now News World. What relationship do you think the U.S. values more, uh, Saudi or Israel? The Saudi and Israeli relationship is, is side by side. Um, oh, there was also some drama happening on the House floor. We were doing uh, quick fire, rapid fire stuff. Oh, um, IDF intentionally assassinated Hamza al dadu claiming that the Palestinian journalist and son of Gaza's Al Jazeera bureau chief is a terrorist and a member of the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. Um, originally, they didn't say anything. Then they said, oopsie, we actually assassinated him because he had a drone. He's literally a part of the press and uses drone shots all the time. And then they said, actually, just kidding. It's not just that he has a drone, but he also is, is uh, you know, uh, a, a Palestinian Islamic Jihad uh, member. Which countries back South Africa's genocide case against Israel at the ICJ? The Organization of Islamic Countries, the OIC, 57-member bloc, which includes Saudi Arabia. Well, there you go. It's not fake. Uh, next time, get a translator when you make fake documents trying to justify bombing journals because that date is not a Saturday. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, but regardless, um, they're, I think they uh, came up with the drone story after Motaz went on Mehdi's show and talked about how he was his drone operator. Until Israel discovers a bunch of oil soon, the Saudi relationship will ultimately be more important, wouldn't it? I mean, they're, they're still... Okay, I have to figure out the... the I'm a cast situation. Okay. One second. No, because even if Israel has oil, it would be 100% less than Saudi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, Where, where were we? Where were we? Where were we? Oh, God, I didn't even get to the Taylor Swift uh, Pentagon PSYOP thing. Shit. I just want to see if I can do this. I don't know how I'm going to be able to set up, like, is it on YouTube Studio? Like, setting up a live stream? Right now, set up a live stream. <clears throat> Built-in webcam, streaming software. Go. Schedule your stream. Create new. Streaming software. Update. Upload thumbnail. Do we have a good thumbo? I'm going to disable the chat. Don't worry. Valo? Question mark? What Valo, bro? What are you saying, opening juke? No, I'm setting up a YouTube uh, live stream, potentially. Like, on the side. I'm going to disable the chat. A good thumbo? I'm going to shoot you into an airspace in dead space, okay? Use the one from One Blast Off. On the dead space spaceship, I'm going to ventilate you. Stop sending me videos on economic imperialism. Okay. Want to stream on Facebook? Why would I? Because I don't want your grandmother to watch me, okay? That's why. Okay, Nikki Haley... Ron DeSantis. Okay. Okay. Comments and ratings are off. Okay. Live chat. Live chat replay. Wait. Oh. Comments are different from chat. Oh, you're right. Wait. Hold on. Wait. Where was the comments? Customization. No live chat. Participant modes. Wait. Should I do subscriber chat? I don't even have a... You know what? I'm going to do a, a subscriber chat. That's literally anyone. Well, I can just change it, right? I can just change it. Can I not? Midway through or no? You can change it, but you'll end up changing it like two seconds in. Uh, potentially. I still want to see some chat. You got slow mode. Okay. Trailer. No, no trailer. Visibility public. Scheduled. 5 p.m. Okay. I think I did it. Let's see. Now, connect streaming software. Okay, let's start a new OBS instance. Let's start the virtual camera. Okay. <sighs> okay. Settings. Stream key. Oh, wait. Might be the wrong one. Okay. Settings. I hit the wrong setting. Service. YouTube. Use stream key. Put the stream key in there. YouTube Live Control Panel. 
Oh, shit. Wow, this is exciting stuff, chat. We're broaching new territory. It's exciting. Two-step verification. Okay, streaming software is connected. Ooh, baby. You may also need stream URL. Is it just off the stream key? It's fine. Or should I connect my server? Please complete the authorization in the external browser. Authorization completed successfully. You can now we can now close this maximum video bitrate. Jesus Christ. All right, I'm going to keep it at 6K, 6K. YouTube chat. Wait, what the hell? YouTube live control panel. Oh, it's... I have to get in there again. Okay. Okay, YouTube app. I have to pee so bad, chat. It's not even funny right now. In your streaming software, start sending us your video stream. Click done and click go live. Okay. You need to set up a broadcast before you can start managing. Wait, what? Okay, creating live broadcast. Oh my God, you guys are in the chat. Auto start is disabled for this event. Click go live to start your broadcast. Okay, this is so strange, dude. I've I've never done this before. So I, I find it very I find it very interesting. Well yeah, there's a is there a preview? I can see my own preview. Stream is healthy. Stream settings. Oh my god, there's so many people in the YouTube chat. That's crazy. Wow. Now all I need to do is go live, huh? Wow. Here's the link in four minutes and 50 seconds. Wow. Look at that. This is going to be really confusing. I'm going to fuck this up, I think. Okay. Well, at the top of the hour, though, there is a three-minute ad break, and I'm running it right now, actually. Did that, I wonder, blast off to, like, all my YouTube subscribers? Why are we doing a YouTube stream as well to avoid copyright? Ding, ding, ding. You got it, my friend. I am going to shut off the desktop audio on this broadcast on my Twitch stream, and I'm going to have it live on my YouTube stream. 34 kitty 50 thank you for the 50 get the subs. We're going to try. This is just a test for the CNN town hall. Uh, this is just a way to test it. You should get truffle for YouTube. No. Turn on ultra low latency. Wait, why? There's one big problem with this plan. YouTube live is always like 30 seconds behind. Oh, is that why? Because it's uh, hella delayed. Is that too late? I guess I could do ultra low latency. Stream latency is delay between chat, what your camera captures, and when it's shown to viewers. Normal has higher quality video and is best if you don't want to interact with your audience. Low is if you don't want to interact in real time. Ultra low is if you want high interaction and engagement. Okay, I put it on as ultra low. Low is like four to eight seconds. Ultra low is like one to three if I recall correct. You seem to be in sync for me. What do you mean? You can't. You don't know where I'm at on because I, I haven't went live on YouTube yet, have I? No. Yeah, there's a preview on my end, but in two minutes, it will. Can you go live before the two minutes? Ultra low doesn't have replay though. Dude, I have to pee. Hold on. I'm gonna pee. I'll be back in a second. Okay. Before the one minute fifty-seven is up. Ah. Okay. One minute remaining. Wait. Why does it say? Oh, it says. All right, let's go live. Let's see. Let's see how this works. Going live, it says. It says you're live. Okay, a couple seconds. Stand back. Stand by. Why am I not live? Did it work? Did it work? Oh, my God. Oh, my okay. God. There's a delay. There's a delay. Okay, there's a little bit of a delay, but look at that. GN GNN. CNN GOP live debate live reacts. Sama casting on Twitch.tv slash Hasanabi. 3,000 people watching now. Started streaming less than a minute ago. I have fallen off. I'm a 3K Andy. I'm a 3K Andy. Uh, that is uh, not what I... That is not what I wished upon myself. But such is the case. So, okay. So, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. Okay. What I'm going to do... It's actually sync okay for me. Okay, good. What I'm going to do is... Uh, brr, 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 brr. What I'm going to do now is basically give you a little taste of what I'm trying to do here, okay? On the Twitch stream, I will simply, you will simply see this, me, talking to the camera directly. I will turn off my desktop audio on the Twitch stream so you won't hear the video at all, okay? And I will play, I will play a video of the Boeing CEO acknowledging its mistake on Alaska Airlines 737. Put the YouTube stream on 2X so it catches up. YouTube is actually ahead of Twitch now. What's happening? 
It must be synced perfect. I assume Twitch is probably ahead. All right, we're at 5,000 concurrent viewers. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is show you how I'm going to operate. What am I going to do? This is what I'm going to do. So on the YouTube stream, you can actually see the desktop. And on the YouTube stream, you can see the desktop and you can see the actual video that I'm reacting to. On the Twitch stream, you cannot. And that's precisely what I plan to do in this circumstance. I will be reacting to the CNN GOP live debate. You won't be able to hear it if you're watching on Twitch. However, if you're watching on YouTube, you'll be able to see the YouTube debate as well. Uh, the real debate as well. The way to get around the DMCA's that work, because at least on YouTube, there is a, um, there is a higher degree of fair use eligibility, and you don't get live banned when you are on YouTube, uh, when you're reacting to something such as the CNN GOP live debates. Now tonight, the CNN GOP debates are not going to be featuring many of our favorites. Unfortunately, Vivek Ramaswamy will not be on the CNN GOP live debate. That's right, he's too busy trying to win the mayoral election in Los Santos, as a matter of fact. Many people are saying, didn't Lowe get li collab live for Kurgazox? Yes, but that's different. Ask YouTube chat how many people joined the stream from the YouTube notification. I mean, we'll see. Yeah, oh, wait, I am asking that already. I'm reading the chat in Twitch. Um, YouTube chat, how many of you joined, not because you saw on my live stream on Twitch, but because you saw a notification? Everyone is saying me, and I don't think so. I don't think that that is the case. We are also officially at 8K concurrent viewers on YouTube. YouTube. We saw it on day one. <sighs> you can now run polls on YouTube. I am an 8K Andy. I have fallen off. Do the hit 11. Okay. Type 1-1 one, one if you saw the notification and joined. Type 2-2 two, two if you saw that I was going live on my Twitch stream. 9K Andy on YouTube. Goddamn. Now, of course, the debate is supposed to start at, I believe, 5 p.m., no? Is that not correct? Chat in the Twitch chat. Stop typing in the Twitch chat. Okay. I can't look at two chats at the same time. This is too confusing and too complicated. No, it's not at 5. It's at 6. Oh, no. I started off early? I started off an hour early because of... Oh, Jesus Christ. I got you baited by chat. Why do I ever listen to my chat? Here. God damn it. It's so funny. Dude. Dude. CNN is so funny. Trying to make this... Christine trying to make the situation here. I can show this on uh, for now because it's not the actual debate. So but CNN is so funny trying to make this seem like uh, the Chris Christie thing is like a big deal. Okay? So what's the point of staying here now? Is it to get double audio? I don't know. Uh, because I, this is the chat I look at. He wanted it to have impact, and I think it will. I want to play some of the, the hot mic moments uh, that uh, Christie was recorded shortly before his announcement. Vivek is live on Tim Pool right now? No way. She's going to get smoked. And you know it. She's not up to this. Because Santa's calling me. Petrified that I would. Be uh, it's unclear the context. We don't know the full context of what he was saying. Uh, but well, it's. That's very nice of you to say. Well, it. I'm just. <laughs> I feel a sense of obligation. Not lying. Uh, news organizations, first and foremost, NBC News. Tim Kaz is a 45k Andy. I'm getting cooked, boys. I'm a. I'm not even a 10k Andy on YouTube. Tim Tim Pool, on the other hand, is a freaking. 45k Andy is so Jover. It. It's never been more Jover than this very moment. Okay, anything. it's Jover. My my, I ventured in to the abyss. Okay, I ventured into the abyss. I thought I could dip my toes in in uh, YouTube politics, and guess what? The water is cold. The water not not good for me. Okay, not good for me whatsoever. The abyss has stared back at me, and I, I'm realizing that I'm, I need to be way more racist, okay? Like, I need to up the racism. That's what we need to do in order to become a, a, a YouTube live streamer. Hit it MAGA male style. You know what I mean? At least you aren't bald. True. Out in by a federal police officer, that of the Capitol Police. Now, I find weeks or months or a year and a half later, I'm part of the largest manhunt in modern American history to be put into prison, in many cases charged, held without even being charged. So 
I think at the get level those numbers of the up. Start blaming black people for random shit. It's not about finding what circumstance was or wasn't understandable for the government. For somebody who's going to be locked up, we better darn well apply the highest standard of a burden of proof to say that's what we're going to apply before you lock you up. And so the Capitol Police initially were sitting on a lot of that footage. They said it sat with Congress. So many of those defendants were charged without getting access to that video footage. And again, the justification they made was, you know, usually a prosecutor has to turn. It's so crazy that it sounds like Vivek Ramaswamy and no pixel. This guy is good at copying him. Yes. By the way, uh, the YouTube chat will also be seeing the Twitch chat as well, because that's what I'm looking at here, right? Man, the YouTube player is so much better. No. Hansen Abbey, are you allowed to show Timples to stream on Twitch just looking out for you? Yeah, I don't think he would. I don't think he would do anything about that. I, I don't think he has an issue with that. Uh, but who knows? Uh, maybe. Maybe not. All right, let's get back Forget to CNN. Because then he's on a rocket. He's on a path. So if someone's going to stop him, it has to start here with at least a strong second and then a stunner in New Hampshire. Nikki Haley, as we speak tonight, has the best opportunity to do that. Uh, doesn't count DeSantis out. Doesn't mean he can't find a way. But tonight, she has the best the best long shot. They're all long shots. She has the best long shot. Can she take advantage? In, in part because of the calendar. Yes. After New Hampshire is her home state. That is a real potential boon for her, even though, you know, Trump is very popular, pretty much all over the map. But when you look at the runway, Vivek here, can't be in the debate, but he paid for an ad to be aired during the debate saying the to shut the shit DeSantis. off. It's yeah. not over by any stretch of the imagine, but the bar is high. Abby Philip John King, thanks very much. Joining us now with Iowa and New Hampshire uh, competing for headlines tonight, New Hampshire governor and Nikki Haley supporter, uh, Chris Sununu. Governor, thanks very much for being with us. Obviously, there's been no love lost okay. between you and Governor Christie in just the last couple of days. What's your reaction to him? Oh, man, Sununu. Well, look, Chris is a great friend. He really is. And, and I give him a lot of credit. He ran a hard race. He, he ran a race that was uh, consistent on message. He worked very hard here in New Hampshire. Uh, so I have no doubt, obviously, he's disappointed. A lot of his voters are disappointed. So you have to appreciate a bunch of winners, guys, now, at the end of the a day, bunch of real winners discussed. in here. Nikki Haley is the one with the chance to beat Donald Trump. There's no question about it. This so, reminds me uh, of when the NFL Trump was dropping in ratings. Dude, every in single Iowa. thing that they're they doing here at CNN, every single thing that they're doing at CNN to try to hype up this like matchup, OK, is specifically done to uh to to try and make something out of a a relatively dead uh era of politics okay i know this cuz technically i'm in the same space as well i i also am a political commentator so i i know when there's not enough enthusiasm when there's not enough intensity when there's not enough interest right and that's precisely what's going on here there's not enough interest because one, even if it was like, even if it was straight up uh, a matchup between Trump and Joe Biden already, okay, these are still two very unpopular old presidential candidates. We already ran this exact same battle back in 2020, okay? It already happened in 2020. And when it happened in 2020, it was a little bit more exciting because there was COVID. This was the first time Trump was about to be unseated. Running that again is like a recap episode, right? Nobody wants to watch One Piece when it's all recap episodes. That's why I go and watch it on one pace. They cut out the fat. They trim the fat. That's basically what's going on here with respect to uh, the, the election cycle. A lot of people also on top of that feel like their voice doesn't matter. And, of course, there's plenty of people. There's plenty of people. Oh, my God. There are, uh, they're, they're showing, oh, God, they're showing the cross tabs for Chris Christie. Chris Christie has 10 voters total. Who cares if 65% of the 10 people are going to vote for Nikki Haley? Nobody cares. So dumb. Anyway, do you think Trump is unpopular? Or do you think he's just less popular than 2020? I think Trump is unpopular in the sense that uh, his popularity, even in his own party, has has uh, definitely gone down in comparison to what his popularity in his own party historically was, barely ever going below, barely ever dipping below 90%. Okay? That's it. That half a voter would be really mad to hear you say that. Yeah. Is there even a chance of it not being a repeat of Trump-Biden? Who knows? I mean, we do have, uh, we do have very old candidates, so anything could happen. Okay? Anything. 
Anything is possible. Anything could happen. You know what I mean? And by that, I mean you have legal complications with Trump, which is like, eh, you know, who knows? Okay, but beyond that, beyond the legal complications with Trump, you also have Joe Biden's age. When you're at that age, is there supposed to be CNN audio on the YouTube side? No, there is no audio. I'm just talking. They're both old. When you're that old, you know, all of a sudden, kind of transparency, just being yourself and genuine, that builds a lot of trust with folks. And when she does that, uh, she knocks it out of the park. So she just keeps doing what she's been doing. She's going to be okay. Governor Sununu, thanks for your time. Aaron, let's go back to you. All you right. Uh, so, uh, Jamie, hearing Anderson uh, talk to Governor Sununu, look, Governor Sununu is trying to make his case for his candidate, uh, Nikki Haley. Glide path, crushing it. Uh, Trump is nervous and vulnerable. How much of that reflects the reality? <laughs> <laughs> David, stop laughing. I, I don't think it is. It does reflect it. Look, it, what what uh, Chris Christie did it's a 1v1 in that one debate, hot yes. moment was really sum up this race, and that is that Donald Trump is far and away the front runner. As you're speaking, I'm just letting everyone know uh, Governor DeSantis is walking into the debate with his family right now. Obviously, the debate uh, right now about 40 minutes away. This crucial moment. So there he is uh, with his wife and, uh, as you can see, at least one of his children uh, walking into the debate. The YouTube stage. chat Sorry, is on, by the way, and it's hella toxic. This is that literally it's not that bad. Speaking to get ready. I don't think. The question is, is this just a, a race for second place? Mm -hmm. Or can is something going to I mean, I hope people don't prove me that I'm wrong, uh, prove me wrong, in, but... In the next couple of months, so that someone can really challenge Donald Trump. Right now, we're not seeing it. And it's what, funny what that people say that that people are saying change. like I mean, and let's let's just make YouTube it even more chat micro. is more toxic. What, what can tonight do to make a change, Alyssa? What can tonight do? What can Iowa do? Like what needs to happen for this not to be a uh, race and it's for like, second? Well, listen, it's a tremendous uphill battle to Jamie's point, but I think DeSantis should make the point. I've done the full grassley. I've gone to every county in Iowa. I have showed up and tried to earn your vote. Meanwhile, Donald Trump showed up in Washington, D.C. for his appeals process for his DOJ case on, related to January 6th. Right. Nikki Haley should say, I'm working for Iowa, but I'm working for New Hampshire. Iowa, as the adage goes, picks corn. New Hampshire picks presidents. They're showing up and earning the votes, but they also need to talk about the fact that Sure, right now he's tied up in his court hearings. Just wait until this summer when he is on trial for federal indictments related to the insurrection. If you want someone who's positioned to beat Joe Biden, make the case now why he is insufficient and unfit to do it. What does this do, yeah, though? When Christie gets out, what happens tonight to Haley? I was just going to say, message. that, that, that message, not gonna, that's going to get you votes in New Hampshire. That's going to get Trump votes in New Hampshire. Because people see him as being persecuted in New Hampshire. Right? I see. The New Hampshire bo base voters, if, you, if you're saying Trump's not going to be there because he's being... You know, he's going to be in trial. You're just going to make the case. That's why I guess Donald I could Trump just like made the calculation stop to be the chat if I want to. In his court hearing in, in, in D.C. He's going to be here tomorrow. You know, he's going to be where but he I'm needs to be. I'm not convinced caucus goers in particular, they want you to earn their vote. They take their, oh, their I, role I very seriously. Yep. And yep. I do think the not yeah. showing up is something that resonates. New Hampshire to a certain degree as well. Also, they love being I, the first of the nation primary. I think we're using the word base very vaguely. There's multiple legs of the Republican Party. But, and but, in, New, but in Iowa specifically. In perhaps, but yeah. there's still a, a diploma divide. Divide. There's still a, a class divide in terms of financials. And when Damn, you go YouTube to an Iowa to be event on for there. Donald Trump, and they do still have them, they play an elaborate little video that's like, here's how you caucus, because they are still drawing right. in people who don't typically go. That's something and, they're and, still and, open and, to doing and, and open is, to fighting for. The point about this is, is important, because we haven't really talked about money, <laughs> which is one thing. DeSantis has got to win, because he's going to have to go out and raise some money yeah. to compete. And if he doesn't... He's got to prove to his donors. Pro donors that he can actually come in second and be yeah. strong right but here's the thing nikki haley has to be careful when she's on the stage because you talked about these really evangelical and more religious voters here those are not the voters in new hampshire they're more educated they're less religious um it's going after a lot of uh, maybe disaffected democrats or unaffiliated voters so she can't say anything in this iowa campaign that's going to get her screwed and, up in new hampshire and kristen this is the thing so christy gets out tonight two hours before the last debate before the first votes and those first votes are in iowa but now you've got new hampshire voters tonight I'm, I'm going to bet a lot of them are saying, you know what? I'm going to tune in and watch this debate. <coughs> and the ones who are up to look for Haley don't want to hear the message know where to that add Haley needs to deliver to an Iowa GOP base, whatever leg of the base you're talking about in Iowa. So what does she do? I think she needs to prioritize New Hampshire. I don't think you can alienate Iowa. I think if she gets a dreadful, terrible third place, that's not the momentum you want. But I think that New mm -hmm. Hampshire, there's Go no to settings in the bottom left community. Oh, okay. Does not run through. Um, 
a victory in New Hampshire, in my view. And I think in order to make sure that she can have a message that will not alienate voters in Iowa, but really work for New Hampshire, her message has consistently been, pick me instead of Donald Trump because chaos follows him. Right. DeSantis, his message uh, I made has always Fiza been, moderator. Donald Trump's not conservative enough. You can't trust him. That's just not what the Republican core conservative base there you go i gave you a sword so that's why desantis has kind of flailed and failed to catch on but on youtube donald trump chaos follows him whether his fault or not if any of the other mods also want to i'll uh, I'll put it in there that's how republicans even ones who like donald trump they'll like quietly say that you know to each other chaos just follows him so that's why i think it has come down to her as the last woman standing potentially because the type of criticism she levels at trump is the closest to what a Trump quasi supporter mm-hmm. might and, say themselves. And by yes. the way, just having the support of Chris Sununu, I think endorsements are not what they used to be, but Chris Sununu's continually outperformed Donald Trump in New Hampshire. It's a purple state. It is a state with a heavy yeah. independent. And by the way, it's, it's an open primary. Independents can turn out. Democrats can vote. So I do think that there is a lane here. It's to turn out people who are not the ones who came out for Trump, but who are active in this first in the He's nation. He's also primary. a hype man for the ages. <laughs> this is no different. <laughs> can I get that? There's <laughs> crushing it. There's glide paths. I mean, so yeah. comes out and you just like want an air so two, two quick things. I would say that Chris's point, chaos is Trump's brand, right? So he's not running from it. He's embracing it, number one. Chris yeah. Nunu also is playing expectation management. You heard him there. Seems downplaying. She's going to not do it. We're not looking to win in Who Iowa. Cares, We're, right. We don't really God, care. YouTube not, emails so are so man- butt cheeks. She has a poor showing. Yep. Face totally orange right? heard, biting heard, nails. Uh, you know, That's Chris the Chris emote. That. She's putting all her eggs in one basket. Clearly, New Hampshire. It's, it's just a big, not big win, good. Big strong second finish. I think that I think they Twitch. And, and a quick point, final point, your audio. You got just two people on stage tonight. Just a two Twitch, people in all the, the time. Twitch community That's a lot is better. Of pressure, and it's the first time they've been in that situation. But well, I mean, they're both governors, so they've definitely had the experience of getting out there, yeah. talking for a long time. Haley's always been quite polished, and I think I want to hear them talk about the economy or immigration. I don't think abortion, et cetera, is the sand trap. We think it is because of Donald. Trump's own stance. So the question is, where do they spend their time? What's the mm. thing they think is going to resonate? Yeah. Hey Aaron, I'll challenge yes. you on the first time but, because Ron DeSantis did debate uh, Gavin Newsom, and that was a big hallmark <laughs> of his well, campaign. He debated it was, effectively like it a was high experience post- on a one on one. Yeah. This is going to suck so right, bad. Stay with us because we do have to take a break. When we come back, some of the onstage ceremonies. Lead- I have the streams on on the same side. All right. Let's talk about this real quick. The anti-boycott bill is an assault on Palestinian solidarity. I would have voted against it, but I'm at the Hague to support South Africa's case against Israel, says Jeremy Corbyn. This is a historic moment for humanity and a wake-up call for political leaders letting a genocide unfold. Of course, the GOAT, Jezza, Jeremy Corbyn, is in the building. He's also at the Hague. I should be there too, but what are you going to do? Um, also, here is, uh, here's some new... Oh, y'all wanted a twist, eh? Come on, Israel. Let's get sickening. Oh, if there's something I know a lot about and lube to do, it's how to make a grand entrance. And speaking of grand entrances, Alyssa's not the only one with the secret. What a nice Jewish girl lube so much about Israel. Are you here to see the holy places? Yes, God. Are you here for the food? Come on, Hummus. Mm. But you know the real reason I'm here. It's for the boys. I lube Israeli boys. I lube them playing matkot. The only problem is, it's very dry here. Yavesh. But you know Miss Laganja Astranja always comes prepared. Oh. Oh. So you bring the boys, and I'll bring the lube. And you know the rest, mama. So let's lube it up, Israel. Lube you, Amina. Pretty sick. Yeah, this uh, this broadcast on both YouTube and Twitch is sponsored by Laganja Estranja, folks. That's right. And also, and also, the Israeli Defense Force. The only defense force out there. That's right. This is why this is just why Israel's losing the propaganda war. I'm just I don't know what you're talking about. I think they're winning the propaganda war. Uh, we're talking about the drama on the House floor. Boeing CEO acknowledges mistake. All right, let's talk. Let's do a little bit of recap. The former president will be counter programming. Speaking of a stage, his two closest Republican rivals tonight in Iowa. He's going to participate 
in a televised town hall on one network. Meanwhile, former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley and Governor Ron DeSantis will be debating one another on another network. And O'Keefe is following the candidates in these final days before Monday's Iowa caucus. Good evening. On television. I'm the candidate who's most in tune with the values here of Iowa Republicans. Uh, and I think if you're a conservative, I'm your guy. And driving through the snow to be on the stump. Don't complain about what happens in a general election if you don't play in this caucus. It matters. Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley are now in Iowa for the final five days. Governor, how are you preparing for the debate tomorrow night? And are set to face off in a one-on-one -on -one debate tonight. While DeSantis and Haley look to be vying for second in Iowa, a new poll shows Haley has cut former President Donald Trump's lead in New Hampshire down to just single digits. The only way we're going to win the majority of Americans is if we go forward with a new generational leader that leaves the negativity and the baggage in the past. That argument resonates with first-time Iowa caucus voter Lauren Vanderreet. A conservative female president is something that I think America could use right about now. Bob Rawlings voted for Trump in 2020, but says he's leaning to supporting either Haley or DeSantis. And we'll be closely watching the debate tonight. To me, they're they're pretty even. That's why I'm undecided. Um, I think uh, with me, um, obviously, uh, one of the issues is uh, border security and the lack of uh, good policy towards that. So I want to hear what they both have to say about plans for border security. We've been hearing a lot about border security and immigration now. The snow, blowing wind, and below zero temperatures are a real concern here in the closing days of the caucus. Big concern about whether turnout will be affected by that. But up in New Hampshire... Why does Iowa care about the border? 92% white. Sure, those numbers showing Haley now within single digits of the former president have Donald Trump airing new attack ads and making baseless claims online about her. In recent days, uh, those attacks really have picked up. He's likely to focus on that. Wait. You're not showing up on the top live section of YouTube. They're silencing you. That's messed up, man. That's messed up. That's messed up, dude. Like, freaking this fraud. Alpha Hour, Pastor Elvis Agimang. Okay. NBC News, Live Now, 6K Andy. Live Now, Dripping Tendies. Tim the Tatman's not even live. YouTube Live Now is just fucked up. Don't take it personally. Yeah, it's messed up, dude. Didn't guy, did guy join Hamas? He did. Wait, okay, one second. I got to try something out here. Um, I don't know if you already know this, but you don't show up on the PS5 Twitch app either. All my followers show up except you. I have to go to my actual list to get to your channel. Huh, that's weird. What's he doing on my platform? I don't know. I'm losing to a fireplace? That's normal, though. I'm losing to Lo-Fi Hip Hop Radio 2, who always is, like, one of the most uh, more watched channels, I guess. Ah, oh, if it's any consolation, when I go to live page on YouTube.com, you were the first for me. Nice. Lo-fi hip-hop girl stays undefeated. I use her on my stream. Yes, I use her in the in the beginning of my stream. There's people in the YouTube chat saying, I got suggested this stream on the YouTube front page. Yeah, lo-fi girl is a veteran, though, to be fair. She is a vet. Many tours. Uh, many tours in, in combat. Hold up. Wait, what the hell? All right. I'm getting information from Ludwig, and I'm trying to figure it out. Oh, I can I can throw it off. There you go. No more chat. Let's see. Boom. Did the chat stop on YouTube? Tell YouTube chat to like the stream. If enough people like the stream chat, I'll bring the YouTube chat back on. Okay? That's it. Just wiped out chat like that. Go and like it right now. Like and subscribe. Hostage situation. This is so wrong. Yeah, well, if you're watching a stream, you should like it anyway, okay? You feel me? Just like if you like a stream, you should subscribe at the middle of the hour and the top of the hour. Did you turn likes off? No, I didn't. Actually, I might be. There's a single mom having fun in the YouTube chat. You're breaking her dreams, you monster. Yeah, ring that bell. When you're there on YouTube, ring that bell to be notified and stay up to date with all the inner workings of, of my, my YouTube. Boom. Live chat is back, baby. In three, two, one, blammo. Did it work? Yeah, it did. That's sick. Throw up a banner on the YouTube stream to redirect people to Twitch chat. How do you do a banner? I don't know what a banner is. What do you mean? What's a banner? Dude, I'm, I'm having fun learning about this stuff, but, like, it's kind of difficult. 
like on OBS. Oh, like a like a text. Gonna be hard. Father's Day stream from five years ago. Yeah, that's like the last time I streamed live on YouTube. I did it one time, and then never again. On Father's Day, being the father that stepped up, I proverbially, basically, what? There ain't no way. Hot Spot is stealing your live stream now. Production is live streaming CNN GOP debate live reacts. I'm casting on Twitch.tv. No, he's not. You're joking, right? I will ban him. I will get him taken out. I'll take out the competition. I don't care. Is he actually doing that or is that a meme? That's a mogul move right there. I'm going to clap him. I'm going to clap him. It's a meme. I'm going to clap him anyway. Anyway, it's my meme. I photoshopped that. Okay. Matt Pat leaving YouTube and Hassan Abi suddenly decides to become a YouTuber. Culture vultures never stop shaking my head. Yes. Guys, actually, today you might have thought that we were going to be talking about. Actually, today you might have thought, everybody, that we were going to be talking about politics, but that I, I, what I'm going to do instead is a political theory, right? That's just a theory, a political theory. Boom. What does Vivek have to Take talk about? Is that Vivek. interesting? Right. I want to know. Christie out of the way is one footnote today. All right. Eliminate part of the consolidation in New Hampshire. Christie is not running for president of the United States ever. He was arguably running for like vice president of New Hampshire. You but look anyway, like Matt Pat exited. on steroids. We'll that makes me actually happy combine that in hot. to prop up Nikki a little bit more. The next thing is you take the Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis is not in New Hampshire so much, but in certain other states, Florida or otherwise, turn that over as well to the anti-Trump movement. I don't think Ron knows that. I think if people asked Ron DeSantis, he would say, of course, I would not be Nikki's vice president. And I think inside him, he probably would believe that that's actually what he thinks. But that almost pretends that what he thinks actually matters. His donors are the ones that put him up to run for president in the first place. I don't think the man on his own volition, I think there are other people who put him up to run for president at a time where it didn't make sense for him to do it. The same people are going to put him up to be Nikki's vice president. So you play this forward. That's where this goes. Final step, take Trump out of contention, trot the corporate puppets into office. That's where this plot ends. And I feel like I see this with a level said- of clarity. That Star Trek Federation torturous. is fascist? It's like a kind of form of torture to watch this playing out in real time. What? Without- is that a meme? Isn't it supposed to be? Isn't the Federation supposed to be communist, like full tilt communism? Why did he say it was fascist? Continued this trend with Kirk and his crew fending off against alien terror. Wait, oh, I can't watch this on YouTube. I'll definitely get clapped on that. Right? Now I know it's on watches or at least has watched a food theory you YouTube. The Federation is a group of planets. Earth is communist. Yeah, I thought I thought it was. I thought it was like luxury gay space communism. Completely. Honestly, it depends on which Star Trek, which episode, etc. There are definitive there are definite issues with the Federation. Why can't you react to YouTube videos on YouTube? Um, because YouTube's copyright system is like way stricter. So if Matt Pat caught me watching his YouTube video. If he caught me slipping, he could just clap me immediately. Like uh, Ludwig, famously, when he first started live streaming on YouTube, he would get banned a lot. YouTube detects his own content automatically. Yeah. YouTube chat is insane. It's going much faster. Yeah, I don't know why. Is YouTube streaming going to be a permanent thing? No. Um, it's not going to be it, It's not going to be a permanent thing at all. I'm. I'm simply testing it out. Anyway... Ladies and gentlemen, big drama on the campaign trail. Here's the latest from the 2024 campaign trail. Former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie has dropped out of the presidential race, uh, making approximately six people very upset. Okay? No, not permanent, Sag. Want to use YouTube Premium to avoid top of the hour? No. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley are set to debate at 9 p.m. Eastern on CNN at Drake University in Des Moines, Iowa. Six God. Jake Tapper and Data Bash will moderate the debate, which takes place five days before the GOP caucuses. That's right. Former President Donald Trump will once again skip the debate. Instead, he will appear at a televised town hall from Des Moines on Fox News at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Brett Baer and Martha McCallum are also set to moderate the event. What are they doing? They're moderating the town hall? I mean, I guess, like, yeah, you do need a moderator on a town hall. So shocked that they don't have my big boy my big burly boy my big beautiful boy shot hattity okay i'm doing the chris uh chris wallace voice yes entrepreneur vivek ravaswabi who didn't qualify for tonight's debate is live streaming a town hall appearance with right-wing podcaster tim pool 
from Des Moines. President Joe Biden's campaign attacked the Republican field stances on abortion rights ahead of tonight's events. Upcoming election day, here's the full calendar. We have right now the, the GOP televised debate. And on the 15th in Iowa, we have the Republican presidential caucus. This is nice. And on the and on the 23rd of January, we have the New Hampshire presidential primary. How does one not qualify for a debate? Um, I forget the exact rules uh, for for qualification, but I think it's like you have to get a certain percentage of the votes. You have to get um, what is it? It's like it's not just polling. There's a couple different things. You have to get money. Um, there is uh, donation qualifications, like individual donation qualifications. That's why, for example, some of the Republican candidates like Doug Burgum, we are Burgomaniacs here. Hello, YouTube, if you're unfamiliar. Um, Doug Burgum and another guy, I forget the other guy's name, um, had to do a, a, a scheme, basically. Um, who else was the other guy that did it? Perry Johnson. Was it Perry Johnson? It wasn't Asia, a, Ada Hutchinson, no. Anyway, you need over at least 10% in, uh, you need 10% in at least three po uh, national polls. I believe, was it Ada Hutchinson? I call him Ada Hutchinson. Anyway, um, yeah, you, you have two, you have a couple different uh, qualifications here. I mean, I'll look it up. Francis Suarez, he did the messy soccer game thing. Yeah, they, anyway, Doug Burgum basically was doing this thing where he, he was doing like a gift card scheme in an effort to get individual donors. So if you like donated to his campaign, you get like a $20 gift card. You didn't have to donate uh, $20 though. You were, if you give a dollar to his campaign, you would get 20, a $20 gift card, which shockingly, shockingly enough didn't work. Um, so, you know, we are very sad about that. I am personally very sad about that reality. As a Bergamaniac, is that legal? Not entirely aware. If uh, not entirely certain uh, how legal that is, I don't know why it's not legal. I would have expected it to be illegal, but I think Berger, uh, you know, Mister Bergamaniac, he was so irrelevant that like it seems like the the government didn't come after him. I don't know. When Jenk wins, what cabinet position will you take? Um, probably labor secretary. What? Quick question, is it a coincidence that your stream thing looks like this? Yeah, that guy was 100%. Like, this dude was some random, like, right-wing guy. I didn't realize he was like that when we looked at his uh, when we looked at his, his tweet. And I think his tweet was fake, too, which, of course, is classic. Yeah, I'm going to be the Secretary of State. Jank would be more right-wing than Biden? What? Okay, listen. Jank memes aside, that's an insane thing to say. That's somehow a, a, a more fetal alcohol syndrome Richard Spencer, that other guy on Rumble. Can you make me secretary of sex? I'm the secretary of sex, too, of having it with your mom. I'm going to tell the truth about them. Trump right, campaign. Um, so she used a plural at the end, but, but everything else was about Ron DeSantis. Okay, I just want to tell you that's the nice part of the end. <laughs> it, it ends with a big bang about his being a loser and a liar. It, this is So I spoke to someone who's, who's close to the Haley campaign. They expect her and want her to take the gloves off tonight and to go after him. And on the other hand, when I speak to people on the DeSantis side, they feel... He has to do the same thing, that this is his last chance. So, uh, you know, if that ad is any. Oh, my God. The state of YouTube chat is abysmal. You got a person in the YouTube chat saying, to be honest, I would vote for Christie. And that's why he would not be popular with the Republicans. Brother, don't admit that. You know what I mean? Like, that's crazy. OK, what's happening? What's happening? YouTube chat. Everybody chill out. Bro, these debates have lost so much juice. Where the fuck are our faves? I mean, at this point, like, there's nothing. The, the, the Republican primaries are also being conducted with an incumbent in mind, right? I'm just kidding. To the YouTube chatter. Okay, yeah, I'm sniping. I'm sniping everywhere. Anyway, look, it's two incumbents, okay? The Republican Party already knows who they like. And, and it's like if Barack Obama had the, the chance to run again, okay? If Barack Obama had the chance to run again, Hillary Clinton is washed in that, okay? 
Joe Biden himself is washed in that situation. Barack Obama has very specific riz for the Democratic Party. Right now, if he was capable of running again, he would clear out the primary, okay? And Donald Trump, as I've said before, is the Barack Obama of white people, okay? They love him, like the worst kinds of white people, of course. So ultimately, that's the main reason. Like you can't, you tried and failed at creating another Donald Trump within Ron DeSantis, and now the very same defenders of the the institutions of the Republican Party are trying to uh, desperately move away from Ron DeSantis because he's the most rizless person of all time. And now they're looking for uh, now they're looking for for Nikki Haley as the savior of the Republican Party, which also is not working because well, Nikki Haley's a woman. There's that, and I feel like. The Republican Party doesn't like that too much either. Anyway, let's take a look at what else is going on. And then what? Like, if she wins that, then there's something. But I just wonder, Kristen, if if we take a step back, you have this unprecedented situation of a person facing 92 felony counts. We don't know what could happen over the next few months in terms of people's views of him. So if this race peters out or ends... And he's number one, and then there's no number two. What the heck happens? There are a million different X factors, but there's Mm -hmm. also the reality that Donald Trump is, for all intents and purposes, like an incumbent in this primary. Mm -hmm. So unlike somebody like Nikki Haley or Ron DeSantis, who we all feel very familiar with because we've watched all these debates, there are a lot of voters who are still like, I wonder what Nikki Haley's all about. Mm -hmm. I wonder what Ron DeSantis is all about. They know what Donald Trump is all about. And so for all the existence of these X factors, that's why it is so hard for somebody like Nikki Haley and why you can't just assume, oh, maybe magic will happen and Donald Trump will disappear. That's just not going to happen. But I think, Aaron, your point, I think these folks may be playing to be that second person, right? So that something does happen, right, in June or July, that they are poised to move forward and they've made the case already to the American people and they pick up that, the, the flag and they march forward. I think that's what is most likely to happen. That's that, because I don't think any of these people are going to beat him outright. But if something happens, if he right. falters or is rejected someplace along the way, that they're standing there, they've already made the case, and the party accepts and it. And do you see, Jamie, from talking to the campaigns, yeah. that they also have that exact possibility in mind? And if so, how do you right. play that out over the next two months? So, sure, we're in this moment, Iowa, Iowa, New Hampshire. But then you'd have a long way of just what? You just... If he wins everything, you just let it go. But then how do you be that number two? I mean, how do you be ready for that potential moment, which could happen? So there's no question. They all got in. This is so stupid, dude. The question is, who's going to stay in? What are we going to see after (laughs) New Hampshire? Just to be it's the, like the it, it, it breathes is such the- a desperate attempt to try and manufacture some kind of drama, like try to try to pull something out of this that is uh, different than what we already know. And that is. Donald Trump is absolutely destroying, absolutely eviscerating the entirety of the Republican lineup. He already has, and he's doing it without even showing up. It's literally worse than than Joe Brandon's massive sweep on Super Tuesday in states that he did not even go to. He didn't even step foot in. Worse than that. God, it's so. It's just a sad state of affairs, everybody. Meanwhile, they will never have this combo about any Biden replacement. I mean, Biden, on the other hand, is also historically unpopular. So there's that, too. And uh, I think that's the reason why there's like nothing going on. There's nothing fun happening. There's, there's, no, there's no entertainment. There's no entertainment factor. There's nothing interesting. People have completely tapped out. That's why there's no, there's no juice in this. The party decides we need to go a different direction because of the chaos that will be surrounding him. I don't see any scenario where that happens. I think once he gets through Super Tuesday, that means he's getting the nomination and the party's not walking away. But I think that speaks to why they're so fearful of off-putting him. What is this? Biden would have fared better. Well, I, I think Biden would have fared better if he actually gave credit where credit was due with Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley was the governor at that time and decided huh? she was going to remove the Confederate flag from all state grounds. I mean, she, she did this. Biden didn't do it. She did it. What? Huh? Are you okay, lady? What are you saying? What? Biden would be doing better if he gave credit to literally the third most popular Republican on the lineup? Like, what are we saying? 
she ain't even saying she's not even saying Biden would be more popular if he like reached across the aisle, which is what these dumbass conservative commentators used to say on CNN all the time, which I think is also fucking bullshit. But like, she's not even doing that. She's like, <laughs> Biden actually would be getting quite the credit if he was to turn around and uh, maybe show solidarity with uh, Aza Hutchinson on the baseless attacks against Ada by Donald Trump, who keeps calling him Ada Hutchinson without telling us why he's calling him that. It's like, no, absolutely zero people care about this. This ain't it, Chief. What? Are you telling me or are you telling that person? So and I just, I, I think that you need to give credit where credit is due. It's one of the things that Trump could never do. He, it was, he took all of the credit for anything good that happened when Congress, um, were writing the laws he took uh credit for pa dude who is this person yo they this is crazy this is like why did they have this person on are they that bad are they that desperate what's happening bro this is like this is the type of kook that you don't even have on fox news man what the fuck um, funding the HBCUs and making sure that the HBCUs were funded permanently. The other thing I wanted to talk about, I was really, I was so happy when Biden was campaigning and talked, talking about his son and his commitment. Bro, chill. She literally had a brain tumor in 2022. Okay, first of all, that's not even a joke. Like, that's kind of believable. So now I feel bad. But I would assume that, like, then she's not the best at maybe coming on to talk about this kind of thing. You know, there's like, there's like one kind of ableism. That's like not exactly ableism. It's like, it's like not allowing blind people to drive cars. You know what I mean? If you're in politics, like if you're in politics, like you should have, you know, maximum cognitive functions, right? It's, it's kind of like Joe Biden. I keep saying he has dementia and it's like not the best thing. It's not the best idea for the president, for the person who was uh, running to get reelected to have dementia. You know what I mean? Commitment to remove, to find a cure for cancer. And according to the CDC, compared to other races, black and African Americans are getting and dying from all kinds of cancers. They have the highest death rate for. That's not even a joke. Oh my God. You guys weren't even joking. She actually does have the, the, the brain tumor. That's not even a joke. That's crazy. I, wait, are you guys joking? I can't tell. Why would that be a joke? It doesn't say. Personal life. Raised Catholic. Utah dated Jason Love, whom she met previously. When he was an LDS missionary in Connecticut. Mia Love talks about cancer diagnosis and faith. Oh, my God. You're not wrong. In February 2022, Love was diagnosed with cancer's brain tumor, and doctors predicted she had 10 to 15 months to live. She has surgery, which removed 95% of the tumor. As of August 2023, she was enrolled in an immunotherapy clinical trial, and the tumor was shrinking. Okay, but she converted to being a Mormon before then, right? So I think that's not, like, the reason why she's coming across as, like, not all there was, is not because of the tumor. is because she's just dumb. For cancer overall. Compared to other races, black and African Americans are getting and dying from all kinds of cancers. They have the highest death rate for cancer over in trying to eradicate this country and, <laughs> and other countries of cancer. <laughs> Dog, I'm sorry. I mean, really? Listen, I criticize Biden quite a bit, okay? I do. I make fun of him a lot. I say he's like, you know, he has dementia, stuff like that. She said Biden didn't follow through on his promise to cure cancer for black people, okay? And if he had, which by the way, I mean, technically it is factually correct. I don't know if he specified uh, uh, cancer for, for, well, she said uh, black people and African Americans separately. But, if, uh, but, but beyond that, like Biden did say he was going to cure cancer and uh, he didn't. So it is true. But I feel like it's one of those things where you're like, you're just kind of like, oh, we're trying. We're trying to do that. You know what I mean? And if it doesn't happen, it's like normal that it doesn't happen. <laughs> um, and there are there are people that are doing it, that are working. And he, I wish I wish he would listen and, and really join efforts with them to eradicate. This would be equivalent to man landing on the moon if the United States 
would, was the country to eradicate cancer. Okay, I'm sorry. This is like, you can see the host's faces. Like, they're both like, they're both like, maybe not the best idea to have you on today. It seems a little weird, the things that you're saying. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh man. Biden has been the best Democratic president in modern history. Yes, you're right. He has. <sighs> okay, Apex Fit Twizzy. If you say, if you try to debate me one more time, uh, like you're just being annoying at this point, I'm going to clap you. And then I'm going to make sure that you can't write in the fucking YouTube chat either. Okay? I'm going to ban you in both of the chats. All right? Uh, that's called ultra banning. Yeah, you heard me. First ever multi-ban. You don't want to get double banned, little man. Okay? All right, let's see what's happening. Let's check in on in CNN. Poll, he was in single digits in New Hampshire. All right. How much does... Oh, also, uh, at, at, the, uh, at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. Twitch chat, that's right. You get many of the benefits of being in Twitch chat, which is still objectively better than YouTube. Okay, let's be real. Um, for those of you who are at YouTube, watching me at YouTube, come and, you know be a part of the community at twitch.tv slash Hasanabi, but there's a three minute ad break coming to you right now, regardless at the top of the hour. No longer want to see them. All you need to do is subscribe. Here's a three minute ad break now. Statement from Doug Burgum on Christie and the debate tonight. When mom find the poop sock. I think I'm going to not click on that. I think I'm going to go ahead and not click on that. Okay. Wait, let me see. All right. I'm going to, uh, I am going to, now, turn the audio on, and I'll be able to hear it on YouTube, but you'll be able to see my live reaction if you want to watch along on Twitch. Okay? Defeating Trump. Bro, they are so low energy, it's crazy. They're so low energy. Yes, Twitch has no audio, yes. Because Twitch, I can get clapped for copyright on Twitch. Just have the audio up on the YouTube chat or something. And then uh, have the audio up on YouTube or something, and you'll be able to watch along. Okay? This is, and also at uh, twitch.tv slash Hasanabi, Jake Tapper and Espanol. Bro, this dude does not know how to walk right. The TikTok girlies ate him up when they found out that he had heels on secretly, absolutely eviscerating his, his chances. Why? Because there is a genocide of the shorts. That's right. I'll say it. I'll say it. Everybody talks about the taller side. Nobody is talking about the, the shorter side. Messed up. Messed up. It's not right. Ronald Dion DeSantis. Yes. Yeah, it was a devastating moment. Haley looks like mother. Oh, yeah. No, she's, she's mothering. I feel like he's finally gotten a little bit better at it. You know what I mean? He's gotten a little bit better. <laughs> he's not letting us. <laughs> he's beating us by not letting China buy land in Florida, dude. I'm so, I'm devastated. Messed up. Get him. Get him, mother. Oh! Oh, God. This is the most, like, Snopes shit. I'm going there. I'm going there. DeSantisLies.com? Gaza refugees, energy, China subsidies. This is so Snopes.com. Like, it's so... She's giving... I'm giving Ron five Pinocchios. I love... I love all of these debates basically turning into, like, who's going to be more racist and who's going to have dumber policies. Always. Yeah. It's great. I beat the teachers union. I, I beat teachers for fun. That's what I do for fun. That's I'm the best. Vote for me. And then these dumbass Republicans eat it up every time. They're like, hell yeah, brother. I hope Jake Tapper actually taps some ass tonight because, like, what is the purpose? Like, we're not watching this on Fox. I need him to do his job. You know what I mean? Ask YouTube chat to like the stream again to boost it. I will shut off. If, if YouTube chat doesn't like the stream right now, I'm going to shut off chat. That's right. Like the chat right now. Like the stream right now. If we don't hit 10K likes, there's 20,000 viewers in YouTube chat. If we don't hit if we don't hit 10K likes, I'm shutting off the chat. Do it. Stay so low for Haas over there, 100%. That's just a gimme. as an easy one. Oh, God. He, he hit him with a search warrant line? What is that? I think Nikki Haley is just way better. Like, she's just better than Ron. The Republican Party doesn't deserve her. I'm not even saying this is like a, I mean, I'm simping a little bit, but like, she's just more charismatic than Ron, for sure. What is it? What are they talking about? China. You can't hear because it's uh, copyrighted. Bro, what is this? 
Oh, God. Look at this, bro. It's so busted. It's so busted. The auto captioner is so busted. It's tweaking. No, chat. I'm not going to promote that I'm uh, watching this live on YouTube as well, okay? God, this is so bad. What the fuck does that mean? You can't pull the you're a nerd line on Nikki Haley when, like, you're visibly the nerdier party here. So dumb. The pale pastels. Of, oh, God, he's licking his lips. The pale pastels have warmed. Oh, what? Uh, corporatism. Don't talk over women, Ron. In this house, we let women speak. Misogynist. Gross. Sexist pig. She's right. Florida is cooked on insurance. Florida is cooked on insurance. Guys, don't bring up California insurance. We're watching the GOP debates. Dude, I'm not even kidding. I feel like, I, I don't know if I'm crazy, but I feel like she's cooking them. At least on the optics, like she's cooking them. On the commentary, she's kind of cooking them too. Like, you are such a fucking loser, Ron. Oh my God. You can't even get the second. You literally can't even get the second place. Like, you're getting, you're getting beat by a girl, okay? God damn. God, Florida is such a shithole, dude. Oh my God. The more the cost of living goes up, the more Ron DeSantis is suggesting tax cuts, which inevitably make the state worse overall. Terrible. A second Slatriot missile has struck the twink tower, twink mothers. Dude, real, real populism in tune with like Trumpian populism. It's the one idea that he didn't take from Trump that he should have is like more spending on people. You know what I mean? The idea that like the idea that that's a bad thing is so dumb. Cutting spending is not a good cutting spending is not good messaging, even in the Republican Party any longer. Nikki Haley is doing it, too. Because Nikki Haley is like an old school Republican. Ron DeSantis, on the other hand, is supposed to be a new school, like populist Republican, which he doesn't really uh, ride for. Or when he does ride for it, he does it in the worst ways possible by like attacking Disney. You know what I mean? It's not good. I love this. The one time he did like a decent thing. Like the banning of the offshore fracking was unironically a good thing as far as I understand for even like Florida tourism in general. And, like, that's the big thing that you attack Ron DeSantis on, on the fucking Republican side. It is so stupid. God, we are the dumbest country on the planet. I swear to God. Because it's not a dead horse. Where is it? DeSantis supported fracking and offshore drilling ban when he, signed, when he campaigned for governor. On his second day in office, he signed a fracking and offshore drilling ban and was praised by the liberal Sierra Club. I love that this debate is being conducted on motherfucking CNN, and they're like, Asking the more reactionary questions about border crossing. That's so sick. Why is this not on Fox News, man? They're literally asking a question from the perspective of like, will you finish Donald Trump's wall? Are you joking? What, what good is this debate for, for anybody, for the CNN viewers, if their goal is to like attack these candidates, not from like a liberal, objective liberal mainstream media perspective? It's so stupid. They said that at the start of the GOP debate and we'll ask questions accordingly. Yeah, I don't care, okay? This, this being a GOP debate and that the fact that they're going to ask questions accordingly doesn't change the reality that they should still be asking questions accordingly. You have two Republicans on board. You're not here to service the Republican Party. You're here to ask them questions from like, that are not at least like softball questions. The Republican Party, when they conduct these debates, they literally suck them, okay? They suck and fuck both of the candidates on fucking stage. I'm expecting CNN to at least be a little bit more entertaining by having some more contentious questions that they offer to these candidates. God, we're such pathetic losers. As Liberals are such fucking losers, man. Do live fact-checking. Oh, my God. Joel's very, uh, Joel Siverud. Thank you for the tank of the subs. Please, please do something. It's ticking time bomb. This is on CNN. They're talking about how immigration is a ticking time bomb on CNN. And there's no pushback. No pushback. Like Hamas at the border. No pushback. Really? It's so funny because like Trump moved away from building a wall and now he's like talking about building a dome. I guess my question always to liberals who yell at me and say I'm the problem and not like the fascists is why aren't you more mad at CNN, which is really making a right wing heel turn? Don't you feel like that constitutes a much graver threat to American democracy if you are supposedly a liberal? You know what I mean? So odd that uh, so many supposed leftist progressives online worry themselves about a, a dumbass left-wing content creator instead of this shit.
which is insane. I kind of want to move over to the Trump town hall on Fox News. Apparently, it's just ramblings, firehouse, fire hose of lies unchallenged. It's just the Trump rally with two Fox hosts sitting next to him on stage. I've heard not one word new that I won't hear at a rally, which is identical to the CNN situation. Isn't that wonderful? Fox News is doing this for Trump. CNN is doing this for DeSantis and Nikki Haley. Also, yeah, why are CNN watchers clapping at this? That's another thing that I don't kind of, I don't fully understand. This is more interesting, in my opinion. Aaron is all over this. I'll tell you what, Slava Ukraine, okay? I'll say it. Ron DeSantis can't say it. Okay, technically, this means America is not a dictator because America won't tell you that they're going to invade Iraq ahead of time, and then they do it anyway. You know what I mean? Yes, I know I have more viewers uh, than Elwig on YouTube. I know. I have more viewers than myself on YouTube. Muted viewers don't count for view count, probably. Okay, unmute Twitch chat watchers. If you're watching on both, unmute your Twitch chat. I want to see some. I know there's no audio on, uh, on Twitch chat. <laughs> so glad I unmuted for the silence. Turn on investment. What did you ask us to unmute Twitch chat? Oh, I wanted to see if it would increase the viewer numbers on Twitch, which is true. It did by like 400 at first. Damn, they like that. He hit the globalist bar. Classic fake caring about homeless people. I think Republicans are base third worldists in the sense that like they want America to fight multiple front proxy wars, inevitably uh, bringing about a J.D. Pond style endless first world genocide. Like they literally are just like, no, we should fight as many fronts as possible. We can do this with the ultimate purpose being uh, the eradication of American empire. Democrats at least are like, no, 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 you don't understand. We need to max out. Well, I guess Democrats want to fight multiple fronts too. They don't really care. Republicans also on top of that want to fight in Mexico. Number one for talent development. What does that mean? Number one in gator crime. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. I can't wait. Hamas. How? How is your body kneecapping Israel? How? What would you do? What could you possibly do more for Israel? Oh my God. He's like, we should do a five-front war. We're invading the Hague. How dare they come after little baby Israel? They got another thing coming. Oh, he's a no-stater. How about a no-state? Biden wants a two-state, which is fake, by the way. It's a phony, it's a phony support. I want a no-state. Oh, my God. Jail. Please, jail. Please, please. Throw him in jail. Please. Bro, he literally just said... Yeah, Israel, if they want to, they should be able to mass expel all Palestinians. That's an incitement to genocide. I thought CNN was woke. What's happening? He literally unironically and uncritically advocated for mass ethnic displacement. I hate this. Like Muslims? Like Muslims in Gaza? Like, nah, just kidding. That, no way, those are not humans. He's talking about, no, only, only Jewish people and Christian people... Also, I don't even understand, like, what hardships are, are uh, Jewish students facing in, in Israel? What do you mean? You want to do a war with Iran? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> what? Her husband is deployed? What? How old is her husband? Someone said deployed to Ohio? Wait, she said, I'm a military spouse. That's a problematic age gap, dog. I'm just saying. She robbing, <laughs> she robbing the cradle? What's happening? My husband got a pretty sweet Camaro before they discontinued them, okay? Bitch, you were a JAG lawyer. Shut up. He acts like he saw combat, dude. Your job was to literally look at the psychopathic Marines and all the different torture methods they used and basically sanction it from a legal perspective. You were like, yes, rules of engagement against a 14-year-old. That's allowed. That's allowed. I'm Ron DeSantis. This is my job. Fuck. Yo, this shit sucks, dude. Okay. Oh my lord. What a what a crappy situation. Okay, that's the there's a break. Uh Nikki Haley's husband begins Africa deployment as she campaigns 2024. Yo, what's happening, dude? Nikki Haley's husband's in Africa? Okay, well, so is Tulsi Gabbard. You know what I'm saying? Like, she was in Africa too. CNN literally allowing this shit unfettered is actually nutty. It is actually unimaginable. So far incredibly boring okay like unimaginably boring kind of mind-numbing uh but one thing i will say one thing i will say that i think is is deeply frustrating about this 
is that this is on CNN. The fact that they're just letting, the fact that they're just kind of letting loose with this, with no pushback whatsoever, is wild. It, it doesn't even doesn't even make sense from a content perspective, right? Like, the point is, even from a content perspective, it's more fun if you actually have a little bit back and forth with the people. Like, first of all, the audience that's watching this debate is not going to be Republicans. Let's be real. Republicans aren't even watching the Republican debates on Fox News, right? So the idea that, like, you are showing the liberal mainstream media audience uh, what the, the Republican candidates are, are, are advocating for, the two Republican candidates that are, have no shot of becoming the nominee anyway, without any sort of pushback, is one, bad for content, and two, bad in general. Like, what are you advocating for them? What the hell is this? <laughs> CNN sat their white asses down and listened to, uh, what? To a red man and an Indian woman? Ron DeSantis, the red man. I don't even know what color Ron DeSantis is, honestly. He's just, he's, um, here is, uh, Donald Trump apparently taking credit for, I mean, dude, this is, this seems way better. Honestly, I'm going to look through some of the top Trump stuff. And if it's good, I might just switch over to the Fox news debate, honestly, because I mean, this is pretty mid so far. This has been phenomenally mid overall. Actually, the biggest story wasn't the fact that he dropped out. Nobody cared oh too much about that. But he had a hot mic where he was talking to somebody about uh, the weather, and he happened to say that she doesn't have what it takes. She'll be creamed in the in the election. And, I mean, I know her very well, and I happen to believe that Chris Christie's right. That's one of the few things he's been right about, actually. So you don't think it changes the dynamic much? I, I mean, he's killing it. Look Martin, at they're very cunning. The thing is, like, Fox News is pro-Trump. Everybody knows it's pro-Trump, right? Like, it's the Republican Party's propaganda outlet. So that's the expectation. The expectation from a town hall like this is not going to be a lot of pushback. What is actually not expected, in my opinion at least, is for CNN to turn around and glaze up and, and, uh, and, and maybe even, like, uh, normalize the positions and the shit ton of misinformation that these two candidates on the Republican side are pushing for on CNN. And uh, I think he had very little chaos. I think most of the chaos was caused by... Yeah, bro, I was just in call with my four aunts and two uncles that all live in Iowa. They're all libs and are excited to go listen to the debate on CNN. They're all saying Haley is moderate. Oh, bro, this country is so fucked. Oh, my God. I hate this so much, dude. We've... I mean, dude, there is no... These guys are... I mean, this, this country is so lost. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. It's just... It's so Jover, dude. It's so Jover. By the Democrats constantly going after me. And remember this, remember that with phony, Russia, 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 I mean, if you look at Ukraine, 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 everything. I think Libs want to push for Haley over Trump if the writing is on the wall for Joe. I mean, but like, what do you mean? Are you going to vote? Are you going to vote for uh, Nikki Haley over Joe Biden? Like, I don't understand, right? It doesn't make any sense to me. Everything was phony. Uh, the FISA warrants, the uh, lying to Congress. I, I have a suspicion that the Fox News ratings will cream CNN. And hopefully we'll find out. We'll, I, I do want to know. I want to know if the Trump town hall on Fox News did much better than the CNN GOP debate. Can we not use that word, cream? I think it's, well, Trump was using it, and he's a trendsetter, so now I'm using it as well. Joe Biden, he can't put two sentences together, and he's representing us on nuclear weapons with Putin and Xi and all of these very smart people. The media hates when I say they're smart. But let me tell you, they're very smart and they're very cunning. And uh, I think he had very little chaos. I think most of the chaos... How are you indirectly glazing CNN this much? It shouldn't be surprising for you. Dude, CNN at least has the brains to do good content, okay? Part of the reason why they love... Part of the reason why they love Donald Trump was because Donald Trump was a massive ratings boom, Okay. So that comes with an understanding of content. If you're going to have these two losers, Nikki Haley and, and you know, uh, little Rhonda, what you're supposed to do in that situation is at least make it a little bit contentious. They're not obviously cutting it. They don't have a good, they don't have a good enough back and forth for that contention to be at least somewhat uh, 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 telegenic. Nobody cares. If they did, they would have watched the previous debates. They didn't. 
This is supposed to be unique. It's supposed to be a unique opportunity. A unique opportunity where at least like the CNN panelists are supposed to, uh, you know, have a little bit of a back and forth. That unironically would be good for the Republicans too because then it would look like they are being tested in the marketplace of ideas for a broader audience. But they're not doing that. Go back to the CNN debate. I kind of want to watch just whatever is going on on Fox News and I, I want to see what uh, what's happening with Donald Trump on Fox News. Look, NATO has taken advantage of our country. The European countries took advantage of, uh, I want to use the word starting with an S, but I don't want to do it because I see some young very good-looking children in the audience, and I assume they're watching on television. But they took advantage of us on trade, and then they took advantage of us on our military protection. Of the 28 countries at the time, only eight countries were paid up. We were paying the difference. And I went to them, I said, if you don't pay, we're not going to protect you. And they said, do you mean that? I said, I mean that. And the next day, billions of dollars what poured into he's... NATO. The reason they have money right now to prosecute... Good to have you with us tonight. Thank you. That's it? So we're going to be right back with just a quick final segment right after. God damn, dude. They're done. They're done. They were like, we're done with you. That sucks. All right. I guess we're reluctantly back on this shit then. She fought the kids. Oh, God. It's like the nerdiest Republicans that like Ron DeSantis. I swear to God. Just say you're trailing 40 points behind Donald Trump on your own home state. Just say that. Hit him with that. Yeah. The real answer is that was 10 years ago, as in it wasn't uh, politically popular to be transphobic like that. <sighs> abolish. Abolish the education department. Fuck it. Yeah, I think we need more. We need more parents involved in the curriculum. That's what's the smart thing to do, because they're so smart and know exactly how to teach. Bro, I don't want any parent anywhere near school curriculum, dude. Okay, I don't want that at all. Especially some parents who are just like extra stupid you really want them touching the education? I don't want them anywhere near that. I think schools, uh, uh, homeschooling should be illegal too, but like, oh my God, if that's the alternative, then yeah, let him homeschool. Fuck it. It's wrong to have pornographic material for the fifth grade. I mean, yeah, sure. Not a real thing. No, what is jamming porn down the throat of a fourth grader, you fucking psycho? Oh my God. Push back. Ask where this happened. Where has it happened, say Jake Tapper, says Jake Tapper in alternative universe where at least he has like a modicum of respect for the profession of journalism. That's sick. It's sick. All he does is just stop Ron DeSantis from yelling over governor Haley. That's it, bro. I never want to hear. I never want to hear about these fucking losers crying about Joe Rogan ever again. Okay. I never want to hear from CNN crying about Joe Rogan ever again for the rest of my life. Okay. These absolute fucking bastards they were like oh i can't believe bernie sanders went on joe rogan joe rogan is transphobic which is true right like joe rogan is transphobic joe rogan does covid denial and then you have like peak transphobia occurring on your original broadcast that you have basically all copyright for and you have the worst kinds of psychopathic lies being told about like children uh, uh, in fourth grade, having porn crammed down their throats and not even flinching. Jake Tapper just unflinchingly yields the floor and just moves on. That is insane. That's literally worse than Joe Rogan because Joe Rogan is not CNN, okay? Joe Rogan is a podcast. If Joe Rogan has a level of responsibility and a duty to to inform his audience and not simply be a stenographer right? Then you definitely, you definitely don't have that. You have to do something. That's mind boggling. They don't even have a pull that shit up. Jamie out here. What is happening? Nikki Haley plugs this website more than I plug the top of the hour ad break and how you can avoid it by subscribing for $5 or for free with the Twitch prime. Like these answers are not coming out of nowhere. They wrote the questions chat. Like if you're if you're if you're like oh well it's in real time how can they fact check in real time like bro they know what the answers are gonna be they came up with the questions they know what the ridiculous counters to said questions are going to be they have every they have all the producers on the planet I mean they could literally do it in they could literally do it in real time if they wanted to but like I mean it's it's crazy 
it's crazy to me that there's just no, not even a crumb of pushback. It's so deeply frustrating. We need more hard power in the Indo-Pacific. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. I don't think Ramaswamy... Fuck. I don't think Ramaswamy made it to the debate. Damn. Damn. Ron DeSantis is a China simp. He had an office in Hong Kong. So crazy that they're running for president of China. Hong Kong Ron. Don't react too hard. Now I might actually think you care about the content and are trying to give your opinion to us. Uh, this person, I assume, thinks that I'm just like quietly watching nothing. She's plugging the website again. Yeah, that's awesome. What a stupid fucking argument. What a stupid take. How do I pin my own comment on YouTube? I don't even know how to do that. It'll never not be funny that Nick Merck said that this guy was his goat. Yeah, you know what? You know what? Twitch viewers get Kaya Cam, whereas uh, YouTube doesn't. How about that? Hold on. Cook him. Desperate DeSantis. Oh, oh, God. Ballistic podiatry. God, you're such a freaking nerd. Ballistic podiatry. That's a Hillary Clinton ass thing to say, bro. Actually, you know what? I feel like Hillary Clinton wouldn't even say that. YouTube chat, you can see Kaya Cam at twitch.tv slash Hasanabi. Kaya is a better streamer. Oh, so wait. Wait, so she's in agreement with Ron. Remember when France rioted? God, Ron is so bad at his job. Wait, hold on. Where's the sound? The sound is, uh, you're, I'm multicasting. Yeah, I don't know how to pin my own message in the chat. I can only pin other people's messages. No, it's not letting me, it's not letting me click more and then pin uh, not on my own messages i can only pin other people's messages not my own i type it i it won't let me pin my own message it lets me only other it only lets other people's messages i can only pin other people's messages i don't think slash pin is gonna work fucking youtube is so stupid i hate youtube streaming like if i do slash pin and then put the message it's not gonna work see it only shows slash pin youtube streaming is stupid YouTube's the boomer uh, stream. No disrespect, but, like, it's for boomers. He's desperate. He's desperate. All right, I pinned. I pinned Fizz's uh, take. Wait, what? Wait, she's saying it's good? Or it's bad? She, I, I thought her position was that that's bad. Yes, yeah, so I'm eating a protein cinnamon roll from Legendary. It's not a mushroom, it's a cinnamon roll. Bro. Bro. Janet has more smoke for January 6th than they do for literal ethnic cleansing of Palestinians and transphobia. I want to die in a video game. He's trying to make COVID happen so bad. He wishes COVID was happening again, 100%. That's like his glory days. He wishes COVID was happening harder than like some of my Twitch chatters who never go outside. Oh, oh. <laughs> she's so heavy. Look how tall she is. She's streaming. Here you go. Speak. <laughs> she's not giving a take she's apolitical she doesn't she doesn't like politics she she doesn't she's a maoist third world that she doesn't participate in bourgeois democracy there's more oh god this fucking debate sucks how are you gonna pay kyver a fair share of the stream proceeds off of her labor value um i give her treats and hugs and kisses so that's how i do it you know Ron is darting to DeSantisLies.com the second he steps off stage? Uh, I know you can't hear the debate. I'm, I'm, I'm multicasting it. This is more so... This is so uh, that you can... Um, what do you call it? Why do you support company housing for Kaya? Because I'm a bad person. Um, this is so that you can live watch it along. Wouldn't it kind of just turn into candidates versus Jake Taver? They're spewing, spewing too much shite for him to push back on, I feel like. Yeah, no, it should. It should turn into candidates versus Jake Tapper. That's the goal. The moderator has a job. It is to moderate, not just between the two candidates, but also to ensure that like they are being truthful. If the the if one of the candidates is saying reactionary garbage that isn't true, then your your job, your goal there should be to Okay. They love complaining about Joe Rogan, and then they did a literal Joe Rogan ass debate. Sean Hannity did a better job. If you have 20k viewers on YouTube, do you benefit anyway from that amount of viewers on that platform in any way? Um, I mean, it's, it's uh, maybe. I don't know. Eventually, spreads the message overall. And then hopefully it will um, reach a broader audience. But uh, it's almost like CNN is owned by the same shareholders as Fox. It's weird like they play a role in swinging the political pendulum as far as Fox does. 
Uh, I mean, CNN plays a very nefarious role in the swinging of the pendulum in that direction because CNN has the capacity to normalize these kinds of uh, weird right-wing policies. Fox News is pushing for the policies. Uh, I just think it's it's completely inappropriate and also uh, in clear-cut violation of the supposed values that CNN espouses. Like, CNN loves playing the referee. CNN loves playing the referee for other forms of content. They do it all the time. They do it nonstop. I'm willing to bet that there is going to be some fallout. You can't, you can't literally, you cannot do worse than Chris Wallace on Fox News or even Sean Hannity on Fox News. Sean Hannity, when he moderated a debate between Ron DeSantis and, and uh, Governor Gavin Newsom, he did a great job for a Republican perspective. He did. He did a phenomenal job from the point of view of a, Re- a Republican. That's what CNN should have been doing. But even if they're not going to be like that nakedly partisan, my expectation is that at the very least they will, I don't know, care about the truth a little bit. You know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. Very frustrating. Chad, it's not, it's not going to YouTube stream regularly. Yes, I am not planning on like multicasting on YouTube every day. That's not a thing. Okay, I'm not. I'm not going to multicast on YouTube every day. It's just, uh, it's just a test, okay? Is the debate over? Not yet, but it might as well be. 2024 is about to be iconic. I hope Bernie Sanders wins. Yeah, he's going to win. I think I just saw Chatter driving on the highway and watching Hassan Abi. Tell him to stop. Don't do it. Don't watch me while you're driving. I mean, this is crazy. No, the Fox News town hall ended already a while ago. All right, they're back. Kai is snooze maxing? Yes. Twitch chatters can see that. YouTube chatters can't see Kaya news maxing. Mental health. Greatest cope from Republicans. Greatest bullshit from Republicans. They don't care. Does Twitch give you health insurance? No, I'm a contractor. Telehealth is not going to solve the mental health problem in this country. Weird copium. The biomedical state. Ron DeSantis loves bringing it back to COVID because I feel like that's the only time where people kind of liked him and he's very desperate for that. I think this might be my last debate that I ever watch, boys. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, it's happening. It's a real Green New Deal. We've done it already. It's totally real. <sighs> huh. Interesting. Interesting that they're talking about requiring cutting carbon emissions and how what science agrees on now. Nothing on the trans issue. Nothing on genocide. Nothing on immigration. But now, now they're actually talking about lib stuff. And, they're, and, and like, they've, they've done more, they've done more arguments that defend like the sanctity of, of the institutions on January 6th than anything else. So they are capable of doing pushback. So why didn't they do it for other stuff? That's the question. Uh-oh. Oh, dude, why did they think that? Why did the majority of Americans think that about crime? You think you had something to do with that, CNN? By having their backs, that's how you fix crime. What? She's like, I will never make you feel bad about police brutality. I'm gonna die. So lively, the debate. Is this a mother quake on the counter scale? I don't know. But if it is, I hope it takes me. My wine. Oh, God. Oh. Okay, it turns out the real secret is to get little Rhonda to laugh. Okay, you say something nice about little Rhonda, and then he smiles, and then it's Jover. He just dipped. I watched his polls dip by at least 5% in real time. I'm not even kidding. I watched it happen right in front of my eyes. That was crazy. He's like, hello, I'm Ron DeSantis. Normal. I'm normal. Do a normal human smile. Is the Botox for sure? You are scary, the hose. Stop. Why is this so small? <laughs> what? Chatter. I think CNN thought that that was going to be a bigger moment. I don't care what CNN thinks. This debate, I'm not, I'm not even joking. This debate is taking a lot out of me. It's not, it's taking so much out of me. It's like, I, I don't want to, I'm going to probably end the stream. I'm going to end both streams, really. Taking a lot of viewers too. No, man, they're, they're on YouTube. All the viewers are watching me on YouTube currently. The simulcasting um, debate process uh, was a bit of a failure, I think, overall. I mean, many people watched on YouTube. They're still watching on YouTube. But overall, I, um, 
I don't know. I, I, I think the experience was whatever. But yeah, let's say bye to the YouTube chat. You need to sync up the streams. It is synced up. I'm going to be live here on Twitch. So bye-bye to everybody on YouTube. Bye-bye, YouTube chat. Bye-bye to the YouTube stream. Twitch.tv slash Hasanabi, as always. Um, the other Republican RAND debates were bad, but without Vivek at least providing a little bit of content, this was really bad. Wait, audio desynced on YouTube? What do you mean? Anyway, bye-bye, everybody on YouTube. Ending the stream now. See you on Twitch. People in the chat are saying Twitch is unwatchable. That's crazy. Um, here are some, uh, here are some stats from YouTube. We got 1,000, uh, 129,345, uh, views in the duration of the live stream of the debate. Peak concurrent viewers was 22,740, uh, 700, 474. Uh, and the average view duration was 23 minutes and 45 seconds. And the stream went on for three hours. Okay. Um, it was not bad. Yeah, the VOD is still there. It was me trying to make it happen. Um, it was an interesting experiment overall, I would say. Wait, where is it? Okay, stop streaming. It was an interesting experiment overall um, in simulcasting. I wonder if you guys actually enjoyed it. Holy shit. As soon as I ended the YouTube debate stream, uh, it's just this shot back up to like 15K. Um, one stream isn't enough data. Yeah, the last time I streamed on YouTube was five years ago. Special Father's Day stream with Kratos, Dad of War. That was an hour long. So it's been five years. Hot take, YouTube is much better. Guys, I don't think, I don't think you understand. Like, for YouTube, it's not actually much better. Because, uh, I mean, it's not much better on a, on a streamer side. Because I don't have that same level of control over chat and all this other stuff. So... Their emotes are poo-poo. The sense of community is not that good. Like, the first the first ever YouTube stream that you guys watched, sure, it's, like, gonna be unique and novel, but that's because, like, the haters haven't found it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure there's, like, hate raids that occur on YouTube that make it much worse. And also, no top-of-the-hour ad breaks at the top of the hour on YouTube, where they do exist here on Twitch. Just kidding. That's actually not a benefit. That's a That's a burden, for sure. But... YouTube doesn't notify when folks go live. It's annoying. Yeah. With David Pakman, there was. People would spam it with porn. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, see, David streams uh, exclusively almost on YouTube. So they already know, like, that he's going to stream on YouTube. So they probably target his uh, streams. They didn't do that for me because they were, like, unaware that I was live. It's crazy how fast streams get to peak views on YouTube compared to Twitch. For Twitch, it takes hours. YouTube, it takes minutes. I guess. Bro, Twitch's incel mecha co-stream more. This community is not like that. I, I don't think that that's fair. Uh, I will, yeah, of course, I'll be watching the ICJ uh, uh, hearing tomorrow. Doesn't matter, but YouTube produces a way better VOD of live streams that you can easily just watch through. Wish you recorded your entire streams and uploaded them to YouTube instead of just clips. Yeah. Like, it sucks to have to change the settings do, to do background audio. Well, the thing is, like, that wasn't a full-blown multicast, right? So it, it's not like, I mean, it was a simulcasting, but like YouTube, all YouTube had comments are turned off on your YouTube VOD. Oh, really? I don't know how to turn it on. Let me see if I can do it. Video editor. How do I enable comments again on the YouTube video? Um, can you give me reasons why I shouldn't vote for Haley in my primary? Dude, I don't care. If you want to vote in the Republican primary, I mean, God, Godspeed. Good luck to you. This community is great, but Twitch is too fortunate to Jason for normies like me. Eh. How do I, um, I don't know how to turn it on. It doesn't show up on the video side. Let me see if I can edit video, allow comments. Oh, comments and, uh, yeah, comment moderation on, comments on. Okay, done. You can comment on it now. Going between the two is clear how much worse the Twitch video quality is. Everything else about YouTube streaming is awful, though. Yeah, no, YouTube is, like, not a better streaming platform, I think. Um, if you want a good multicast plugin that's open source, no, I don't need a multicast plug plugin. I can simulcast with uh, two separate OBS instances. I'm perfectly happy with that. Um, I think that's great. Having two separate OBS instances is perfectly fine. Um, that's a good way to do it. It's just that, like, now do simulcast on kick. Yeah, I'm good, man. Thank you, Bussy Buster. I think I will not do that. 
I think there was a, probably a significant amount of overlap between Twitch and YouTube viewership from tonight's test. The key to simulcasting is reaching distinct audiences on both, or at least using YouTube streams to direct people over to Twitch. Yes. But the problem is, like, in this circumstance, there's more of an incentive for people to go watch it on YouTube than to watch it on Twitch. That's the issue, right? Um, because, like, uh, you can actually hear the debates that are going on because I'll, I'll get banned if I watch it with a debate on here on Twitch. So for that reason, it's just like, yeah, of course, people most likely are going to go watch it on YouTube rather than watch it here. So overall, on that front, <coughs> you know, YouTube mobile is better regardless of audio. Yeah, I guess YouTube mobile might be better. I don't know. I, I have uh, I don't really watch a lot of content both on YouTube. I don't I don't really watch a lot of content on YouTube. I don't really watch a lot of content on Twitch. So I just like it's bad. I'm like the worst person. It's going to become commonplace. Most likely not. It was just a test, like I said. Um, so I just wanted to test it out. If I were to simulcast, I would do like a full-blown simulcast by uh, most likely streaming on TikTok live to see if I could push uh, an audience from TikTok to Twitch. Because the goal during, um, the goal for simulcasting is is to uh, allow a, a broader audience that you normally wouldn't reach out uh, the, the goal is you want to bring in an audience that normally wouldn't watch because they don't watch on Twitch. Cause I have plenty of like YouTube viewers that don't watch Twitch, uh, to go and is more invested in shit slinging after debates. And there are plenty of audiences that do that. There are plenty of content creators who do that. They do a great job with it. Even if they like maybe lose the debate, I guess, quote unquote, lose the debate. They still end up massaging the truth a little bit. And, and changing the outcome, which to me shows that there is no real reason to do anything like that. Debates are a harassment off for the most part. Yeah, it's so bad faith. And um, I do it. I still do it relatively frequently, I guess. Not as much as like a debate, uh, a debate streamer would, but I just don't, I don't personally see value in it. Thank you for the raid, majority stream, uh, majority report. Hope you had a good stream. Um, but yeah, the YouTube debate simulcast already has 70k views. No, it has more than that. Um, it's just it's only showing 70k. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, all right. Um, okay, that's it. That's it for today. I'm I'm tired. That debate took a lot out of me, which it wasn't really even a debate. You know what I mean? It was more so just. Uh, CNN weirdly attempting to, I guess, uh, turn themselves into a, a right-wing uh, audience or turn themselves into a right-wing broadcaster. It did feel more so like, um, like they were trying to position themselves as like open to right-wing ideas. Like, hey guys, we're a right-wing broadcast too. Like, come watch us, please. Like, if that wasn't the case, they would have done a better job, in my opinion, of, like, if they wanted to serve their own audience, if they wanted to, you know, act as though, if they wanted to act as though they are actual objective arbiters of the truth or whatever, they most likely wouldn't have, uh, they most likely wouldn't have done that. Anyway, love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow, all right? Uh, the ICJ is happening tomorrow, so that's exciting. Israel's going to the uh, International Court of Justice for genocide. See what happens there. All right. Bye bye.
day fiance tots of champagne bourgeoisie a trump rally live reaction on mass riot at dc there he is again her son is streaming her son is streaming there he is Suck you in the line. JCS React Lord frame is broken, cover blown. A full blown mess pandemic monster streaming at your home. Total radicalization coming out to find. System you were taught to trust in was broken the whole time. And all these daily streams, whether big or whether small, have helped me in so many find the meaning through it all. Sun is streaming, her sun is streaming. There he is again, her sun is streaming, her sun is streaming.